Oh well. <laughs> I love this song at least. Oh, there, there she is. Hi. My, my laptop was lagging. Oh, that's a great sign. That's a great omen. What do you have to say to the people? Well, people, it's, it's time. It's t it's my monthly torture session. It is. It's okay because this torture session is gonna last two sessions. <laughs> oh joy! <laughs> Listen, it's all a part of the fun. It's all a part of the fun. Yeah, everybody get your breakfast because we're about to begin. Colleen, do you, what do you what do you n remember about the Evilist Chronicles? Oh, I remember. Hello, Ink the Octoling. Welcome to the chat. I remember it was school. Mm hmm Middle school. End of high school. End of middle school. Start of high school. Okay. I remember discovering it's my no first- use. Um, Vocaloid song was that I ever listened to was a fucking something in punishment, and it was from a Warrior Cat A and B. Ink, thank you so much for the follow, lovely. I, I appreciate it. You're a little tadpole now. And thank I you. I spiraled and I spiraled, and I remember, I remember being obsessed with the Evilist Chronicle, like especially mm -hmm. the story of evil. Like I don't, I don't not did not really expand past story of evil myself, like, but I I probably listened to songs and just not realized what they're like. A connection with this overarching yeah. seven deadly sin stuff. That's like, a, I remember. <laughs> that's I remember a, that's to... a good summary of how of how most people experience the Evilist Chronicles because there are so many fucking songs, and and it's been going on since two thousand and seven. So people don't realize the and yeah. the story's been told out of order over the years. So no, people don't realize how interconnected oh all the songs are. Like yeah. I have, a, I like luckily thank God there's a thriving YouTube community because they are they were a fuck Toby Misa, I believe is their name. Toby Misa is like the head of it all. Mm, okay. But and yes, he fact, made this huge ass playlist. So, That's how I've been able to figure out things. E, so my but to, um, so there is Hope is not here to defend themselves for this one. Well it's not even them defending themselves, it's them defending me. <laughs> I literally have a I, as a small thirteen year old child, literally rewrote the story of evil with me and cloaked in that story instead of winning one. Oh my god. Like I have that still to this day. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't, I ha, it has, like, their dead name on it, so I'm not gonna expose it to them, but I could at least show, like, the art of it, like, later. Oh, that's such a blessing. See, I don't think people, I don't think the kids, hey kids, and hey children. The youngins. The hey, youngins. Hey, hey youngins. youngins. I don't know if y'all real, Dawn of Evil just came on. <laughs> that is perfect timing. Oh, I don't what? think y'all understand the cultural impact Dawn of Evil and Cern of Evil had on early 2000s internet. I'm like, it was a great it was a it was a firm grip. It was like not like any media that had like twins or just siblings that looked vaguely alike. They made a story of evil AU. But the thing is, all the story of evil AUs are wrong because nobody knew the actual full story. Like nobody knows about Michaela, and you guys will soon learn who the fuck Michaela is. <laughs> I, I'm living proof. I made a story of evil AU with me and my best friend. Yep, I made. This is embarrassing. Do you want to say, yeah, I would say I, I have no shame. I made a, um, <laughs> I made a Italia story of evil. Stop! Stop! <laughs> you stop right there. You said Italia. That's all you need to say. That's all you needed to say. Oh, that tells me so much about you. <laughs> Listen, y'all. I'm I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little guy. But. We're not here for that, nor this, nor blah, blah, blah. I didn't start listening to the songs until 2020. Bro, you are in for a treat because we're about to begin. Babe, this is... I, is this, I can't believe I've got, got into this before you... This, it's something like this, like, before you... True! This is, like... This is a new one. You know a weeb thing more than your weeb girlfriend. <laughs> Waiting for this... Oh, yeah, everyone join the Discord. Day. Everyone join the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, why aren't you, not, why aren't you in the Discord? Really, we. That's for real. All right, I'm gonna share my screen with Colleen real quick. Everyone, hold on. Let me make sure my shit isn't incorrect. Not, yeah, let's let's not pull a Valpina. Yeah, I don't want to dox myself. I'm not Valpina. <laughs> I'm a little bit different. <laughs> do, 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 do. Just dox every. 
All right, I'm sharing my screen now. Tell me when you see it. The Discord is bussing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I listened to the songs 2013 2018 that dropped off. Oopsies. Well, you're about to drop back in by force. <laughs> by force. <laughs> All right, tell me when you see the screen. It's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Fucking, please do the thing. Hold on. I need this new PC. So bad. <laughs> Pretty soon that this gonna be first seat tickets to vamp widget fighting. Yeah, y'all day one of you being in the discord y'all started a Hour two hour long fight in general. I just kind of sat there and watched it was funny But I this PowerPoint currently is about like hundred and thirty slides. We're only doing about hundred and twenty-five. I think Like <laughs> this how you know it's gonna be a long one. This is part one and it's 120 slides. The Markiplier one, which was already two parts, was 120 slides. That was the whole thing. This is the part one. <laughs> but that's why we're excited. All right, do you see it? Hold on. I was literally... Yes, I see it. I was literally typing technical difficulties in the Twitch chat. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, this is Chai Pat. Uh, lovely Vamp drew this for me, and it is now, unfortunately, my alter ego that everyone likes more than me! <laughs> There's just an appeal. I don't know what to There's it. an appeal! It's me, but it's Matt Pat! Why does that make give it an appeal? <laughs> this is fucked up. This is, this is all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> Whatever. Love, all right. Love you! Whatever. All right, everyone... Oh god, the trigger warnings. Oh, the trigger warnings. What do you mean it goes Chai Pat, Chai Worth, then Chai? Why am I last? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, we haven't even started yet. I'm already upset. <laughs> Just killed a woman. Feeling good. You did kill me. You throttled me. All right, everyone. Welcome to The Evilest Chronicles, a presentation by Chai the Chew. This ser this will go over the basics. You, What are Vocaloids? Who are the Vocaloids? What is the series? Separated by eras. You will see it all. Oh, my God. All right, let us begin. Welcome to Lore School, bitches. Pay attention. Ask questions if need be. The need will occur. <laughs> Take notes. Be respectful. Let's do this. I, do I have any VIPs in the chat right now? You. Me. Co Coley, can you exclamation point disclaimer? <laughs> Chai is not an expert at anything they are talking about at any given time, so please be nice and correct them when they make a genuine mistake. Thank you. Please don't be mean to me. I'm gonna make mistakes. This is a long-ass series. It's been going on for too many years. <laughs> No, that's what I'm here for. You guys can be mean to me. Yeah, exactly. We can be mean to Colleen. That's why it's the Colleen suffering hole. That's the VC we're in. It's fun. Oh. All right, how's this going to go? We're going to go over what is Vocaloid, who is Mothy, what is the Seven Deadly Sins series, and what is the Evilist Chronicles as a whole? Because, unfortunately, people don't know there's a difference. <laughs> Fear. <laughs> All right. All right, here's a disclaimer. I'm not an Evilist Chronicles expert. This is for funsies, just uh, just casual fun funsies. Please do not be mean to me. I'm just a little guy. If you think you know more and want to be a dick about it, you're going to get banned. Okay, let's be nice. If I say something wrong, correct me, but nicely. <sighs> Thank you. Also, do I look like Matt Pat? This is <laughs> irrelevant because now I do look like Matt Pat. <laughs> so I have to delete that off my copy and paste disclaimer. Good job. <sighs> okay, so... This is very basic information. This is a little bit boring, but it's like kind of necessary. So what is Vocaloid? Vocaloid is a singing voice synthesizer software. It is not just Hatsune Miku. I feel like I have to say that because of TikTok. It is not just Hatsune Miku. She is one, she is one voice bank out of many. She contains multitudes. She contains, <laughs> oh my God. My, so, I'll wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All right. The first vocalists were created as a uh, uh, back in two thousands. It's been like twenty two years. The first vocalists were created as a joint project led by Ken Mochi he uh, Hideki in Barcelona, Spain. After being backed by Yamaha Corporation, the software was developed for commercial use and given the name Vocaloid. His voice, his okay, his voice provider is very cute. That is true. Um, at 
originally the name was Daisy based off of the, the, the singing computer that goes, Daisy, Daisy, give me oh, your answer, cool. do. But because of copyright issues, I had to change it to Vocaloid. Nice. Uh, it works by having users be able to synthesize singing by typing in lyrics that the program will have the voice bank sing. Vocaloids are often referred to as virtual idols and thought, and they have no real set canon or personality or lore. They are able to be they are able to be whatever the user wants them to be in the song story they wish to tell with them. Nice. Over here we have Ken Mochi Hideki, which is, and he's known as the father of Vocaloid because he's the one that made the whole project. Yay. So, who are the Vocaloids? Originally, Vocaloids were only available in English, and only voice banks uh, were available were Leon, Lola, and Miriam, released by the Zero G Company. The first Japanese Vocaloids were Meiko and Kaito, released by Yamaha, Yay. and sold by Krypton Future Media in November of 2004. The thing about Meiko and Kaito is that even though they eventually were giving a face and like a uh -huh. like set design, originally they were just kind of... Japanese voice yeah. banks. That's why their names are very basic. Like Kaito Meiko. You're going to find a million people named that, basically. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because that's it's very important it's, to know it's that. The Jim, it's, it's the John and Jane. It's the John and Jane, essentially. Because all vocal aid have voice providers that the program recreates to sing whenever the user inputs as lyrics in the, in the piano. Here's a screenshot of the Vocaloid uh, software that I, 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 I don't remember, that I don't I know how to use to, like, because I don't know music. <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to save up in order for me to eventually buy a Vocaloid program and then I just never did. That's so fucking valid because me too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're getting to the fucking queen of it queen of it all hatsune miku she was released Let's august 31st go. 2007 as far as the vocal aid cv series cv stands for character voice i believe because the creator of minecraft the creator of minecraft we love to see it but she's part of the vocal aid cv series which is basically where like i said kaito meiko didn't really have like a character or a set design personality in the cv series they wanted to release it so that vocaloids would now have like a mascot attached to them so the voice would have like mm. A character attached to it so if you're tuning Hatsune Miku that yeah you're just barely older than Miku I'm old <laughs> yeah you're older than Miku you're older than Miku bro <laughs> damn damn how do you feel knowing that this ancient deity is actually younger <laughs> than you <laughs> But the crypto wanted to focus more on specific concepts and vocal direction because they felt like they could sell more if there was a character attached to it. And they were right. because she And she was the first one developed by Krypton and was met with huge success. Like, monumental. Like, the reason why Miku is... The, oh, yeah, the reason why Miku has a 001 is because she was the first released of this series. Mm, okay, okay. And the reason why she's the face of it is because she was the first one made. And because she was the first one made, she's the most popular by far. She was the first one developed by Krypton, met with huge success. Musicians who utilize Vocaloids are known as producers. Yay. And here's just like an assortment of the original ones. As you can see, Miriam was just like a straight up lady, and Leon and Lola were just like guy, girl. And then eventually okay. down the line, they were giving quote unquote official designs. Okay. And Miriam, uh, this is a screenshot by Chesun who uh, tuned her voice. She is still kind of used to this day, but not very often because she's kind of hard to tune because her software is so much older. Yeah. Yeah. But because, again, they're not official character characters, they just kind of base it off of the woman on the box <laughs> who's the fair. voice provider because that's Miriam Stockley. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah. Um, and here's all the Vocaloids. I mean, I... Okay. I'm Miku, 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 Vrin, Len, Luca. Don't know that bitch. Don't know them. <laughs> don't know the person in the corner. Gumi, Gakapo. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Dear, dear God. I know her name. Dear I God. Know her name. Dear God. I know her name. I know her name. It's just, it's just, I'm just blanking on it. And then Nehru and Haku. Emily's very excited about Maya. <laughs> All right. And Teto. Okay. <laughs> Well, so I thought I one remember. of those was Victor. N what are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus Christ, y'all are y'all are uncultured in this. All right, so I'm gonna go over all of these. Credit. I I okay. I'll give you some credit. I'll give Emily some credits for recognizing me. <laughs> for recognizing Maya. 
Uranize with the cute old guy. Which one looks at the Urian? He Hiyama? <laughs> He does look like a basic bitch. Okay, so I chose these vocalites specifically because these these vocalites are used as the character designs behind most of the major characters in Evilis, especially yes. this main row up here. Yeah. All right. So we have Kaito, Meiko, Meiko, Hatsune Miku, Kagamina Rin, Kagamina Rin, Megurine Ruka, and then Hiyama Kiyoteru, and then um, Nekomura Iroha, and then we have F. SFA2 Miki, and then we have Gumi, Megapoid Gumi, and then we have Kamui Gakpo, and then we have Lily, Mayu, Kai Yuki, Te uh, Kasane Teto, Akita Neru, okay. and Yoana Haku. My, I have a friend from high school who, in my context to this day, is Haku. I love Haku. Because <laughs> she, me and her, she was also like my big friend, my, she was also really into vocal aid with me, and we made the joke that she was Haku and I was fucking Len. I oh I was the Teto. I I got assigned hey! Teto a lot as a child. This was me. Nice. This, this was my first Kinney. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mine was Len. So. Like, <laughs> but yeah. So Kaito, Meiko, Miku, Rin, Len, Luca, uh, uh, Kyoteru, Iroha, um, Gumi, Gakpo, Lily, Mayu, uh, Yuki. Teto, Neru, Haku, and then Miki. These guys all play major or minor roles throughout the series. And as you can see, they all have colors. You'll see soon how insane I kind of went. Anytime there is a character that is played by one of these guys, I highlight it according to their color. So there's a. Right, we love color coding. So if there's a character whose name appears in bright blue, in this like dark blue, it's Kaito. And uh, the teal, the teal bright, like. The bright teal is gonna be Miku. Oh, I signed uh, Len a lighter yellow, and then Neru kind of a dark muted yellow, and then Lily a uh, brighter yellow, I believe. And then Rin, I signed orange because her thing used to be oranges. I remember the fucking fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Shit. Oh, it was oh ice. God, it was like that's ice cream. So good. I, let's see. Ice cream, beer, uh, yep. spring onions. Week. Uh, oranges, uh, oranges bananas, bananas, and octopus. Octopus. And then... Carrots. Yeah, that's about it. Well, I, I don't know if Gakpo ever had one. Eggplant. Eggplant! That's what it was. I didn't even know Nettie was in this. Yeah, this bitch plays a major role, actually, in Story of Evil. You'll see. She I didn't know she had it. I, I, the people who I know have roles in Story of Evil, Kaito, Mieko, Miku, Rin, Len, Haku, and Haku. Yeah, no, Those... you are not ready for the things to come. <laughs> the fucking leak spin. Yeah, that shit took over the early 2000s internet. But yeah, these are the characters. You will see more of them, but drawn. It'll be hard to explain, but you'll just have to accept it as is. <laughs> yeah, these what? are the vocaloids. Wait, does that bitch have Hello Kitty on her hip? She does. Okay. All right, so who is Mothy underscore Akuno P? Mothy, my enemy... My fucking rival <laughs> is a songwriter and producer. He is the man, the myth, the legend behind the Evilist Chronicles, who exploded in popularity due in part to the Dart of Evil series within within the Chronicles in particular. He saw how widely used Mika was upon her first release, and instead decided to be built different and chose to purchase Kagamina Rin and Len icon. around 2008. Honestly, icon. icon. I thank him every day for that. I'd no, because Rin and Len were my favorites. Like, same, God. same. Rin was my favorite. Oh, Len was mine. <laughs> uh oh, ads. Uh oh, sounds like somebody has to uh -oh. subscribe with Prime. Uh -oh. Damn, you gotta get you, that Prime sub is looking real nice right about now. Anyway, Damn. Guys. Kaito is my boy. All right. After the release of Daughter of Evil, Certain Evil, and then Regret Message, he became to he began to conceptualize an overarching story. So I have to I have to I have to specify this. Anytime I talk about the Elos Chronicles, Mafi basically made shit up as he went along. I don't know what that means. So this series is going on since 2008. It is 2022 and it's still ongoing. He had a big story in mind, but most of the details he kind of made up as he went along. And you can kind of tell with how batshit insane the story is. Yeah. So over time, he released many songs and revealed to fans how each song was contained in the same universe over time. 14 years later, here's that story and the universe that he made. 
We're about to officially begin. We got the introduction out of the way. You know what Vocaloids are. You know what's going on. What do you mean still go? A song got released last week, Emily. <laughs> it is still going. It's technically what's going on right. Technically, the chron the Evos Chronicles is over right now. He's focusing on just Banika and her story, which won't make any sense to you until we learn who Banika is. <laughs> Jesus but yeah, Christ. this series never ended. A song got released like last week, and I I texted Colleen in a panic, being like, "I have to rewrite shit now." I remember. Yeah. Oh my god, that was so bad. I was like sitting at work sobbing because I was having a bad day, and then I checked like Toby Misa's account, and I'm like, "There's a new song." No. No. But yeah, th this bitch still going. It is. It never ended. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, so here's so, so yeah i'm so sorry on behalf mothy and i are here to tell you guys i'm so sorry for the knowledge i'm about to like put upon y'all i'm so sorry about the burden you're about to carry it truly is just like yeah this is this is mothy this is the man who created the thing that spiraled me into madness when i was about 12 okay. and then it kept Dude, going me too man <laughs> Also, you can't see very well, but over here we have we have uh, Kaito and Yuki, and then Miku and Haku. But their characters they play in Story of Evil. This was during one of his uh, Story of Evil novel novels. Oh, this is also very important. This is very important. Oh my god, I forgot to mention this. This series is not just Vocaloid songs. It is light novels. It is a stage play. It is many, many songs, yes, but it is also those two other things, novels, stage plays, like, this bitch is everywhere. There's a manga, I believe, as well. There was rumors of an anime in the early 2000s. I don't know if anything ever came of it, because at the time, Stir of Evil was not finished. But as a treat, I might show you guys the Daughter of Evil uh, stage play later, because it's very pretty. I showed it yesterday on stream, but like I'll show it again if need be. It's very pretty. Yeah, yeah. When I... Okay, hold on. Girl, let me tell you. <laughs> I... I I went through a crisis. I had a crisis. I there is so much shit. There is so much shit. There's so much fucking shit. <laughs> this is <Are> you <laughs> This th I had to read through all of this shit to understand what the fuck was going on and then just like combing the wiki with like a fine tooth comb. Oh my god. There's so much there's so many novels. There's so many fucking novels. There's so many fucking novels. Christ almighty, there's so many fucking novels. <laughs> we're, so... we're in this shit. That was that was fifteen pages of just summaries of the novels. I'm can, can, I would like to get off this ride. Now. You're fucking you're glued to your seat. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> hey guys, we're almost at fifteen subscribers. That's so Ooh, cool. Well, look at that. <laughs> All right. Part zero. Guy? Original sin story. Trigger warning. Lots of murder, transphobia, fucking incest, more murder, brainwashing, and a confusing plot. God damn. <laughs> this is a great start. This is a great Welcome start. Welcome to part zero. This is the prologue. This is the prologue. <laughs> Because the thing is, the Seven Deadly Sin songs are part of the Seven Deadly Sin series. Because it's just the yes. songs of the sinners, one after the other. Evil's Chronicles is that, plus all the backgrounds around them. <laughs> Start my day. Please. Good yes, morning, guys. Ruby. Good morning, Ruby. <laughs> yes, guys, please, read the tags. Here are your tags and your triggers. I can't believe we've got transphobia in the prologue. It's important to her story. It's important to her story. You're coming right out the gate. <laughs> also, I just have to specify, Mothy's like kind of, kind of woke, kind of woke. He's very gay friendly, but unfortunately, that means that. that he puts us through trauma. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's a list of all the songs. Here's a list of all the songs. True. Here's a list of all the songs in the original Sin story. So we have Wordplay, Bloodstain Switch, Barisol's Ch Child's and Only Child, Clockwork Lullaby, Madam Mary Go Round, Prophet Mary Go Round, Queen of Glass, Project Ma, Escape of Salma for the Witch, Moonlit Bear, Ma's Survival, Recollective Music Box, Whereabouts of the Miracle, Tale of Abandonment on a Moonlit Night, Chrono Story, and The Song I Heard Somewhere. Recognize none of these. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I think I kind of recognize Clockwork 
Lullaby, I think I was like, I listened to it once. Mm hmm. I really do but, feel like Matt Pat. <laughs> I feel like, I'm feeling very Matt Pat in the chilies tonight with how insane I sound. <laughs> oh my god. Matt Pat in the chilies tonight. I also recognize none of them. Also, you can argue that um Oh fuck, what's it called? What is it called? Something about a full moon a full moon laboratory is also part of this, but it's also very vague and no one knows who the singer is to this day. So it's very, it's also here, but it's, it's fine. All right. Welcome to the, f okay. So I have to explain what the periods are. This is the first period. What were the periods? They were separate worlds that existed within the universe of Evilist Chronicles. They are mostly completely separated worlds with what, with its own laws and gods. And I mean worlds as in like planets. So, so this is like, do we get time? Not time. Do we get fucking space travel? Yes. What? No. no. <laughs> buddy, buddy, bestie, 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 we just started. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> no, we just started. How is there space travel already? <laughs> Last time I checked, the fucking story of evil took place in fucking Baroque, fucking Baroque France or whatever the fuck. Oh, oh, you'll, you, ooh. Whew. You're, buddy. <laughs> You'll see. Okay. You'll see. You'll all see. Then you'll all Here. see. All right, so the first period was Earth, as in Earth. <laughs> the humans on Earth began to make incredible technological advances and then set out to create a whole new world with their incredible technology. The scientists created a second world known as the Second Period, a completely digital world they could observe, so it's a simulation type thing. To create the souls that would inhabit this digital world, the scientists created a tool known as the Black Box, which could manipulate quote-unquote soul data to create their copies into this new world and create new people. So, off to a strong and insane start, I know. So, <laughs> yes, there's going to be some made-up terminology that doesn't make any sense, but you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> so, the first period is Earth. The second period is a digital Earth made by the first period for funsies with a black box that broke down souls into a code. The second period is where the story kind of starts. We're still in the prologue. What the fuck? <laughs> That's Olivia said. <laughs> you killed a woman. Feeling good. Listen, it's listen. I know it's a lot, but we just got started. <laughs> I s problem. We just got so All right, so here's the yeah. second period. So the people, th this is oh, this was bef this was before I added just like the slide because there was too many songs. So the second, the people of the second period began to advance at the same point as the first period in a shorter amount of time. For shits and giggles, the first period developed a gene called the malice gene, which they had, which they gave to certain people to see what would happen. It turned into a disease known as hereditary evil razor syndrome, or HERS. It is a condition that makes you violent and malicious and well evil. Yes. Question. <laughs> Questions in the chat. Questions in the Colleen. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> so, first period creates a digital Are we world. Doing science, fucking human testing. Is human testing canon? Well, they're 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 simulations. So they're oh they're adding this fucking gene into the simulator. Yes. The simulator. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I thought they were doing like <laughs> no, no, no. So they created this gene in order to see what would happen in the simulated world, and they put it into the second period to see what would happen. <laughs> Hers quickly spread in the air. I don't know exactly. And those who would succumb to the malice often would not be able to turn back and would become very violent and aggressive. People with hers were put down with injections before they could get too violent. Over here, we have a character played by Mayu, who was a little girl who was inflicted by hers and caused the caused an explosion that killed her uh, father and his research team in the second period. Mm. And it, she called it a another her because she wasn't in control of herself and she had to be put down with injections. Oh, unfortunate. Now we meet Levia Barisol, the... Not the main, there's no, there's technically a main character. She's technically it in a way, but she's also the villain. <laughs> I mean, she's both the villain, the hero, the victim, the player, the, the, the god, the devil. She's everybody. 
Oh my god. If there's a plot, she's probably in the background. Kai, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm shocked. When you said you knew, I thought you knew at least this shit. I didn't know that you no. only knew, like, Story of Evil. And I even knew, then, I, not I many. I only knew Story of Evil. That's, like... And, like I said, I might recognize some more down the line as, like, shit I didn't realize was part of this car part of it. Yeah. Uh, this, I recognize none of those. Okay, that's great. That means I'm really, I'm really holding your hand here. <laughs> Also, I gotta make Chai Pat a little bit smaller because they are covering the the Damn screen. It. Tiny God Chai Pat. It, Chai God damn it, Chai Pat. Get your shit together. All right. Levia Barisol is a child who lived in the second period and started college at six years old and was known as a prodigy and her studies focused... Also, see, she's orange because she's played by Rin. Oh, Okay. <laughs> yeah, Eden, he was ch Eden, you're late! Oh my god, Eden, Eden Core! <laughs> Hi, Eden, Eden Core! Alright, Eden, quick summary. First period is a world known as Earth. Earth created, Earth created a digital world known as the second period. The second period was inflicted by a disease that the first period made up called... Okay, let me go back. <laughs> Oh my god. The second period created a disease called as hereditary evil razor syndrome, or HERS. It is a condition that makes you violent and malicious and, well, evil. HERS quickly spread, and those who have succumbed to the malice often would not be able to turn back because they'd be very violent. And this is all in a digital world. The first period is the real world. The second period is a digital world created by the first period. Got it? Oh, Good. Hold on, pause. Pause? Okay. Any questions, chat? <laughs> Any questions besides the obvious of why, what's going on, why are you doing this to me, blah, blah, blah. I'm back. Welcome back. They asked no questions. They lost their chance. Moving on. Also, um, there are some characters that just, like, don't have, like, a vocal attached to them, so they're just highlighted in bold if they're an important character. Okay. Awesome. So... She was a known prodigy, and her studies focus on the psychology of men at Held Yigdra's Research Institute in Russia. Digital Russia. <laughs> Digital Russia. <laughs> you know, Digital Russia. <laughs> Her studies led her to discover Malice's origin from being a different from being from a different world. She discovered the existence of the first period and that made her world very early on. She yeah, fake Russia. <laughs> she was a child of Rahab Berasol, who taught her how to do a swap mind technique that was developed by Held. I know that sounds insane. Swap mind technique is so fucking vital to the story. You have no idea how much body switching happens in this fucking series. <laughs> the second period began to fall apart due to the spread of hers. And so the second period was created spaceships to escape their doomed planet. And Levia was chosen to board the climb one ship. She created the type L black box. It could move souls into other bodies with the knowledge that she got from Rahab and the slot. My technique, she realized had to transfer soul data, oh. but she started to feel the effects of hers. No, I know. Also I have to, okay. This is like actually kind of serious because I don't know how to proceed with Behemo. It's a very complicated issue. Um, think, think Chihiro from Danganronpa, but like worse. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next slide is about Behemo, who in canon is a cross-dresser who sees their idealized self as a woman and constantly chooses to present as a woman whenever given the chance. However, according to Mothi, he's more of a character based around a Japanese subculture known as Otokonoko, where made dresses such as the one he wears is a common outfit that those in the subculture wear. However, a lot of the story is very trans femme coded, especially with how in canon characters react to Behemo being AMAB, but wears girls' clothes and presents as a girl. Like, there's literally a part that's gonna come up where Behemo explains that his, I like, his, their ideal self is of a woman and that they wish they were born a woman. But the, but like, in canon, everyone still refers to them as he, him pronouns. It's very, it feels, it, as someone who is trans, it feels very strange. It, it's, yeah, so for that reason, I'll be sticking to they, she, he. I'll be very interchangeable with Behemo, okay? So, like, just don't be a weirdo. We, 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 it's a we, very, it's a very nuanced issue that, like, because the series has moved on way past Behemo at this point, I don't know yeah. if it'll ever be addressed. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah, so, alright, back to the haha, -ha, silly, goofy music, music. Alright. 
Uh, so we're going over Behemo Barisal now. So Behemo lived in the first period and was the son of a wealthy of the wealthy Barisal in the first period. Behemo loved right. wearing dresses and playing with dolls. When they started dating a maid, they asked if they could wear her dress, and she was very disgusted by them. And in the story, it explains that like the maid basically started spreading rumors about her, and started talking very badly about her for being like a boy who likes girl things. It's very again very trans femme coded, unfortunately. So I it's Damn. very complicated. Um. As they were related to one of the developers behind the second period, they were able to choose his... This is what I mean. They were able to choose his avatar in the second period to be a girl, as he saw his ideal self to be a girl. Their life was very hard, and while Livia was suffering from malice, Behemoth would often hide in her room and rip apart their dolls. Or rather, people? I'm not sure if Behemoth's a murderer or not. It wasn't very explicit. The exact line from the song is the dolls scattered about inside the room. Their limbs were warm and in pieces. So it's like, are you a killer? <laughs> I'm not What's sure yet. Are you, do you like, do you like kill? Do you do a little bit of killing? Is this a murder situation? Is this a little, is this a little bit of a murder? <laughs> oh God, we've already traumatized chat. Hey chat. Buddy, we're at slide 18. <laughs> There's a hundred plus more to go. Today. Yeah, just today. I haven't even finished. Ty, I appreciate the hard work you put into this shit, but my god. Thank you. I go insane. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine, guys. <laughs> so this is where things get weirder. Things were okay so far. I know. Things are so okay. normal. Yeah, things were normal. Livia, meanwhile, decided to consult with fellow with a fellow physicist named Seth Twyright. He is played by Hiyama Kiyoteru, and that's why he's uh in in this like light brown shade. Seth, let me fucking tell you about Seth. Seth is a fucking thorn in my side. He never fucking leaves. He's a little bitch boy, and I hate him. Everything is everything in this fucking story can be traced back to Seth. Did you, I think you came back to, like, bitch about him at some point. I don't know if it was in the D Discord or, like, DMs about to me. Some, I probably. Yeah, his name is Seth. I, I mean, I don't know if that's worse, if that's better or worse than Kyle. Oh, God, we haven't gone to Kyle. I have so many thoughts about Kyle. I think that they named him Kyle. Yeah, so this is Seth. Um, he was not chosen aboard the Climb 1, and despite being one of the inventors of the Type E black box and the sole inventor of Type S, Type S could transfer spirit data to other worlds. We haven't even gone to Kyle! Shut up, Kyle! We'll get to him, guys! <laughs> I know it's very exciting to talk about Kyle, but we haven't even gotten to Kyle. <laughs> So, Seth tells Levia to deal with her malice. She has to go and kill her parallel self from the different world. She makes contact, somehow, and appears in Behemo's room to kill him. However, she realizes that it was all a ploy set up by Seth to get, to get her to kill someone and fall prey to her malice instincts and develop hers. So, instead, she rescues Behemo and brings her to the second period. Behemo and Levia tell everyone that they're twins, and Behemo begins working under Professor Lich Arklau. Lich isn't played by a specific vocaloid, but he is a very important character, and he, do he does have a face. Okay. Most songs include him. He's, like, tuned down Kaito, okay. or, or he's tuned down Seth, I can't tell. Okay. <laughs> and held Yigdra to have an artificial eye installed into Behemo. The eye will come up later for reasons... Just remember that Behemoth has a fake eye for science okay. reasons. Okay. Livia and Behemoth boarded the Climb 1 and on board were many black boxes. By the way, as this was happening, the first period, aka Earth, got destroyed a while ago. And the Climb 1 enters the first period <sighs> reality from the digital world. And that is the world that they're going to fix and recreate. Do not ask me how. Just know that if Levy was able to do it, she was able to do it again and but bring everyone along. So the, so Earth got destroyed after Behemoth went to the second world. After the Behemoth went to the second period. 
Okay. And so now the climb one where every because now we're in space. Now we're doing space travel. So the climb one leaves the digital world and enters the real world. So now we're at, so yeah. So the climb one at this point has lost contact with the other spaceships because they're in the real world now, not the digital one. So they quickly realized that they were the last inhabitants of Earth, second period. So they decided, you guessed it, to make their own species in the image of the Earthlings into the third period, which was the first period. By using their They're black, just... by using their black boxes with Levia in charge of the souls. Yes. Question. <laughs> but we're just repeating history. Yes. But now Levia is in charge. Which, as you as you can recall, she has hers. This is gonna end great. Yeah, it's gonna be good, so cool. So Levia designed that designed the hellish yard as a means to sort out hers and good souls for the world. Behema was the caretaker of the graveyard and was able to create the human bodies. It was a graveyard for the technology from the second period that was to be made deep below the earth. We'll get back to it later because the graveyard becomes very important for one of the endings. Held and Luna Hazuki, another crew member, want to be reincarnate into the new world as forest spirits. But Levia was like, mm, but I want to be a god, and so do the others. So the crew begins to fight, and it starts to get violent. Her is spreading now thanks to Levia, and also thanks to <gasps> Seth Twilight, my fucking enemy. He's back. He's back. He's back. Look at his fucking sly face. Look at that bitch. Look at that whore. He looks like a, the most basic of white boys. He does, but he's evil. <laughs> I mean, aren't most basic white boys? True, but he's like special because he's super fucking smart. <laughs> oh god, he has a degree! He has a degree! Uh oh, does that. Uh oh, uh oh, stinky. There's a disaster. Seth Twilight had stuck, had snuck onto the ship. Remember, he wasn't allowed on the ship, he has hers. Everyone knew that. He wasn't allowed on the ship. He snuck on the ship and Seth was a her. He's a bitch. He also built a lab I don't understand this. So, while everyone was coding and programming the third period, he also sneakily used the computers that Levia and the others were using to build a laboratory on the third period that he could teleport into when, ne when things got tough. Okay. So, uh, the Climb 1 crew used that laboratory to, to house humans to populate the new world, and it also contained a human form for Seth, because he felt like something bad was coming. He had infected members, such as Lich, who ha was used as a model for the new Earthlings, which meant that the new Earthlings could develop her. <laughs> Bye, Emily! <laughs> Bye, Emily! Because of all the fighting, because of Luna and Held, Climb 1 crashes onto the third period. Upon the crash, the physical forms of everyone were destroyed, but everyone had their data in the black box L, thanks to Levia. Everyone except for Luna, because Luna somehow survived the crash? Which one's Luna again? Uh, she's just an, uh, another crew member. She's Okay. She's one of the ones who wanted to reincarnate as a forest spirit. It was her and Held. Oh, okay. It was her and Held versus everybody. Okay. After the crash, Seth wakes up in the human form he had pre-prepared. Two for two on bitches yeah. that won't fucking die. <laughs> Did you really think I would go on deep time without a fucking FNAF reference, you bitch? I won't fucking die because now Seth is fully alive and has a human form. Try PC on the bridge. No! Side note. God, I forgot about this. Luna Hazuki had a companion robot she had created known as Talos, who helped oversee the creation of the third period, and was the one who used Held as a model for one of the races. After the crash, Talos took the form of a bat. We'll get back to him later in like just one slide. He'll be he'll be here in a second, but just know that he exists. At some point, he was created. Okay. On to the actual story. We're so close. We're now in official original sin. That was all prologue. This is like part... 
This is the pro- That was the prologue to the prologue. This is the prologue. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All that was background knowledge you just needed. <laughs> I, did I really? Yes! It's important. So, the climb one was ex yeah, was me. excavated. I'm sorry. I love you. Mwah. Love you. So the climb one was excavated years and years later by the Earthlings they created. The humans regarded the climb one as a holy ark and renamed it Sin. The magic kingdom of Levianta was created around Sin. So you know, always a good start to create your to create your kingdom around a thing called Sin. Truly, and, and, and that worked great in the Bible. And that worked so cool in the Bible. Everything works out in the Bible, as we all know. <laughs> Levia was created around Sin using the technology in the lab created by Seth that was left behind. Held and Talos escaped the black box, don't ask, and reincarnated as gods for this world to keep it safe from Levia and Behemoth, who had been planned to come back as twin dragon gods. As, and the only reason they hadn't yet was because Held and Luna had sabotaged their plans before they died. Held, Held reincarnated as the Millennium Tree, which is seen here down below. And Levia and Behemoth remained trapped in sin. Tells and held hid Luna's existence from Levia and Behemoth. You know, wow. casual, quirky. Totally. Now we're at the kingdom of Levianta. Eventually, a woman by the name of Alice Merry-Go-Round, or Maria Moonlit, became Levianta's queen. She's pink. She's voiced by um, Idoha. Levia and Behemo from within the temple where the sin is posed as their parents, as her parents, and gave her false prophecies as they would on, as they only spoke to her, she became known as the prophet Merry Go Round. Seth, under the alias of Horus Sintus, worked under Alice's Senate member Miroku Loop Octopus. Yes, that's his name. <laughs> I'm naming I'm naming I I, I I don't care. I need to get an animal and name it that. Miroko Loop Octopus. <laughs> he was, okay. He was in charge of disposing of Maria's twin children, Adam and Eve, who were from a virgin birth caused by Levia and Behemo. Don't ask. <laughs> no, no. You can't tell us. No. Just because you tell me not to ask doesn't mean I'm not going to ask. What the fuck does that mean? So oh, Levia, no. Levia and Behemo because they have god powers now, because they created this world, made Maria pregnant via god powers, and then she tried to explain to everybody, like Maria tried to explain to everybody, that Adam and Eve, her children, were from a virgin birth. Nobody believed her because she, because everyone thought that was stupid and assumed that she was actually sleeping with Miroku, who also denied the children, which is why he wanted to get rid of them because he thought it would, uh fuck up his spot as, like, head of the Senate. Um, so he hires Horace to get rid of the kids. He throws Adam in, like, a lake or something, and, and, yeah, <laughs> he throws Horace, he throws Adam in, like, a river or something. He ends up at, like, the moon. He ends up also being raised by, like, m like, Maria's, like, cousins or some shit. I don't remember. Um, Seth experiments on Eve for a while and creates a mind control venom from her blood. Because, of course, that's what you do with babies. <laughs> I, this, this, this is too much already. <laughs> we're, we're still in the prologue. What in the Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> Maria gets a vision of Levianta's destruction if Levia and Behemo don't get human vessels, and she shares her vision with her people. So what the fuck is Seth doing meanwhile? So this is where Seth decides to be even fucking wilder. So Seth wanted a better body. So he hired Ryle Zaveda to find Eve again. And he found Adam and took him in for experiment purposes. Seth researched bodies and began cloning himself and soon creating ghoul children. He made... They're, they're children that were made in a lab, essentially. They weren't born or everything. They were made in a lab by Seth. Okay. He made them based off of Behemoth's methods and were artificial humans. First two ghoul children were named Pala Noel and Kirill's Clockworker. Pala Noel became a serial killer. Kirill became a music box craftsman. <laughs> Damn, so, so, if you, that it's really that trend where my parents raised two different kids. Basically, and it's twins. So, <laughs> yeah, this one became a serial killer. This one became a clockwork, uh, a, a craftsman. Because those are the two genders: serial killer and music box. 
Oh my god. <laughs> More ghoul children were made. Kiro was taken in by the clockwork family, and unlike Pale, he realized or uh, he realized he had hers and actively tried to resist it. The reason why the reason why Pale became a serial killer was because he gave in to hers. Okay. Um, after Kirill and, Pel- and Pale, Seth stopped using his own DNA for the ghoul children and created Irina Clockworker, pink, and Meta Samhofer, Mako, so red. Yay. Bright red is going to be Mako. This shade of pink is going to be is going to be Idoha, Irina. Pay attention yeah. to this pink bitch right here. This fucking this bitch. She'll never go away. She will never go away. <laughs> And you will soon, Between, you will soon see. She, I need a visual of which Vocaloid she is again. Um, Iroha. I need a vi- I don't know which one that is. Nekomura Iroha. Uh, the Hello Kitty bitch. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, now, now, so, that's her, that's her. Thank you. C- Clockwork family's whole thing. So, Kirill and Arena were raised together in the Clockworker family because Seth just kind of dropped them off and went like, here you go, free kids. And the Clockwork <laughs> family went like, okay, cool. And then... Kirill met the local priestess, Aluka uh, Clear Klatia. This is Vocaloid. Oh, Eden, you don't know. This is all a vo- this is all a Vocaloid series. This is all a Vocaloid series. <laughs> this is a series of Vocaloid songs. <laughs> <laughs> when I, this was this was my first fandom, I wanna say. This was the first thing I ever did deep dives on as a child, because I went down this rabbit hole deep as a kid. And never went away. <laughs> And Aluka is this shade of pink, and she's voiced by Luca. Duh, mm. Aluka. And she's blonde. She's a different character design. Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> um, had, Aluka had found the cure for hers. The two fell in love, Kirill and Aluka, which Arena didn't like because she was in love with her brother. Ah! Incest! <laughs> I, was so, I was getting worried because I think like we haven't gotten to that bit yet. Yeah, like, baby! It's waiting for it. Eden, this is what you get for being late to the deep dives. <laughs> this is what you fucking get, Eden. <laughs> also, not to mention, it must be mentioned that Arena wasn't cured of hers. Only Kirill was. Aluka and Kirill were engaged to be wed until... Project Mem Alef. <laughs> okay, this is where things get bad. I started oh, cleaning oh. up my old dorm. This is awful. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad you think it's awful. I love it. I love. I love the child. Re- I love the children's reactions. All right. So Project Ma, which is overseen by Adam Moonlit, voiced by Kaito, was a project to find a suitable magical woman to give birth to the twin gods, human vessels, from the uh, vision that Maria Moonlit had. Eve Zavetta was chosen because she had been already previously experiment- experimented on by Seth and he knew that he knew how to get to her. And was the only reason she applied was because she was in because okay. The only reason she applied f- to uh, become the new Ma or Mem Aleph was because Adam had used a brainwashing venom on her, which made her fall in love with him. Because Seth instructed him to do that. Eve was in, and also remember, Eve and Adam are twins. <laughs> Did you forget? <laughs> I thought this was hopefully maybe a different Adam and Eve. Nope, this is the same Adam and Eve. They were raised like different families, so they never knew that they were related. <laughs> Eve was injected with the seed of God. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> Gross and nasty. Welcome to Evilist Chronicles. It fucking sucks. <laughs> but yeah, Eve was injected by the seed of God and became Ooh. pregnant. She gave birth to twins named Cain and Abel, and they were but they were born stillborns. This effectively broke Eve's mind entirely, and in her delusional state, her and Adam ran away to live in Hell's forest because Adam also fell in love with her, but for real this time. He also didn't know that they were related. They didn't know that they were twins. Seth. <sighs> <laughs> Hi, Sappho. You're late as oh, well. God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just I feel so bad for the people who missed the trigger warnings. Oh, God. Yeah, there's a reason why I give them at the beginning. <laughs> there's a lot. We haven't gone to we haven't gone to Venomania yet. That's the real bad shit. Oh, God. That one I do know. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So Adam and Eve are twins. They fell in love. Uh. Eve gave birth to... Also, the reason why the seed of God didn't work is (sighs) because... 
There's a reason I put mature broadcast on my streams. So, because Adam put his own DNA into the seed of God because he was in love with Eve and wanted the kids to be his. So that fucked it up. And that's why Cain and Abel were born stillborn. I hate this. I hate all of You this. hate this! I had to read this with my own eyes in detail! <laughs> this is so much! Oh, they ran away to live in Hell's Forest, which is where the Millennium Tree is. Seth was being a bitch again in the background, so the project was considered a failure, but a new plan was made, and Seth was put in charge now that Adam had gone and ran away. He found Meta again. Remember, she was a ghoul child that, uh, that uh, Seth had made, who had, since she was created, had fell in love with Paul Noel, which isn't incest, because Seth was made, because Pale was made with Seth's DNA, Meta was made by a different DNA, so it's fine. Yay! It's, yay! Not incest. Whoa! Anytime you um, have to say it's technically not incest. I know, I hate this series. <laughs> There's a reason why I put trigger warning incest in the first slide. <laughs> um, she became a criminal alongside Paul Noel. She was captured and offered a plea deal where she pleaded guilty she could be used in Project Ma and be pardoned for all her crimes. She accepted and gave birth to twins, Hansel and Gretel. So, uh, Len and Ren. Ren is orange, and Len is this shade. They're back. They're back. They're here again. She didn't want her babies to be experimented on like she was as a child, so she took them and ran away into Hell's Forest. Here's a screenshot from the music video. Project Ma was deemed a failure again, and Seth got fired. LOL. L. <laughs> Can I get some L's in the chat for Seth? Honestly, huge L mood for Seth right there. But uh-oh. Meta's not allowed happiness. <laughs> Meta one day leaves her babies on the floor for a few seconds to grab something, and while her back was turned, Eve Moonlit appears and steals her babies. Eve mi Eve's mind is shattered as she believes the babies to be red apples and Meta to be a large bear. When Meta catches up to Eve on her doorstep, Eve lashes out and kills Meta. Eve tells Adam that she brought home some lovely fruits, and Adam tells her that, the, that their children are long gone and uh, buried, and Eve finally snaps back to reality and realizes what she's done and screams. Because she put them down because it's the forest and they live in the dirt! They live- they're homeless! She put them down to grab some food! Because her food basket was five feet away! And Eve's insane! <laughs> also, pay attention to everything Eve does. Eve comes back frequently. And you'll understand why as well. <laughs> they're homeless! They live in the woods! Where's she gonna put them? The trees? <laughs> What? No, not the tree! <laughs> They're gonna fall! <laughs> Adam tells her to return to the children. To return the children to her mother. It's too late. Meta's already dead. They decide to keep the children for now and not tell anybody. They live in Hell's Forest. Nobody lives nearby so they can get away with it. Back to Seth. I hate this part. Okay, while on his unemployment arc, <laughs> he worked on some more experiments, including stuffing a black box type S into the heart of a stuffed toy, a Jakoku, a Jakoku sword called the Venom Sword. The Jakoku is basically this world's equivalent of Japan. Okay. A golden key called the Grim of the End. A little boy. <laughs> a whole ass little boy, okay. Just a little boy. Just a little boy. He was a soulless irregular named Amostia, who's voiced by Len, because of the color, that could bring about the end of the world by erasing all the streets of the world when the end came. Seth sealed him away for later use. After this, he was readmitted into Project Ma for its seventh attempt. They tried, like... Five more times before this. Five or four more times before this. And we're like, we need Seth back. We keep failing. <laughs> this time, they decide to get the vessel via a death game. Oh, this is fucking Danganronpa now? Kind of. So, how many court characters do does Lynn? <laughs> okay. <laughs> listen, just, just, listen, here's how I accept things. Just accept them. We're at a Hunger Games arc. It's fine. <laughs> a lot of the details don't come back till later. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> So, four women were chosen to fight in the fight to the death to become Ma, Milky Eights, which is voiced by Miki, Lai Li, which is voiced by Lily, um, Eluka, and then Arena. As the games went on, Seth was whispering in Arena's ear and told her to kill, because she has malice and also Seth created her. 
<laughs> All right, goodbye, Ruby. Take care, Ruby. We love you. Bye. Take care of yourself. She listened to his voice and made all her killings sound like accidents. She threw lie off a cliff, hung li- uh, she threw- oh, I, I put lie twice. She threw, uh, lie off a cliff. She hung Milky, because that's a horrible name. <laughs> Hate it. And both of them were ruled as suicides because they couldn't handle the pressure. When it- when it is down to her and Aluka, Arena tricked Aluka into a hug and Arena stabbed her in the back, literally. Damn. It happens. It happens to the best of us. It's fine. Serena's the queen now. Yay! Everyone clap and cheer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. After killing okay. everyone, she is crowned the new queen of Livianta and is to be injected with the god seed. I hate okay. it too. I know. I hate okay. it too. I hate it too. Kirill, after witnessing Arena kill a Luca, wants Arena gone, but he can't bring himself to do it until Levia starts taking over his mind. A fragment of Levia's soul from within the sin pretends to be a Luca and tells him to take her body to the sin and resurrect her there. This is a part of Levia's plan to use a Luca's uh, body to with the black box S and type L. However, <laughs> it causes a huge explosion, which destroys the kingdom. <laughs> So the kingdom of Levantia is gone and buried and dead and exploded. Aluka's body survives the explosion because of clockwork magic. To keep her body ageless and undying, Kirill also survives. I <laughs> didn't know Kirill had magical time-stopping abilities. Which one is they, are they again? What? Which one are they again? There's some already so... Kirill is the one that's the, the uh, Seth Twilight's clone. Okay. So because he's a clock worker, his family taught him clockwork magic, which means he can oh, stop oh, yeah. time. Okay. Okay. I remember now. I remember now. So also Kirill si- survives the explosion because Levia and Behemoth's dragon form scoop him into his mouth and take him safely away. No one knows why. No one knows why. No one knows why it did this. Also, after the explosion, he ends up with all of Seth's memories? No one knows why. <laughs> he has a whole side plot about making magic music boxes that can tell the future through songs, and I don't want to get into it. It's way too much. Talos is there again, and at some point, Talos brings back the real Luca, and they get married. It's... yeah. Because... because when he revives Luca, it's not Luca. It's Levia! It's body switching time! <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Levia and Behemo end up in a Luca's body. Levia takes a dominant role in the body, and Behemo goes into a deep sleep. However, there were some complications due to the black box's explosion, and Levia has amnesia and believes she truly is a Luca. Because, you know. Naturally. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You know, it's so quirky like that. You know, let me take some of my water. I'm sweating. I'm so sweaty right now. It's hot as fuck everywhere. It's so hot, and then I've got this PowerPoint that I literally blood, sweat, and tears into. <laughs> um, Seth takes Arena into the Lunaka Labora, which is which is what Seth's um, which is what Seth's laboratory was called. And transfers Arena's spirit data into the stuffed cat he had stuffed a mini black box into. Arena is told to continue Seth's experiment for him, and he quote-unquote dies. But he doesn't fucking die. He never dies. He never goes away. He's always around. Bothering me. <laughs> my enemy. My enemies never die. My, my, my friends die, though. <laughs> Thank- okay, that sounds like a threat. It's fine. It's fine. We're both enemies and friends. You'll live forever. <laughs> oh, babe. Oh, okay. It's fine. That's one way to get immortality. You're welcome. <laughs> Arena witnesses seven lights falling out of the night sky, the vessels of sin. Seth had created them. She decides that Aluka is the reason why the catastrophe happens and not, you know, the actual man that blew it up, her brother. <laughs> But no, no, she, like, here's a screenshot from the song. She's like, yes, I love retribution against the woman that stole everything. And she's talking about Aluka. Oh, my God. 
Arena is the new bad bitch around. Arena then decides that she wants to acquire the vessels of sin to turn people into artificial hers, just like how Seth had made her. Therefore, she makes up several artificial bodies for herself because her cat body can't do much else. It's kind of weak because it's a plushie. <laughs> Just know, if you see a character coming up with a red cat, it's Arena causing problems on purpose again because she has many, many aliases. She chooses the alias at first of, a of IR and begins to travel in search of the vessels of sin and creates a vast information network. She basically goes girl boss mode. Uh, yay? Is this a good yay? Or is this a no, yay? she's super evil, but it's also kind okay. of girl boss of her. How quickly she was just like, welp. I'm now a cat who possesses other people. I guess I'll create the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Naturally. So what ever happened to Hansel and Gretel? I'm so glad you asked, Coley. <laughs> I, I was just dying. I <laughs> it's Thank you, Colleen. So glad you asked. After the Leviante catastrophe, a famine struck and many families went hungry, including the Moonlit family. Adam and Eve couldn't find, find themselves able to take care of their stolen children. So they led them into the woods and abandoned them on a moonlit night. Hence the song, Abandonment on Moonlit Night. <laughs> Okay. Hansel and Greta were lost, but eventually found their way back to the moonlit residence where they killed the witch and the henchman, even Adam, and threw Eve into the oven and watched her burn. <laughs> you know, as kids do, <laughs> as quirky kids do. This is too much. <laughs> this turned Eve's body into original sin. How? Magic. Fucking magic. Oh. So. Oh, do we finally get a song? We, we finally, finally get a song. We finally get a song, guys. The twins split it into seven fragments for each of the seven deadly <gasps> sins. And oh, performed... I, recognize my, I recognize Rebirth Day. Yes. Yeah, I, I can... And perform an incomplete rebirth day. rebirth day. What's a rebirth day? Next slide. I'll explain the next slide. Six spirits of the forest, the earthlings that, rem that remain as forest spirits in Hell's, for in Hell's forest, are remade by Hansel and Gretel into demons of sin, the house household objects. Thus, the two end up creating vessels of sin and scatter the sins across the world before spending the rest of their lives looking for their real mother and father. We finally get a song. <laughs> I remember we, we birthday was like my favorite of like the uh, s the uh, story of evil songs for a while. No, you bitch! Oh, it's doing it again. We are not looking at this tiny ass shit. We are looking at the full screen. What the fuck? Okay, I guess oh. we'll just have to do that. Can you still see the screen? Yes. Okay, I think we're only gonna do the intro bit of this song. But yes, the song is wonderful. A very good song. Yo, you're the first Vocaloid song of the PowerPoint, guys! Woo! We're in for a fucking wild time. Yay! I love this song, it's so cool. My boy and my girl, I love them. <laughs> My babies. I cradled There's them. Eve in the oven. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Rip baby stealer. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, she was brainwashed, so you kind of feel bad for her. I'll let y'all hear the guitar riff after this. I'll let y'all hear the guitar riff as a treat. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Ooh. 
No more. <laughs> <laughs> you get two seconds of Luca singing. Damn. Ah! Oh, so now you do it. Oh, I hate this. Hello? PowerPoint? PowerPoint? Hello? PowerPoint? Oh my god, it's working against you. It's working. It doesn't want me to be happy. Unfortunate. Alright, so we have the vessels now. These are the vessels of sin. Okay. So we've got the Venom Sword, the Glass of Conchita, the Four Mares of Lucifania, <gasps> Clockwork Doll, <gasps> Twin Blades of Leviata, Marlon's Spoon, and Grim the End. So this is Lust, Gluttony, uh, 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 Pride, Sloth, Envy, Greed, and Wrath. Nice. Nice. And here's another illustration. All the illustrations of this series are really fucking cool. E. So here's how every birthday works because it's fucking bullshit and I hate yeah. it. <laughs> I, rem I remember every birthday mainly because I always thought it was like a main part of like the story of evil because I like I thought it was like later on because I was always grouped in with like the evil saga. Mm hmm. Little did you know, it actually comes way, 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 way fucking late. <laughs> yeah, and because everyone, because and all the AMVs, every time I watched one of like the music videos, it would always make references to the story of evil. Not, I like, mean, the story it of technically story. is, but it's it's complicated. It's very complicated. Okay. So a rebirth, they typically needed a set of irregular twins and a black box. The spell was usually activated by saying its name aloud and the user putting their hands on their chest. If done correctly, the rebirth, they could produce an entirely new world with its reformatting power. However, if done incorrectly, the rebirth, they could at least reformat individuals within the user's immediate vicinity. With the case of Hansel and Gretel, who were merely incomplete copies of Behemo and Levia, that's what Hansel and Gretel, that's all Hansel and Gretel are, really. Yeah. Um, their rebirth, they could only reformat the spirit data of the earthlings and turn them into demons of sin. Another application rebirth day was the reincarnations Arte and po Poyo cursing Ron Grapple, who will get to <laughs> to be continually reanimated. This can only be reversed by another set of irregular twins. Okay. Meanwhile, with Luca, we're almost done with the prologue. Yay! And Luca visits the god Held at Held's forest and explains how she's been murdered and resurrected. Held also reveals that the seven deadly sins have been released across the world. Luca, bored and with nothing better to do, decides to take upon the task of retrieving the seven vessels of sin for Held. I couldn't say that sentence at first. You're fine. Around this time, Twilight reincarnates as the demon of wrath in Held's forest. We'll get back to him later. Periodically, a song's a, as a, a song. <laughs> you good? I'm having a stroke. Periodically, oh in the God. songs as a lullaby will be heard. Whoa. Periodically, in the songs, a lullaby will be heard that is known as the clockwork lullaby. It has 12 Dang variants. God. By changing the lyrics or melody of the song, it can change the effects of the song has. Some effects include detection magic, sealing magic, healing magic, etc. Is this the last part before? Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's fine. Shh, shh, shh. Okay. You get a song. I'm going to the bathroom. No. No. It's doing it again. Why does it hate you? Why is full screen mode unavailable? Food. This is full. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. It's fine. We got this. Here you go. Song. Have fun. Yay! <laughs> How are we doing, chat? Are we are we all suffering as much as I am? Cause holy shit. I thought I knew this shit, but I guess fucking not. Oh god, this oh god it froze. Chai! Chai! Hello? Froze on me. I heard the screams from my headset, so I turned around. <laughs> Chai, it froze! Thank you, dear. Did, is it working now? Hold on, wait, no, it, pa it's, it paused. <laughs> is it working now? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll be right back. <gasps> Pause, never mind, I fucking can't leave, actually! <laughs> Delphi, 
wow, it's the mod I forgot that I streamed today. <laughs> Hi, bestie. Hi, how how was Odyssey? Some, you've missed some batshit sh things already, guys. Don't L me! You're the one who forgot about today! I'm grabbing the crow. The crow gets to watch with me. Hello, crow. It is the filter, crow. <laughs> <laughs> Artem <laughs> Art Artemis, leave me alone. Leave me alone, Artemis. Well, since Delphi's here, that means I'm gonna leave this song running and you explain what you've learned so far. Well, I finally go pee! Oh god, you want me to explain this shit? Okay. So, there was two planets. One of them was Earth. Earth is now God. But before Earth was God, we made robots. No, we made like an artificial intelligence bullshit. And then there was these two twins, and then trick or warning for a lot of incest. Like, way too much incest. Than there has to be, which anytime there's incest, that's un more than there needs to be, period. One, but like, so there's like multiple twins going on and multiple, like, I can't believe they made me explain this shit, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so all you need to know is now the world ended again, and now there's also like the seven deadly sins now have like vessels and shit. And now we have a song talking about magic and clocks. I do recognize this song. I did. Okay, I recognize this song. So, I hope. I I don't think I did a good job. I really didn't. But Godspeed, Godspeed. If you understood any of that, cause oh God, how did I do, guys? Now we get to just listen to the pretty music. Oh yeah, I should have bet the, the trigger- You guys missed the trigger warnings. There's like- There was murder. There was- like, Again, way too much incest. Like, the Jesus Christ. It should not be any, but... Now we're just gonna listen to the pretty song. I'm sorry. How are you guys doing? Oh, and it disappeared. Oh, it's back. Chai, I don't think I did a good job. I'm back. I don't did... think I did. Uh huh. Did I miss anything? Wait, I did a... What? I, I did a very bad job explaining. That's I okay. Kinda that's I kinda okay. I just focused on the, 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 the sheer amount of incest that's going on. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, for some reason, the prologue is the worst <laughs> to fucking try to keep. There's so much Mothy squeezed in that's just bash it and say that he never expands on. But Clockwork Love is a good song, so I'm happy. Yeah. It is! I mean, I do recognize this song now that I'm, like, actually listening to it. But yeah, I, I, just, this is, this is all you need. First period, gone. Second period, digital. Second period comes to first period. First period is now the third so period. Loose. Mystery! <laughs> Hi, Mystery! Thank you so much for the follow, Mystery. lovely. You're a little tadpole now. Welcome! Welcome to the fucking struggle bug. But it's okay, we're literally about to start the next part where things start to slowly make sense. Also remember, Seth Twilight, the worst. Arena Clockworker, also the worst. She's an evil cat. And then, um, Aluka Clockworker is a good witch who's looking for the Vessels of Sin to save the world. Arena wants to destroy the world. Yeah. Yay! Yay! I'm losing it. Now you work, you bitch! I hate it here. I hate, I hate Google. It Damn. hates me, and I hate it back. Alright, so that's a clockwork lullaby. Nice. And everybody left. Whatever. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> oh. 
I hate it here. So from this point forward, it's hard to fucking balance between what Aluka and Arena are up to because there's like 500 plots going on all at the same fucking time. So if you notice, I'm more focused on Arena. You're right. I am biased. Arena does more. So Aluka is just kind of always there. As soon as she's always up to something in the background, usually failing, actually. It's actually really sad how oh. often this bitch is failing. Damn. <laughs> so welcome to part one. Yes. <laughs> that sounds like I'm cheering for the sixth, the third one. I'm not. I just really like this fucking song. This song slaps so fucking hard. It like, really does. Goddamn. But it you has no business going this fucking hard. Eden, Eden, is having a gay moment. Eden's having a gay moment. Eden, Eden. My brother in Christ, my brother in Christ, get a hold of yourself. Can I talk about the trigger warnings real quick? I All right. Have to redirect yourself to the trigger warnings. <laughs> I know he's a wooga, but you have to understand why he's a wooga, okay? So welcome to part one, the first sin, lust. There, here are the trigger warnings. SA, brainwashing, child abuse, child ne ne neglect, murder, yeah, death, more murder. People already tried to fix him and he failed. <laughs> here are the songs used in this series. Lunacy of Duke oh, of Venomania, Portrait Glass yes. Red Drew, um, Flower of the Plateau. This is when we get to listen to the Lunacy of Duke Venomania. We do, at the end, at the end, at the end, at the end. Okay. It's IR time, baby. So, remember, that's Arena. That's Arena. So, Arena's yes. been traveling as, as an immortal being. So, while Ari IR was traveling, she discovered how Aluka was now a vessel for the twin gods. And Aluka wanted them, too. Now, Aluka was looking for, now looking for, a vessel for the twin gods. And Aluka wanted them, wanted, fuck, fucking shit. Aluka was now a vessel for the twin gods. And Aluka wanted the, uh, fucking... Arena wanted them too. That's what I'm supposed to say. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> I'm I'm suffering. High raiders. Did I say high raiders? High raiders. <laughs> Eventually, she discovers the venom sword and and destroys the town it was found in. Uh, while there, she discovers a girl named Haru Nats Netsuma, and possesses her for her magical capabilities. Uh, Haru's body is the first of many vessels that Arena takes over. She wanders with a sword to find a worthy contractor to spawn a her, and she eventually stumbles across, uh, she stumbles across word of Duke Ilote Venomania, who is known, hey. who, and who she knows is rich, and therefore has great influence, so she started to make her way over. Duke Ilote fucking sucks! Look at this ugly bitch! Ew! Ew! Uh, oh, brother! This guy stinks! Fuck this guy. I hate this asshole. <laughs> this guy fucking sucks. And you will understand why. Welcome to the Venomania family. Oh. Ilote had met and married a noble woman known, named Nilfo. And the two had a child. However, the child ate his twin in the womb or something and was born with another face on his cheek. Afterwards, Nympho committed suicide, and Ilote, bl Ilote blamed his deformed son and called him a demon child. He then threw this baby into the basement and forced him to grow up there with only a lone guard named Witness Truth, and watching and raising him. The guard taught him how to read, write, and basic things like what the son was, because he was never allowed to leave the basement. While the currently unnamed boy was being raised in the literal basement, Ilote remarried the sister of Marquis Glaster, Glassred, and had a son named Sateriasis. Also, Ilote arranged a, mar a future marriage with Sat's cousin, Gumina Glassred. Yay! Yay! The brothers finally meet. Satiarius would visit his older brother often and bring him things and tell him stories of the outside world. Eventually, he would even sneak the boy out into, in their outings. They came across Gumina, Glassred, and the three became an inseparable trio. Eventually, Satiarius convinced Ilote to let his brother out of the basement, and he agrees under the condition that the boy be treated like shit and become a servant to his family. He got upgraded from the basement to the attic, baby! <laughs> <laughs> the boy eventually gets a name, Cherubim Venomania. He Yay! gets a portion. I do not remember this part in the song. Yay! Yay! He gets a portion done of himself around the time where his hair is painted over his deformity. Mm. This is that portrait. Yes. Things get really bad really fast. Cherubim.
have been grouped to hate his brother over time since he was treated so kindly and he was treated like ass. Then he learned Satarius and Gumina were engaged. He confessed to Gumina, who quickly rejected him and mocked his ugly face. The next day, he killed his father, stepmother, brother, and the entire mansion staff. Okay. <laughs> For wait, wait, Aiden, do you still think he's hot? <laughs> Can you still fix him? Can you still fix him? <laughs> the next, <laughs> after he killed everyone, he quickly regretted it and prepared to commit suicide with his sword. But before he could, Iar, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We love to see it. I guess he quickly regretted it and prepared to commit suicide with his sword. Before he could, or Iar appeared in the nick of time. Honestly, she offered him her katana and told him she could change his life. He agrees and he forms a contract with the demon of lust by stabbing himself with the venom sword. <laughs> That's fair. He gets the abilities to seduce women with his gaze, manipulate memories, and manipulate appearances. He changes his face to be Satarius's. Uh. So. And then he tries- The song is making more sense now. Yeah. He then tries to rid memories of everyone in the area. He accidentally rids himself of his memories, and he fully believes that he is sad. I see. Which is why he goes a little bit bonkers. Meeting the Goyles. We're getting the Goyles now. Yeah, yeah. During a Lassaland festival, which is like the, one of the countries nearby, Cherubin left the mansion because he was starving. He collapsed in the capital and was rescued by Lucana Octo. This is Lucana. Luca. Luca. Lucana nursed him back to health and he crushed on, he had a crush on her. He, she rejected him, which triggered some of his memories to come back. So at this point, his only memories are of Gumi rejecting him. <laughs> Oh and his and his and his quote unquote name, but that's a false memory. <laughs> he used the demon of lust to transform himself to grow wings and chase down Lucana. He brainwashed her, kissed her, and brought her back to the mansion. Lucana became the first of his harem, and all this was seen by a peasant girl named Muku, Miku Lia Grino, Grionio. Can it's you? Not... <laughs> <laughs> Mothy, Mothy, you're very talented with these names, my these guy. fucking names. I can't even say her name. Mikulia Grionio. Grio, Gri, Grionio. Jeez. Something like that. That's the ugliest name. name. <laughs> He's not the best at naming his Vocaloid characters. Um, the next girl, Mikulia. I are instructed Cherubim to have lots of the nasty with Lucana to avoid the demon of lust taking him over and not allow his demon form to be seen by the public. Eventually, Cherubim was able to track down Mikulia to her village. Mikulia had since their encounter decided that Cherubim was a demon prince come to take her away and wife her up. So she came with Cherubim to his mansion without a fight and joined his harem willingly. Not that he okay. had brainwashed her anyway because she housed the demon of sloth, Eve Moonlit. Why? Because she's technically related slash a reincarnation? It's complicated. I.R. <laughs> sure. uh, then helped him with his spells, and him and I.R. wiped the memories of the village of their memories with, of the encounter with Lucana and Mikulia. More goyles into the harem. He then fell in love with yeah. a girl named Lolan Eve, a lesbian, and he brainwashed her to join his harem anyway. Along with a fortune. Yeah. yeah. It, we, we have so much fun here. <laughs> when, will, when do the lesbians get a win? I have nothing to say, which is why I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, along with a fortune teller named um, Mirigan Adi, he found his old diaries from his childhood, but did not realize that they were his. Shortly after, Gumina reappeared. His harem was still living in the basement, and Marquis Glasser had come to tell Cherubin of the missing women around the country. Marquis tells Gumina to help Satarius to regain his memory, but all that does is further make him believe that he is Satarius, and his only, he only remembers Gumina's rejection, and Gumina, so he believes that Gumina had chosen Cherubin over him, which caused the massacre. Enraged by his memories, he flies back to the Glassford Mansion and kills everyone in it, save for a maid called Carol Shields and Gumina herself. He brainwashed the both of them and, adopt and added them into the harem. He wiped the memories of the locals so they wouldn't remember this massacre. Also, Gumina's father survives because he wasn't in the mansion at the time. Because he comes in later. He also burned his old portrait and erased all of Gumina's memories of Cherubim, aka himself. 
He also added he also added to his harem these characters. Queen Euphina Marlon. She's important because she's a fucking queen that that should have been fucking kidnapped. She has a golden key, aka one of the vessels of sin, and that's why I wanted her in the harem. However, Euphina doesn't have the the key on her when she gets added to the harem. Only IR cares about this because gla- because Cherubim is just horny. <laughs> Sonic <I'm sorry>. Sonic. <laughs> no, no, I just saw that name. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me right now? I can't escape FNAF or fucking Sonic. There's a Markiplier showing up. Too. Showing up. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Sonic Sonic, Lazuli Blue, and Priema Soap. <laughs> That's their name. Those are their names. Those are their canon, canonical, in the novel names. Who named these children? Mafi. <laughs> Clockworkers doll. I are cut to the the doll at Gina workshop in Lost Land. At one point, the mage had given the doll to Mikulia as a toy, but really, it was a way to extract the demon of sloth and put it into the doll. It was successful, but Eve remained the dormant for a while. The doll is based off of Eve Moonlight's appearance, obviously. Eve. Epic. So now we know where the clockwork doll came from. IR made it herself. The downfall begins. He had added men to his harem, including Lillian Turner and Miley's Bielzinia, etc. Uh, later that year, he was visited by Aluka, and he turned her away. He was aware that she was investigating him on behalf of the royal family. See? Aluka mentioned. She's here in the story. Yay. It's fine. She's very important, clearly. <laughs> Iyer wanted her to be enchanted by, uh, who the fuck? I, that's a sweet cherubim. I'm, I was tired when I made this, but he refused. Oh, by this time, Lucana, Mikulia, and Malus were all pregnant. Oh. Great, I know. Iyer soon realized that Lucana had prophetic dreams and used her as a vessel. He tried, she tried to escape with the Venom Sword Clockworks doll and Lucana as a vessel, but cherubim stopped her, saying that she could have the rest, but not take Lucana. Lucana was his favorite, because she was the first in the harem. Ayer left shortly after in Hari, which is the original body, and just dis- and disappeared for a short while. Okay. This is Mylis, this is Lilin. Death. Yes. <laughs> Cherubin was visited one day by Karchis Krim. He was disguised as a Luka. Karchis was led to the basement where the harem was. Karchis was then stabbed Cherubin with his golden key he had been given by Euphina and revealed his true identity to the Duke. Karchis, it turns out, was Euphina's lover, and he had been looking for her for months. As the Duke died, he called for the demon to save him. However, because he was stabbed with another vessel of sin, there was nothing that the demon could do but return to its sword vessel. His face began to return to its original state. He realized that he was cherubim all along, and all of his memories started flushing back. All he could do was watch as the women fled his basement. He tried calling out to Gumina to confess his love for her, but couldn't. He bled out and died. Yay. L, honestly. But but we get a banger of a song. We do get a banger song. Epilogue for the Gorils. <laughs> Huge L. Huge L. After the Duke's death, IR pursued Lucana only to find she was too late and Aluka had already swapped bodies with her. So now Aluka has pink hair and Lucana gets to live the rest of her days under a new identity with her new ch- with her child and a new husband. Yeah. Mikulia, after giving birth to her son, became a prostitute and died fairly young. Meanwhile, oh. Eve had woken up in the clockworker's doll and took over her vessel's body and assumed that she was Mikulia. Another instance of vessel technique it means no memories. So she believes that she is Makulia. This happens very often with Eve, actually. <laughs> Eve's kind of not the best at this. Clearly. Um, uh, she settled down and married Earl Gilbert Calligrand <laughs> and killed any connections to her past life she had encountered. She then used the roses native to the area and poisoned said husband. After Mikulia's body had died, Eve's memories returned, and she awoke as well, and became kind of a wandering spirit in the Clockworkers doll. Nice. Fucking poor Mikulia, honestly. God. L after L. She was just a happy girl. She just wanted to vibe. She's w- Gumina, however, deserved so much better. Gumina ran away to live with her father and became an active follower of Levin, the religion in the area, of the Held sect, and often made pil- pilgrimages to the Millennium Tree in Held's forest. That's Held. It's tree form. She would spend her free time painting portraits of Duke Venomenia soon enough to the point where all her walls were covered in paintings of him. 
Turns out, she loved Cherubim. She only rejected him so harshly to throw Satarius off her trail as she tried to cut off the engagement they had had and to protect Cherubim from an assassination attempt by Satyrisus. So it turns out, Satyrisus was the bad guy all along because the minute he thought Gumina loved Cherubim more than him, he set up an assassination attempt on Cherubim. So really, Cherubim's life has been nothing but hate. <laughs> nothing but L's up until he became the L. <laughs> Honestly, poor guy. Poor Not poor guy, he's so soft. But... He sucks, but that was because he was possessed by a fucking demon. <laughs> Which is a complicated issue of the Evilist Chronicles. There's so many bad characters that are just like evil, but it's just like the same time it's like, oh, they were possessed by a demon the whole time. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why they did those evil, evil things. It's like, ugh, oof. Once we get to Relaine, you'll. Once we get to Relaine, it'll definitely be a bigger example of just like, oh, you feel so bad for her. Oh boy. Um, she be so Gumina became the first woman prime minister of Elfogor, where she now lived, and advocated for women's rights. Let's go. She Thank visited you. Mukulia and Calground after their marriage, oh. and as and as yes. a treat. Yes. Yes. Oh, we're gonna need so much rap protection. Do not worry, everybody. Oh fuck, rap protection is not not on this screen. Hold on, we cannot do this without rap protection. We need the rat protection. We need oh the we need the rat the protection. Rat protection is the most important thing we need right now. I don't need the rat protection. Y'all need the rat protection. I don't get to see the rat protection. Yeah, I'll just I'll have him on standby for when the uh uh parts start happening. I'm... Oh, it's been years. Oh. There we go. So, I figured out I figured out the... Oh, it's the P... The, it's the, a, the video I know the most. The yeah, I, I want to go for the more recent one, but I was like, for nostalgia's sake, I'll... Uh, for nostalgia's sake, I'll do the old one. Yeah, this is the one I love. I love for this one. This song's a fucking jam after all these years. <laughs> let's fucking go! Let's go! <laughs> the song just slaps so hard. Ah! ah, it's happening! The rat protection! Rat protection! Rat protection! I did it, it's okay. Just listen. <laughs> you see nothing, chat! Hold on, I've got this. Okay, now we can catch him! <laughs> oh god, the, the H and 480p. Can I do 720, please? Oh, this is best it goes. Listen, I've seen this song so many times, I know exactly when to use rap protection, it's fine. See, now more of the song's making sense now, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Eden! Oh, it's almost time. So much rap protection, get that rap protection! I'm ready! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you do not get to see! No, no, you do no, not get to no. see! You don't get to see <laughs> the sins! <laughs> Muhasin and Mikl, I want him! See, you see the names! So I wasn't kidding, I wasn't kidding about Sonic and Sonic! I wasn't fucking kidding! Sonic is Sonic! I hate it. It doesn't stop the fact that I fucking hate it. I just know that I wasn't lying to you. <laughs> Pick the rap there. I just saw a thigh. Got it. <laughs> oh god, a thigh. <laughs> Fucked up. See, now this is making sense. Yeah. This part makes more sense to me. So now you know who Gumina is. I always like assumed there was like a childhood crush or some shit because of this bit. I didn't realize how deep it went. Yeah. And I thought the whole picture thing was just like a metaphor. Speak no, it's yeah, very it's literal. Like, it's sucked. very literal. My past sucked and my face was like blah blah blah. I didn't realize it was fucking literal. Ah! Ah! <laughs> skin! Skin! A foot! I covered it. It's okay. <laughs> I 
Also, I hate. Hold on, I hate this name. Neru 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 neru. Come on, guys. I hate neru 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 neru. It's worse than Sonic Sonic. Neru neru neru. Me when I name my future children. No. Oh my! Yes. Isn't, she, isn't she beautiful? <laughs> ah. I love this song. It's still such a jam to this day. It's God. So Song was L L L. <laughs> Carches! The best Kaito, honestly. I love Carches so much. What yeah. a fucking Chad! God bless. Bleed, bitch. Bleed, bitch. L to Cherubim, honestly. Get it, Kaito! Let's go! Giga Chad moment. Honest, honest to God, Giga Chad moment. Ah, uh, the, the old cast. It's so fucking blurry because this video is so old. Oh my God! How? When did this video come out? 2012. Damn. Oh god, how do Thank I get you. how do I get to Thank my other tab? You're Thank welcome. Thank you for the nostalgia. Oh uh, when once we get to story of this like evil saga shit, we'll f <gasps> Alright. Hold on. I'm I'm oh god, I'm trapped again. Oh I remember this song I remember. I vaguely remember this one. I'm stuck again. Oh no. The there we go. Of blood and everything. <laughs> hey, leave it alone. It's classic. It's cultural. <laughs> All right, welcome to part two, gluttony. Um, hey. trigger warning: child abuse, child death, eating disorders, fat phobia, cannibalism, auto cannibalism, murder, more cannibalism, death again, and weirdo behavior. Fuck. Strap your boots, boys. <laughs> Damn, okay. But I, I remember this song. I didn't know it was connected to everything, but I knew this song. It's so good. That's a bop. Right, it wasn't so, one of my favorites, but I, I remember listening to it. I think this was one of the first ones I ever listened to. The first yeah. the first song I ever listened to was Certain Evil, Daughter, Daughter of Evil, Certain of Evil. I think this was like the second or the third song I ever listened yeah, to. Yeah, I didn't. I got into this song a little late, but I did remember yeah. liking it. So the songs used: "Evil Food Eater," "Conchita," "Drug of Gold," and "The Frog," and "My Love Romance." It's you. Cute. It's me. I'm the little guy. You're the little guy. I are learned of a village called Gula, which had been all but wiped out from an unknown disease after eating from the Biamu pig. Save for one survivor. Biamu pig is just a kind of pig in the world. She discovered this, that he survived due to satiating his hunger for 10 years and that his disease was the effects of eating the flesh of something infected by the demon of gluttony's magic. IR needed a new identity by now, so she staged a public battle between her and her subordinate, ABC. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> Why? Why? That's horrific. <laughs> you know, ABC. <laughs> I didn't write this! I just did the research! I did not write this. I did not do this to my- I did this to myself. I did the deep dive on it. <laughs> it's fine. She changed her identity to be known as ABCIR. <laughs> she then influenced Ron Grapple, AB's son, to accept a Baimu pig. She did this to, cur to curse the Conchita household with the Gula disease. The bamboo pig was needed for a celebration. The celebration being my wife, my evil wife, my evil, beautiful yeah. wife, 
Banika Conchita was born to the Bielzian Empire to Mizuri and Megor Conchita. In celebration of her birth, the family took partook in eating a Biamu pig. Everyone ate, save for the newborn Banika. Before eating, the cook had found the red wine glass in the pig's stomach. But Missouri brushed off the concerns of the chef and insisted they eat the pig anyway. Gula disease began to take hold, and when Missouri asked the local mage, ABCR, for our advice, he was told that the glass is what caused the issue. After explaining the only cure was to survive for 10 years, ABCR left with the glass. And she basically just went like, damn, that sounds like a you problem, yeah, and will. left. She's like, damn, that's an issue, not an issue me, and fucking skedaddled. <laughs> Banika's household suffered from the disease, and Banika herself suffered at the hands of her mother, who would force food down her throat no matter how hard she cried. Eventually, Banika simply learned to force, force herself to binge lots of food, just like her mother, despite the fact that she was not infected with gula. Worse than better. So when Banika was 10, a famine swept through the land, and the Kochita household was low on food. Missouri and Banika caught Magor trying to eat the corpses of dead servants, and Magor swiftly killed her when Magor attacked him next. I mean, Missouri killed Magor. I'm tired. <laughs> Me too. Banika then hid in the basement with the food after sinking to a deep depression, where she was introduced to Arte and Pollo. Arte and Pollo! They're back! They're back! Yay! Twin servants by Ron Grapple. The three became no became close friends, and the twins quickly became obsessed with Banika and followed her everywhere she went. Arta and Boya were sent by ABCR to push Banika to make a contract with the Demon of Gluttony. No, no, no. Not not Boyo like Apollo. Boyo as in Boyo as in chicken. <laughs> ABCR to push Banika to make a contract with the Demon of Gluttony. Arthur and Boya were reincarnations of Hansel and Gretel, obviously, and were so attached to Banika as she reminded them of their past lives' mother, Meta. Yes. Because M Meta was, I don't know, I reincarnation stuff maybe, or just a coincidence. It's never explained. But Banika is here, and she looks like Meta, so Hansel and Gretel are obsessed with her. Also, Hansel and Gretel never age, and Banika never questions it. Like, ever. He, okay. She's just like, they're so quirky like that. <laughs> the fact that they never they're age. Built different. They are just built different. The fact that they say, like, ten years old forever is so cool and quirky of them, and I'll never question it. I just care what you I love them. <laughs> <laughs> they have every disease. Look at my babies. This is what they murdered a man. Good. Look at them. Look at them. Boy baby. Boyo has no brain cells, not a thought behind his eyes. Arte does all the hefty heavy lifting. As it should be. I love her. Look at my babies. I love them. They're my favorite. Meanwhile, with ABCR, ABCR came across a girl named Platonic, the newest incarnation of Eve Moonlit, with the within the Clockworkers doll. Platonic had no magical abilities, so she insisted she instead used Platonic for odd jobs to help look for Mar the Marlon Spoon. Because at some point, ABCR got hired by Lord Somi Hedgehog of Castle Hedgehog. <laughs> I hate him here. I want to cry. <laughs> I am not kidding when I say this is not exaggeration. That's what they were called. Lord Why Somi Hedgehog of Castle Hedgehog. Eden, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it because I love seeing chat's reactions. <laughs> yeah. Christ. But yeah. So ABCR was studying torture for a bit before being briefly captured by the Marlons and getting her wine glass taken from her. <laughs> if I did have all those lives, I would have jumped off the winter farm. <laughs> You can kill me when I log into Olympian later about that. So the glass ended up on its way back to the Conchita Mansion. We'll get back to ABCR and Platonic soon. Banika's engagement. This fucking loser. This is the this this is one of the worst Kaitos. I hate this bitch. Oh my god. Banika was a, was in an arranged marriage with Carlos Marlon. Carlos at first was extremely against the engagement. He started bringing up her disgraced family and how fat she was, and he didn't want to be he didn't want to be with her for her appearance. 
However, the two grew close after he learned about, about her traumatic childhood because he was like, oh, she has trauma? I guess I'll pity her and be her friend. I hate this bitch. I hate him so much. He's so annoying. I hate him. Oh my God. And learning she had dreams of trying food around the world. Benika would starve herself often and when, around, and when being around Carlos and his family as she was embarrassed of herself and her weight. Carlos and Benika warned her to the idea of marriage and the two were to be wed. They had, to, they had a banquet to celebrate. During the dinner, she saw the red wine glass her family once owned. This triggered a PTSD episode in her. She began to quickly eat all of everyone's leftovers, crying over the wasted food. This episode made Carlos dissolve the engagement. Oh, God. He said, Dan, you have trauma? That is cringe. Get out of my Damn. castle. <laughs> oh, I'm okay with your trauma. Just don't show your symptoms. Exactly. He went like, mm, that's kind of cringe of you. Get out of my house. This is why Carlos is the worst. Benika's having a hot girl summer, though. So Benika studied food over the next three years and traveled abroad with Arte and Boya, hoping to improve BL's cooking, co cooking food co culture over time. Right, cringe. She, at one point, learned of a cook named Joseph Krim, and when the, she tried to attack, track him down, talk to him, she learned that he had been killed by Irina at some point. It's never explained why, but she just did that. Benika returned home and met with Empress Juno after her after her introducing Ziz Tama, a type of octopus, and Trobin? I don't know what that is, to Belzean cuisine alongside a new wine she developed called Blood Grave. And she began became well regarded by the locals. She became popular. However, her father died of a heart attack around this time. Benika was given the title of Duke in his place. She's not ha she had a great time and then a really, really bad time very quickly. Shortly after Ron found the wine glass in Arthur and Pollo's room, the twins swiftly murdered him and cursed him to become an undead servant to Bonica, because they can do that with the wine glass. My god. So R.A.P. Ron, honestly. <laughs> Demon contract. Bonica grew sick due to overeating, and the demon of gluttony, whose name used to be Vlad Tuberki. I don't know why, uh, appeared in her dreams and promised her endless food to try. When she wakes up, she accepts by drinking the wine out of the glass that was placed by her bedside. Upon drinking, she immediately gets yassified. I mean, she gets skinny and makes a full recovery from her organ failure. Oh. I hate this series. Have I ever told you how much I hate this series? I, I don't blame you. I think I've aged 45 years. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, a banquet was held in November of that year that she attended where Arthur and Boyo fed her bowls with live insects and spiders that she lovingly ate while the party lookers looked on in disgust. Afterwards, she moved to the countryside and put Arthur and Boyo, you know, the forever 10 year olds uh, in charge of her territories. She used the power of the glass to reanimate her family's servants and also the cattle, which she used to make her meals. She hired several cooks over the years, but many of them were killed by Arthur and Boyo so that they could defend Banika's name and feed them to her. Because anytime somebody, like, tried to sh talk shit on Banika's eating, they would kill them. I mean... Uh, kind of fair. Kind of fair. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta defend mom. You gotta defend mom. <laughs> you gotta defend mama. <laughs> and her, the, and the fact that she eats people and spiders. She's just quirky oh like that. Mom's just quirky like that. Um, Angie Lou with ABCR. ABCR heard about Benika forging a contract and hired several burglars to steal it. Platonic was one of them hired to steal the glass. Platonic was... This fight's fucking insane for no reason. Platonic was almost successful for coming across Arta and Boyo, who hunted her down. She came across Benika's current cook, who had been crucified and tortured to death. <laughs> she ended up spilling some wine on him from the glass. The wine turned into an undead monster. Platonic then ran to Benika, who took the glass from her. Platonic then barely escaped to, re to re return to report to ABCR. <laughs> yes, Eden, do you have a question? Eden, do you have a question? Eden, my dear brother, do you have a question? <laughs> I think he's just judging. <laughs> Love you too, Eden. Anyway, back to the crucifixion of of cooks. 
Uh, she returned over to ABCR. Also, Carlos Marlowe had been captured in Castle Hedgehog's prison by this point. I don't know why. And then overheard them talk. ABCR decided to use Carlos to infiltrate the mansion by using the Venom Sword to change his face so Benica would not be able to recognize him. So Carlos was sent to be Benica's newest cook. Romance blossoms? It's interesting. So Benika hired Joseph Krim as her next cook. However, she soon realized him to be actually Carlos all along. And they started to fall in love because Benika is kind of lost by now. Um, Arthur, however, treated Carlos like ass because he looked like Adam. And she resented him for abandoning her and Boyo in the forest in their past life. Because remember, she still has Hansel and Gretel's memories. Yeah. So she hates Adam. She hates Eve. Um, at a point, but at, at a point, an undead army needed to be raised to defend Benica's mansion, and Carlos freaked out when he saw this and heard her explain how she wanted to eat the world. He tried to escape, but Arthur and Pollo dragged him back. They didn't kill him because she was in love with him. She also became pregnant with his child at this point. She, he tried to poison her. Out of where she was immune to poison. He ate the poison soup as well with her, but only he died. The poison was from the golden key, by the way, that he had from the Marlon, the Mar, the Marlon family. Um, Benica then ordered Arthur and Boyle to make him into a meal. She wanted her and her unborn baby to taste the one that I love, or something like that. When did she get pregnant? Or up here. <laughs> oh, I zoned out. Like two seconds. How morning. dare you? If you zone for two seconds, you miss crucial lore. <laughs> Like how Sonic of Sonic became famous after the whole shit ended up with the fucking Castle Hedgehog. I hate it. I hate it here. I want. I hate Castle I Hedgehog. Feel, my window's open, and where my desk is, it's like facing right outside my window. <laughs> I'm on the second floor though, so it's not like it. I guess the the the, um, the onlookers are listening in as well. Subscribe to me on Twitch. I have onlookers. On. They can only hear me. They can sense me calling their name. <laughs> they have a second fucking a third sense. Exactly. Eventually, but be. eventually, Benika ran out of food and servants and ate Arthur and Boyle. <laughs> no. She ate my babies. She yes. ate my babies. She did to eat her baby, actually, but couldn't bring herself to eat him, despite the f demon gluttony yelling at her in her head that the baby was a vaccine to the Golden Key's poison. Banika refused to eat her baby, choosing instead to eat herself. This transformed her, via loophole, into the demon of gluttony. So Vlad's gone, fuck that guy, Banika's the real demon of gluttony now. I get to listen to the song? Eventually, soon. Yes. ABCR hired Platonic to steal the twin blades of Leviante from Luca. The blades ended up uh, being fakes, but only Luca knew this. Platonic was then captured by Luca for, by having a prophetic dream of her arrival and being able to prepare for her before her arrival. Uh, Luca kept Platonic magically bound to prevent her from escaping on Luca's side. Again, this is the only thing Luca does in this entire storyline. Like, all she's done so far is show up capture platonic and then lose her two sentences later <laughs> aluka and platonic were soon captured by empress juno and were hired to investigate benika's mansion platonic and aluka found ron grapple's undead form and questioned him about the ongoings of the mansion he then explained about all the murders and cannibalisms of the demons ron begged the duo to save benika's son before he then turned to ash quirky yeah. <laughs> ripped to him honestly <laughs> As the slide title says, they end up finding the estate and a Benika's baby in the empty mansion with only the bloody wine glass and the baby remaining. And I'm assuming, like, Benika's corpse half-eaten somewhere. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Luca brought the baby back to Empress Juno and reported Benika was missing. Meanwhile, Platonic had managed to steal the wine glass and return to ABCR. It is unknown exactly when, but sometime after this, ABCR had both lost the glass and the venom sword. Like, she goes through all- she loses her shit so often as, like, a plot device because they have to end up in, like, people's hands somehow to create more drama. She loses her shit so often. The story would be over by now if she just wasn't so easily, like, robbable. <laughs> oh, God. Like, I think just in this story, it's like, the fifth time she's lost this fucking glass. She just, like, <laughs> for real. 
Benika, within the dimension, within her vessel, don't ask, created an illusion of the Conchita mansion and plotted to find Artha and Boyo, Hansel and Gretel, again, to help her gra- find the graveyard and bring forth the graveyard ending for the third period. What's this about a graveyard ending? Well. Sounds sound good. The four endings. In the Levin Bishes. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That was shitty of me. You're so right. Damn. So sorry. Damn. It's like it's like it's like Evil's Chronicles if Arena didn't have ADHD and it's like three pages long. <laughs> she get her shit done. <laughs> in the Levin Bible, in canon, it is noted that there are four possible endings for the third period. Each one will happen simultaneously. Each ending would be done under one of the four masters: Master of the Graveyard, which would bring death and eat everyone; Master of the Court, which would bring trial and everyone receiving harsh judgment. Master of the Hellish Yard would bring hell and everyone being eternally unforgiving. Master of the Heavenly Yard would bring atonement, possibly revealing the way to Utopia. Oh, so that, okay, because I remember all the time, it's before, like, most of the Mafia songs, they would have the Heavenly Yard at the beginning. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so I guess that's where that's from. Yeah, so Mafia stands for Master of the Heavenly Yard. Oh. in that oh <laughs> but yes <laughs> <Clip that. laughs> so Molly stands for master of the heavenly yard because everything that, ev- that. everything that that that, that, that the story is trying to do is they're trying to lead into heavenly yard which is the good ending yeah and so okay. far we, for, so far we only know that Banika is the master of the graveyard that is the only one we have confirmation on so far we haven't met these characters yet Okay. So Banika part over to jam. Yay! I, I don't think I need rat protection, but uh warning cannibalism, gore. but it's a jam, so it's fine. It's not for it's cannibalism! I said gore! Okay. Go, go, gore. Go, go, go. Okay, I got scared. I'm sorry. I never know who to trust anymore. This bitch of an earth. Alright everybody. Jam time. Look at my wife! So fucking good. It's so hard. <laughs> I'm cat jamming IRL. I'm me too, man. There he is, the bitch. And Carlos slash Neg. So true, Benica. You should kill him. <laughs> Damn, he just wanted to go visit his family for the weekend. Not allowed. Not in this house. Look at her go. <laughs> Wife. <laughs> Bam, you see on Tuesday. Yeah! I support her rights and her wrongs Honestly, just because she's hot. Listen, someone says shit about your, their weight, your weight, you eat them. You eat them. You fucking eat them. Easy. So, solution to fat phobia. Just eat them. Exactly. Talk shit, get eaten, bitch. Exactly. That's how my that's how my world works. 
Due to adult <laughs> circumstances, this can't be God, she's hot! <laughs> She's singing about cannibalism, we're just sitting here just like, God, step oh, on me! Ma'am! <laughs> There's the one, that's the fucking wine glass that ruins everything, all the time. God, I love that. That song's I always I hate sad. this fucking Google Slides. I hate it here. I hate it here. Everything sucks all the time. I'm... Nothing goes- nothing goes chai. Nothing goes my way. Okay. I believe- YES! 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 God almighty. Give me strength. Give me fucking strength. Okay. My children! My love! My babies! I can do this. <laughs> this part gave me so oh. much fucking grief. Okay, trigger warning. Child abuse, death, angst, so much fucking politics, lesbophobia, again, rich people. <laughs> rich people are the most important trigger. I just, I'm like, <laughs> I'm out of breath. I'm so excited. Oh God, this part is so fucking. Here's all the songs I use. Neo, Ma Neo Madi of the Inv Inverted Grave. A hero's armor is always crimson. Swear an oath on that bridge. The king was born from mud. Twilight prank. The daughter of evil. The servant of evil. Adventure of boy and a girl. The, maid the maiden of the tree. Millennium wing and lied. The daughter of white. Regret message. Hand beat clock tower. Muzzle of nemesis. Bl blink. Reach for the stars. The letter she kept waiting for. And here's... Okay. Oh. Okay. So I know I know. daughter of evil. Servant evil. Uh, daughter of white. Regret message. And I could have swore Re Birthday was part of this. No. I guess I was. I guess that I was wrong. Re Birthday. Re okay, I, I'm not gonna say it, but Re Birthday is technically related to what happens in this story, because of bullshit. <laughs> uh. So we start with not the twins, but their dad. To understand the twins, you have to understand their father. Yes. Okay. The kingdom Lucifania is here now, and I'm and we meet Arth Lucifin de Ostrich. He's the crown prince, and his best friends are Prim Rogzi and Anne Sui. However, Arth was killed sometime in his teen years, along with his parents near the Millennium Tree. He woke up on the back of Lich. And remember Lich? Vaguely, yes. He's one of the scientists. Oh, okay, yes, yes. He was reborn as a forest spirit, and he's and he wait and he and Arth wakes up on his back, and he pleads okay. with him to make to bring him back to life. Lich agrees by putting Arth's soul into a body made of mud. Lich was banished from the forest because of this quote unquote prank, and he took on a human form alongside his friend Eater. We'll talk about them later. He became a golem and would revisit Lich often to simulate aging, since he could no longer actually age because he was a mud man. <laughs> Art declared war on his neighbors in order to unite Evilus because Evilus Chronicles is because the country itself is called Evilus. Oh, wow. <laughs> he wanted to unite Evilus under him and he married Anne. Prim, jealous, poisoned Arth and was unsuccessful in killing him. Prim ran away back to her family in the kingdom of Marlon. Here is our Arth, Anne, Eater, and Lich. Okay. Yes. And Eater and Lich come back later. Arth is really, really pretty. <laughs> Anne is also really pretty. Hi, Widget. Anne is also very Hi, pretty. Widget. We're just getting to the good part. We're finally at Story of Evil. Just know this man is made out of mud and he marries this bitch and they have a they have a bestie named Prim. And Prim is fucking evil. <laughs> Unfortunate, really. Yeah. So we meet Miriam and Leonhart. Irina took on. Irina, meanwhile, had taken on an old woman as her medium and adopted a new, the new name Abyss IR. 
She found a child possessed by malice and slaughtered her family and took her in to train her to be an assassin. She sent the girl to assassinate a fugitive named Leonhard Avedonia, who defeated, who defected from his country to fight for Lucifenia. Abyss lost track of the child after this. The child that was found at the head of intelligence by a secret spy organization after falling off a cliff and was given the name Miriam Futapai. Miriam was appointed as a general at the age of nine, but started having dreams of her old life with Abyss and ran away to, to Lucifenia. Yeah, really? Damn. She, like, strong start, honestly. <laughs> like, damn, like, shit, fam. Meeting Aluka. Aluka was training Prim Rogza, meanwhile, in the Belezian Empire. Gast Venom, a descendant of Duke Venomania, who was hired to be Aluka's escort, led her to Lucifenia, where she came across Leonhart and Miriam. The three got into a fight where Aluka summoned a windstorm that blew Leonhart and Miriam's weapons away. She ran to Arth, but did not fight him. Instead, she ran to Hell's Forest. A week later, she met with Arth and Leonhart and Miriam at the Sano Sun Bridge. There, she was offered to serve at his side, and she agreed and defected to Lysiphania. Aluka, Leonhart, and Miriam became close and regarded as the three heroes under King Arth. So, Aluka finally has friends. Yay! Good for her, honestly. All right, Leonhart has a bit of a daddy arc, so... <laughs> After Leonhart slaughtered a family during a raid. <laughs> Fun core. Uh, hello. Hello? Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? What? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it was Ashley. <laughs> Ashley was here for... We got an Ashley cameo, guys. I have no mods. It's kind of sad, but also very funny. <laughs> oh my god. God. No. Our... Anyway, so after Leonhard slaughtered a family during a raid because of the war between Be Beelzenia and Lucifenia, Leonhard came across a baby who survived the slaughter and almost killed her before seeing the baby was a part of the Imperial family. Leonhard then decided to keep the baby and raised her himself. He named her Jermaine Avedonia. That's Makel right there. And yeah. kept her true parentage a secret from her. Meanwhile, in the same year, Abyss AR, IR came into contact with Queen Prim Marlon. Remember Prim? She's a queen now. Huh. And she learned that she was a her, a which is why she was evil and tried to poison a man because he dated her friend. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Abyss AR somehow knew that Art's future children would be the next incarnations of Hansel and Gretel. Abyss AR sent yeah. Prim over to Lysiphenia to visit Arth and gave her the Venom Sword. She got it off of that gas guy, I think? The guy from earlier that was Luca's escort? Okay. To brainwash and have sex with Arth. What's some poison between enemies? <laughs> Just some casual poison. So she brainwashes Arth, has sex with him, and then she comes back pregnant and gives birth later to a girl named Ney Marlon. That's Neru. E. Okay. Ney is so fucking important. I did not know this, but yeah. okay. Ney is so important to the story because, do I say it in the next slide? Yeah. Gretel was reincarnated into Ney and was to be raised by Abyss AR and Futapai to become a trained assassin. Ney said most of her childhood being magically experimented on by Abyss and developing an obsession with pleasing her mother because, once again, Gretel has mommy issues. <laughs> And so they could be, and she wanted to believe her mother so they could be seen together more because a bit because Prim kept Nay very far away from her at all times because she didn't want it to mess up with her political standing. Also, this is also important. Um <laughs> these four children, oh my god. But yeah, um another thing about about Nay is because of the fact that she was born she was because she is Art's child, but because she wasn't born with a twin. It messes up the reincarnation cycle. So now, mm. when the next twins are born, they're going to become what is known as irregulars. Okay. Okay, so Gretel right now has no Hansel to her. She It's just her by herself, which is why she's a little bit insane. So Abyss, okay. also, tried to, Abyss also tried to kidnap Jermaine as well to train under her. However... She was stopped by Leonhardt, who had grown attached to Jermaine and had and had started raiding, raising her as his own. Imagine not being born as a twin. I could not... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that sounds Boy. like a personal problem. <laughs> That's For legit. Real. 
Um, when Ney was six, she was introduced to her older half brother, Kyle Marlon. Um, oh Ney- fucking god, it's Kyle. I know. Okay, I wasn't kidding. Kaito's name and this is Kyle. <laughs> I hate it. Try. Try that. Why? <laughs> we had so many other options. Yeah, we've had Carches, Carlos. Nah, we got fucking Kyle, boys. Also, oh Kyle god. doesn't know that Ney is his sister. Nay, I believe, knows that they're, that they're siblings. Kyle doesn't know, however. Prim kept it as a secret. Ooh, okay. There's family drama with Kyle. Yeah. Also, Kyle is the worst. I fucking hate Kyle so much. You feel bad for him because he's abused his whole life, but also he's such a little bitch. Like, what a fucking loser. <laughs> I don't even know if I mean that endearingly. He's just such a fucking loser, bro. Strangle core. Strangle core. <laughs> <laughs> so, Akai was a painter and painted a portrait of his little sister, Nay. The two were not were not the only Marlon siblings, however, over the years. Many of Kyle and Nay's half siblings would die, leaving only Kyle and Nay, aka Prim's kids. Prim did this so that she, when King Marlon eventually died, Kyle was to become king, and that's exactly what happened. But Five years prior to King Marlon's death, the twins! <laughs> They're here, my boys! The babies! Sorry, I just opened the text. Now I'm sad. Alright, anyway. Um, uh-huh. December 27th. EC-485, because that's how they do dates. Rillianne and Alexia Lucifin de Ostrich were born to Arth and Anne. As they were destined to be the next incarnations of Hansel and Gretel, but Nay's birth got in the way, they were classified as irregulars by the universe type shit. I don't know how it really works. When Alexia was four, he went into town to the mark with his father, where they came across Abyss AR, who was selling toys in little glass bottles. Alexia chose a doll to share with Rillianne. Not the clockworker's doll, I don't think. It's just a doll. It just shows that Alexia's very nice and sweet because he wants to share with his little sister. Prim asked Abyss IR to assassinate the Luciferian royal army, starting with Arth. Abyss agreed, and she used the glass of Conchita to cause a Gula epidemic in the Belezian Empire, where King Arth would strike next in his... Are you fucking kidding me? Am I back? Hello? Oh no. Hi. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Stream's not up yet. Oh, God. Is it up now? Hold on. Let me refer- Oh, yep. Yep. There it is. Oh, God. Oh, Chai. Hey, Potter. Are we back? Looks like it. Okay. Coffee. Okay. I don't know what happened. I guess my internet just, like, gave up on itself. I... But it's okay. You might. You're gonna have to. Let's see if. Uh, do I have to reshare reshare my screen? Yeah, try that real quick. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. I God hates me. God doesn't want me to be happy. (laughs) I just want to talk about my fixation on the series because I love this series so much. It makes me happy. It's batshit insane, but it makes me happy. I know it makes no sense. None. But you just gotta turn your brain off because I just want to talk about it because I love it so much. 
All right, is, are we back? Okay, do you see the screen? I do see the screen. Okay, let me just do it. I don't trust stream cord. I never did. Stream cord the below. Okay, I if we're back. Okay, should we? Okay, where where did I leave off? What was the last thing y'all heard? What was the last thing you heard? Uh, let me go back to. Just start from the top. Okay, so Kyle. <laughs> the, uh... No, we got to. The... I think we're at the bottom. The, the last uh, big slide. Okay. Well, I can just say again, we have Kyle now. He's a fucking loser. He's born. He's Kyle Maron Marlon. Let's just say Marlon. Oh my god. <laughs> Kyle Marlon. <laughs> it's Kyle Marlon. He, he Nay is his sister. They're half siblings. Uh, the king is dying. Prim killed all of her, all of all of all of Kyle's siblings, so that Kyle would become the king. Now we're at the twins. Is that it? Yay. Okay, I'll just yeah. start. Okay, so Rillian and Alexia Lucifinda Ostrich were born Arth to Arth and Anne as they were destined to become the next incarnations of Hansel and Gretel, but Nay's birth got in the way. They were classified as regulars by the universe type shit. Okay, I think I, I, think I said that last time. Yes. When Alexia was four, he went into the town to the market with his father where they came across Abyss IR, who was selling toys in their little glass bottles. There's so much buffering. Oh. No. Oh, hold on. It's fine is, for me. Is it your internet or is it me, Widget? I don't know it's if it's working fine on my end because I have to, I have to I have your stream open in another. Okay, window, so it uh, might just be Widget. Chat. Okay, okay. I was gonna say I don't know if anyone else is in the chat, so I don't know what's going on with anybody else. It should be good now. I don't know what my internet yeah. just hates me. My internet just wants me to be happy. It always does this during deep dives. It really does. Cause it's been fine lately. I haven't crashed once. It's only because of the fucking deep dive. It doesn't want me to be happy. I'm sorry, man. I just do. I'm just. I just show up. I know, and I love you. I'm sad. I love though. you too. Okay. Anyway. I love you too. You're doing. You're doing amazing, sweetie. Thank you. I feel like ass. <laughs> Let me drink my water. Drink your water. We're having fun. I'm having. I am enjoying this. This is a joy. Let me put a, let me put the FNAF figure on the wall so he knows that he started this. <laughs> if you say so. Listen, <laughs> I have a story about this fucking FNAF figure. Actually, it's a little Toy Freddy pop figure that Stormy's boss gave her, and Stormy didn't want it. So she gave it to me. He's a rescue. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just kind of have him on this little shelf. Amazing. All right, let's fucking do this. All right, Alexia was four when he went to town in the market with his father, where they came across Abyss AR, who was selling toys and little glass bottles. Alexia chose a doll to share with Relaine. Prim asked Abyss AR to assassinate the Lucifanian royal family, starting with Arth. Abyss agreed, and she used the glass of Conchita to cause a Gula epidemic in the Belezian Empire, where King Arth would strike next in his invasion. Very casual, very quirky, very fun. This yeah. caused him to be infected, and his muddy body gave out. Rip Arth. Sorry, hey, King. No. L. Damn. Can we get an F in the chat for Arth? He was a good mud boy. He was a good mud boy. He was a good mud he, boy. He was just a, the, a mud guy. The, the, the first and last good father of this series. <laughs> Damn. Well, Keel's pretty good, too. Keel's pretty good, too. Keel's okay. You'll see who Keel is later. Kind of. I forgot he existed until halfway through the story, honestly. <laughs> Prim asked Abyss AR, blah, blah, blah. This meant that Anne was the sole ruler, and either Alexia or Relaine would have to be chosen as the sole successor. I'm sorry about your internet widget. It's so sad. Rip Arth. In the same year, the two played at the beach one day when they dug up a black box in the sand. In the box was one of the four mirrors of Lucifania, and Benika's demonic spirit was within one of the mirrors. Alexiel tried to defend the demon, uh, but instead, Banika possessed Relaine. Be friend. Let's just say be friend. During three o'clock tea time the next day, Banika returned to tell them of a legend of, of a legend about a legend. It's complicated because it's like it's a legend about a legend, as in like this is a legend where they talk about the legend. 
Oh, okay. I don't understand it either. Basically, if you wrote your wish on a piece of paper in a glass bottle they threw in yes. the ocean, it would come true. Yes. This is so important to Relaine's whole thing. So Relaine asked, really asked started treating Alexiel coldly as she started to be influenced by, into wanting to be the sole heir by Prezi Rogza, Prim's brother who worked in the palace who had been working for Abyss IR. Because Abyss IR had actually planted the black box for the twins to find. Amazing. He attempted to assassinate Alexiel but failed, so he instead chose to kidnap Rillianne and exercise the demon of gluttony out of her and into himself to kill Aluka. He failed and was killed by Aluka and Mariam, who found him. Oh. Aluka then trapped Banika into one. I'm not. Oh, am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. Okay, good, good. I never stopped recording, actually. That's good. Okay. Thank God. Streamlabs does one good thing for me. <laughs> Yay. He attempted to assassinate blah blah. blah. Aluka then trapped Benika into one of the hand mirrors, and most of Relaine's memories were wiped from this incident. The twins got separated here. After the assassination attempt, Alexiel was declared publicly dead, but really he was adopted by Leonhardt to be raised in secret along with his new adoptive older sister, Germaine. And they made friends with a girl named Chartette Langley, which is Teto down here. Yay! And Relaine became the sole successor to the throne as Abyss had wanted. She constantly attended, she's constantly attended to her by her head maid, Mariam, and other maid, Chartette, later in the years, and grew close with her betrothed, Kyle. Because Yay. Kyle got in an arranged marriage with Rillianne. Oh, wow. Alexiel started to become known as Alan Avedonia. By the way, they have like, I, oh God, how was it? Like, it's many years. It's like a very big age gap. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big it is, but it's like a pretty good age gap, unfortunately. <laughs> Amazing. Alexis started to become known as Alan Avedonia. Leonhard trained him and Jermaine had a fence, the art of sword fighting, and horseback riding. When Alan and Relaine were 13, Abyss AR infected Anne with Gula disease in order to break up the three heroes as well by taking away their last leader. She also noted... Kyle, sh Kyle shakes fist at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> she also noted how now, even though Prim was a her, Aluka had not tried to heal her. This makes her suspicious of if Aluka even is Aluka. This is her first hint that something's up with Aluka because she still does. She still doesn't know that this isn't Aluka. This is just her body. She doesn't know that Levia is in charge. Mm. The twins both attended Anne's funeral with Alan watching from the crowd with Leonhardt. After this, Leonhardt tells them to become a servant to Rillianne so the twins can reunite. Luca swore to find disciples to train to protect the kingdom. This is Teto in the corner, and over here is a picture of Jermaine and Alan being friends, uh, being siblings in the forest, and just like being together. Yay. Shit gets worse, because of course it does! <laughs> Nothing goes right ever. So Nay was also sent to work in the palace. Nay shakes fist. Nay <laughs> was sent to work in the palace as one of Relaine's maids alongside by Abyss IR with the intent to possess her with the demon of pride from the hand mirror. She was successful and Relaine unknowingly made a contract with the demon of pride and was possessed. Again, she's 13. <laughs> oh my God. And this is the second time she's been possessed. At 13, Rillian was crowned ruler and met up with Alan and was fascinated by it that they looked exactly the same. They put... <laughs> what was that? Uh, I think that was a motorcycle. That was so loud. <laughs> that was so yeah. loud. They quickly became friends. Relaine, just to quickly, began raising taxes for the citizens and sent countless ministers and servants to the guillotine for mildly inconveniencing her. All the while, she was giving herself luxurious gifts, including portions of herself, all the sweets she could want, and a horse named Josephine. <laughs> it's if the peasants can't have bread, let them ha eat cake type shit. Very, very Mary Antoinette. That was the inspiration for her. Yeah. She tried running away at one point in order to lure, lure, lure Leonhardt because she wanted to kill him, but her plans were foiled by Alan finding her instead and the two sharing a bonding moment. She spent her 14th birthday with Kyle and eating cake after, though. 
Meanwhile, Aluka, we're about to get to lesbian territory. So Aluka yeah. returned to Hell's Forest. Remember how she left earlier to find apprentices? She's doing that now. Uh, Aluka had returned to the forest to request permission to incarnate one of the forest spirits as humans to assist Lucifania and exercise Relaine before things got worse. Because she noticed that Relaine was totally, completely possessed. <laughs> yeah. Alu Aluka witnessed a girl with white hair and red eyes whose name we'll learn, learn later on is Clarith, voiced by Haku. Praying also at Held's tree. After this, she left to go check on Rillian and Alan. Clareth was often discriminated against for being part of the Netsuma clan. I don't know if you remember, but Haru Netsuma was uh, was Arena's first vessel. Yes. Yes. She had white hair. Her name was Haru Netsuma. That was Arena's first vessel during the Venomania incident. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And so the Natsuma clan, after the whole thing about Haru being, you know, seen about seen around demons and massacres and shit, the Natsuma clan became very discriminated against and being see regarded as evil. Despite the oh. abuse she faced, she was very kind and often taking care of her sick mother, who was suffering from gula for many years. And she also ate worms very frequently. And the the village blamed Clara for the fact that her mother was eating worms. And she once nurtured a, a hurt baby bird back to full health. We'll get back to the bird later, because the bird was actually this girl, Micaela. Okay. Claire would often spend her free time praying at Held's tree, begging for a friend. Aluka returned two weeks later, at, and Held allowed her to take on two spirits named Gumilia and Micaela. Gumi and Miku. Gumilia uh -huh. uh, took on the form of Gumina, because she thought Gumina was pretty. And remember, Gumina was in the Held sect of the religion, so, Gum so Gumilia often would see uh, Gumina praying at the tree. Ooh. Micaela thought Eve was pretty, and so she turned herself to look like Eve. She trained the two for three months before leaving with Gumilia. Micaela stayed behind to find more vessels of sin. We're in lesbian territory. Welcome to the lesbian Ooh. slide. <laughs> we have reached the lesbian slide. We're at the lesbians, boys! Gay rights! <laughs> <laughs> Lesbians! Over here is Les over here is Gumilia. Here's Aluka. Over here is Micaela, and here is Clareth. Here's Clareth and Micaela cuddling because they're lesbians. Sappho! <gasps> Thanks for that cry. Thank you so much for the prime. Lovely. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh my god. I have 15! Let's go! I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't make a goal. I didn't make a. I didn't. Thank you so much. I didn't make a goal. <laughs> really? Oh fuck. Uh, uh, uh. uh, I'll make a yeah, poll on. We'll I'll, I'll make a poll on Twitter later. But thank you so much. Uh oh, it's buffering. Uh oh, it's buffering. Uh oh, it's buffering. Uh oh, it's buffering. Give it a second. We're good. We're good. But thank you so much, Sappho. I appreciate it. Welcome to welcome back and blah, 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 I'm so happy. Now you have all the emotes you can use. Just in time for the just in time for the lesbian slide, <laughs> Sappho. <laughs> How perfect. Perfect timing. Honestly. God, but yes, these this, these are the lesbians. We love the lesbians here in this chat. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so for me, that's fine. Okay. Lesbians? <laughs> Fun fact, while I was working on this slide at work, because we had a really we had a really not busy day, my coworker walked by and asked me why I was questioning lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm just surprised that they're here. <laughs> also, I, when I, I'm gonna read this slide, y'all gonna be like, this sounds like fake. This is like fake shipping ass. It is not. It is real. Okay, Mika Ala passes out by the Millennium Tree and is found by Clareth later on. The next day, she tells Clareth that she is from Lucifenia and is trying to get to Essied, where the vessel is that she senses. Clareth and Micaela end up spending most of their time together, with the two girls getting very close. Clareth and Micaela even come out to each other as lesbians. Yes, this is real. Oh! Because Clareth describes how she has no interest in men, and Micaela describes how she also has no interest in men. Lesbians. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> True, they were roommates. They lived together. Micaela, while living with Clareth, even defends her from village bullies and stands up for her constantly. Unfortunately, the bullying only gets worse after Clareth's mother passes away from choking on her own blood and vomit, and the village says it's her fault for adopting a Natsuma girl. Micaela conf 
comforted Clareth as she had a breakdown, and the two promised to run away to Asia together. They run away and become mates with the Frieza's family, and meet Yukina Frieza's, an aspiring author. This is Ooh. Yukina. She's a little baby. She's Kai Yuki, and I love her so dearly. Uh, also, uh, her her father's name is Keel. Of oh, course. <laughs> Yeah, he's the other good dad. Of course the gay's promising to run away. <laughs> and then they did. And then they did. And then they got shitty jobs as mates together. The, the classic lesbian tale. I love them. The gays and their daughter, Yukina, and then Kyle. <sighs> this part pisses me off. You have no idea. Okay. Clarith. Are you ready for this? <laughs> oh no. Let's go. Oh no. What? Oh, sorry. I thought I thought I lagged out. Okay, so no, I was just de taking in a deep sigh. <laughs> <laughs> That's valid. So Claire and Mikaela basically begin raising Yukina, playing with her, tucking her into bed, reading and writing with her, etc. Head of the family, Kai Keel, heard Mikaela singing one day and appointed her as the diva of Elphagort. I hate saying that word. <laughs> and, bad and she would sing at his monthly banquets while Clareth looked on in jealousy of all her male suitors. During one performance, King Kyle Marlon came to visit and quickly fell in love with Mikaela. So Clareth vowed to basically ruin his life. As she should, honestly. She should have done uh, it better. Queen, that's queen shit. On, lesbian behavior, honestly. <laughs> Claire Let vowed to right. ruin his life and constantly and consistently interfered with Kyle trying to talk to Mikaela, unaware that Mikaela had already confessed it, that she was in love with Claire to Kyle after learning what love meant. He brushed off the fact that Mikaela was clearly a lesbian in order to keep flirting with her. Mikaela uh, learned of Kyle's engagement to Rillianne as she confronted him for pursuing her, and Kyle explained that he saw Rillianne as more of a little sister than anything because of their age difference. Yeah. Claire proposed to Mikaela, and she she said she'd think on it. Mikaela ended up finding ven ven the vending sword in the treasury in the manor, and it turns out Kyle was possessed by the demon of lust the whole time, and he still is. Wow. Yeah, so not only is he a weirdo, but he's a possessed weirdo. Damn it, Kyle. God fucking- You can never trust a bitch named Kyle. Never can trust a bitch named Kyle. This is why- This is why I have trust issues with Kyle's. <laughs> and then- uh, R.I.P. so many dudes from this point forward. So- Nay, meanwhile, while Clareth and Mikael were having their lesbian romance arc, Nay wanted to cause problems on purpose, starting to spread rumors to really end that Leonhardt was an evil man who stole things from the castle often. Really Anne ordered to have Alan kill his foster father. I know. Alan agreed, and after Rillianne poisoned him, he dealt the final blow, and the twins threw his body into the river. So he just killed his foster dad. Oh. Quirky! Alan agreed, and after Rillianne poisoned him, he dealt the final blow at uh, twins with the body in the, in the river. Germaine and Chartet had found the body in the river sometime later, and Germaine had several breakdowns back to back that Chartet had to comfort her through. Shortly after the funeral, he was approached by Gumelia to deliver a green onion to Mikaela for communication magic. The series is very silly sometimes for no reason. It, it literally, the chapter goes, there's a fucking murder, there's a funeral, and then, and then Gumelia is just like, hey, can you take this magical green onion to my bestie Mikaela? And he's like, excuse me? <laughs> the fucking total whiplash is fucking insane. So, he meets Mikaela, and he quickly falls in love with her because she's so pretty, and they talk, and they get along, and it's baby's first crush. Again, he's only known, like, his sisters his whole life. Yeah. He's just a little guy. Um, when he returned to Healer, King Kyle did something really stupid. He broke off his engagement with Rilly Ann and mentioned Mikaela as the reason, setting her up for despair, honestly. Damn it. Kyle's such a fucking loser. So Rillianne pulled a Palpatine and ordered every green haired woman be killed till they found Kyle found and killed Kyle's quote unquote lover. Again, they weren't together. They weren't together. 
Oh my god, I did not know they were not together. They weren't together because Mikael is a lesbian. I didn't know this! I yeah! Know this now! Yeah! So, like, every PO, every, like, PMV back in the day, that's just like, oh, they were so in love, it's so sad. It's just like, no, she never liked him! She never liked him! He liked her! <laughs> god, and she's a lesbian! I feel cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were I never in love. Cheated. You feel I cheated? cheated? How dare they misconstrued this yeah. in my young eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's because everyone... I... It's because nobody knew that, like, of the rest of the story. So whenever, whenever people made fan PO, like fan POVs, like yeah. fan-made AMVs, they always included, like, a background ship. And it's like, I'm just sitting there with the actual knowledge of the story, just, like, fuming. Because I'm like, no, they didn't love each other. Mikaela was in love with Clarith. <laughs> I feel s I'm damn. <laughs> Just like fuck, my whole world's crashing down around me. <laughs> so Miriam was sent to find the identity of the girl, but could not find her, as the Frieza's family had hidden Mikaela away to protect her from the ensuing literal, actual genocide happening by running away to their old village, where corpses of the village were littered the area. So imagine coming back to a village that you were bullied the whole life that you ran away from. You have to run away back to it because your girlfriend's gonna get genocided. And then you find out all your bullies are fucking dead, and their corpses just littering the area. I mean... That's basically what Claire is going through right now. She is going through it. God damn, man. So, um, Aluka, meanwhile, was ordered for execution for refusing to burn down the Lost Woods where Hell's Millennium Tree was. Aluka said farewell to Miriam and ran away to the Lost Woods with Gumilia. So, so really, is just trying to kill everybody at this point. So, while Clareth and Mikaela hid out in their old house, soldiers still end up finding them, so Clareth confessed her love to Mikaela, and the two shared their first kiss. As they kissed- I never knew this! You're <laughs> so cheating! Yeah! Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? You're fucking 15-year-old me had no idea these were lesbians, and I missed out on quality lesbian representation? Yeah, you missed out on actual lesbians! <laughs> Like, these two are in love. Like, actually in love. Like, it's not danced around. Like, they are actually a couple. They just go through so fucking much. I'm so sorry to find out this way. I'm so pissed. I'm actually <laughs> mad at myself. I'm like, so genuinely annoyed that I didn't know that it was, like, actual canon lesbians. <laughs> I'm so pissed. You came back I to have... genocide and lesbians, Blue. <laughs> But yeah, this shit is wild, I know. Uh, I mean, like, even, like, when I listened to Daughter of Ryan, I, I thought it was, a, like, a one-sided thing. I was so fucking wrong. Nope, they were in love. Oh, I'm so pissed. So the two share their I'm first like kiss. <laughs> let, it out, let it out of your system, let it out of your system. No, I, I haven't had, I, I could have had, what? Well, the fact that I'm learning at 25 years old. <laughs> that your childhood series had actual lesbians in it and you were robbed of it by people who didn't know the whole story? Yeah. How dare they? I know, fucked up. But it's okay, that's why I'm here. I'm here to rectify the wrongs. But yeah, so, Clareth and Mikaela share their first kiss. As they kissed, Clareth had snuck a sleeping pill into Mikaela's mouth and took her cloak as she slept. Claire because she wanted to run away and keep Mikaela safe. Claire ended up Claire ended up qu captured for questioning. Again, the reason why these two bitches, these two lovely lesbian bitches, got separated is because of fucking Kyle. Fucking Kyle is the bane of my. <laughs> fucking Kyle is the bane of every lesbian everywhere. Every lesbian has a Kyle, and I'm sure the gays can agree. Every, le every lesbian has a Kyle, and this and Claire and Mika have a literal Kyle, and it's fucked up. So double yikes, it gets worse. Rillian learned from Nay, who always is causing problems, that Alan knew exactly who and where Mikaela was and ordered him to kill her. By the way, every by the way, this is so important. By the way, every time Rillian orders Alan to do something, she does it by writing it down and putting it in a glass bottle so that it could come true. 
Just like the legend. Ah! Just like the legend from when she was a kid with Alan. She doesn't remember him, but remembers that. Oh my god. <laughs> because again, she's 14. She's 14. She and possessed by a demon. <laughs> my baby. And she only does this with Alan. She only does her orders like this with Alan. That is it. Amazing. It fucks me up. It fucks me up inside. So Nay noticed that Alan's has has uh, Ellen's has hesitation, and instead decided to kill Mikaela herself. Mikaela is now dead. While dressed as Alan, after the soldiers burned down the Frieza's family and captured Kiel and Yukina and the rest of the family. Nay disappeared shortly after, and the real Alan appeared and held Mikaela as she bled out. What? No! Yes. <laughs> You're telling me this whole time it wasn't fucking Len? <laughs> you didn't know! one person and it's his dad that's it he never killed Mikaela. it was always nay because the thing is alan went to go find Mikaela to tell her to run away but by the time he got there she was already dead well she was dying he held her as she bled out and he cried because she was the first person he actually he wanted to let he had a crush on <laughs> Colleen <laughs> Oh my god Oh my god I She's losing it <laughs> I thought I knew this fucking story I thought I fucking knew this shit Nope almost a decade I've been lied to I missed out on lesbians mm -hmm. and now I'm being told that my, the fucking it, I'm being told is this other dumb ass motherfucker who d did it and I'm here like oh this is the saddest romance story of all time he has to kill his, his, the girl he likes because he loves his sister so this is all a fucking lie and I it's hate it <laughs> Hi, Emily. You're just in time for... Colleen's having a breakdown because she didn't know the actual story. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm the one that's here to burst your bubble you've made for yourself because of all the lies that have been spun. <laughs> I'm, like, actually genuinely, like, annoyed that <laughs> I've been lied to for this long. Yeah, you... Emily, you missed out on the lesbians! We have lesbians. We have. Did you know there was canon lesbians? Did you know there were <laughs> canon lesbians that actually kissed and would in love? And I didn't know this. A little. And they were engaged. Me. And they were engaged. Hey, you missed that. You skipped over that bit. What? Well, kind of, because Claire declared that they want. So basically, in the song, it explains. So as I said earlier, Claire had asked um, Mikaela to marry her. Mikaela never gave an answer. In the song in Daughter of White, not Daughter of White, in um, in a uh, thousand year wig a wig and lied. Um, Mikaela says her vows to nobody because Claire isn't around because Claire's got taken away to questioning. So Claire, so Mikaela accepted the proposal. <laughs> they were technically engaged, but then they killed her. I hate this. Like, I, because I've gone. So long thinking I knew this goddamn story that I've been lied to for almost a decade of my life. This is fucked up. <laughs> I'm going dark over them. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not near the end. But yeah, Mikaela met her I'm end. Going, I'm going dark over the fact that I thought Len killed fucking Miku this entire time. Nope, Alan never killed her. Alan has only killed Leonhart. That's it. He only killed his dad. This is bullshit.
bullshit. I know, because Nate caused problems on purpose. But yeah, after Alan left, King Kyle came, because fucking Kyle, came across Michaela's body and cried over her corpse. Then Aluka and Gumina also came across Michaela's corpse. And by the way, Aluka and Gumina, uh, Gumilia, fuck, Gumilia, were actually Michaela's friends. Like, they... They, they they were all besties. They trained together and everything. So Kyle's having a breakdown. Aluka has a bigger, badder breakdown right after him. And she is quoted saying, I'm used to it in regarding her recent failures. I relate. <laughs> I'm, I'm still reeling. I'm still recovering. Yep, sadness. It's just it just gets worse, honestly. So Mikaela's body became a tree sapling as the Earth God chose her to become the next Millennium Tree. Lesbian rights, I guess. So right? after after Mikaela's death, Nay, Chartet, and Relaine had a tea party in the Heavenly Yard with Alan serving them. So after the genocide, Relaine was like, "It's tea time," and then had had yes, a tea I party. That bit. Yeah. I remember that bit. Also, forgot to mention during all this shit, Jermaine had started forming the Lucifanian resistance after Leonhardt's death. This is just bury your gaze. <laughs> it's, it's okay, because they bury everybody. No one is free. Yes? Yes? Yeah. C Colleen? Hello? What was that? Uh. Here. Hello? Oh, so sorry. Um, this is Colin's mom. Um, my apologies. She just startles very easily. She opened the door. I even made noise, but because she has these earmuffs on, <laughs> she did not hear me, and then I Oh, look! Her. Am I muted? Oh, no, I'm not muted. I'm sorry. sorry I was muted. You're good, you're good. Please continue. Okay. And then I touched her, and then you saw the result of that. So, again... Apologies. Apologies. Sorry. Apologies. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Hello. I, I thought I killed Hello. you. I thought I killed you. Chat was already planning your funeral. <laughs> did you hear my mom? Yes, I did. Oh my god, I can't wait to get go back to that on the pod. Jesus Christ, I got spooked. Um, where, what was I saying before you fucking exploded? <laughs> I'm so afraid. Um, oh yeah, Heavenly Yard. That's what they call the, the courtyard in the castle. Uh, forgot okay. to forgot to mention, during all this shit, Jermaine had started forming the Luciferian resistance after Leonhardt's death, with Chartet acting as her spy with insider information. Chartet helped Jermaine get in contact with Kiel, and she learned of what happened with Mika, Ella, Clareth, and Kyle. Clareth reunited with Yukina after being freed from custody and learned of Mika, Ella's passing and had a breakdown so bad it caused her to pass out. King Kyle, meanwhile, joined the Luciferian re Revolution while donning a mask to hide his identity. It wasn't a very good disguise as German Jermaine quickly figured out his identity. <laughs> <laughs> More pain! Yay! <laughs> Cleric acted as a messenger between Kiel and Jermaine. This lasted a short while while the resistance pre prepared to take over. Cleric did not wish to fight as she saw herself as too weak and left. She joined a monastery and worked there for a short while by the harbor. We'll get back to the monastery later. Meanwhile, during tea time one day, Relaine noted that to Alan how the sky looked like the end of the world was approaching. And it was, as the Luciferian army started losing battle after battle against the resistance, uh, thanks to the help of the Mar uh, thanks to help of um, Marlon and also Jermaine's leadership. Among the casualties included Mariam, who was con cornered by Chartet and left for dead, only to be killed by her foster daughter Nay. Because remember, Mariam had raised Nay. Oh God. Who fled the castle shortly after to go report to Abyss IR that all three of the three heroes were now gone. Damn. 
you already know this part of the story. <laughs> yeah. Alan revealed to really Re that they were twins all along, and he decided to let himself be captured by the resistance by having him and Relaine switch clothes. Really was against it, but Alan locked the door behind him after changing into her clothes, which forced her to have to have to have to escape. He was captured in the Hall of Sounds and locked up in the dungeon. Al Alan ended up getting beat by King Kyle after he lied and said he was the one who killed Michaela. Kyle yeah. told him, even though he knew that it was Alan and not really Anne, that he would have him killed anyway for political ramifications. Jermaine afterwards recognized him as well and tried to free him. Alan stuck to his guns and told her how he was the one who killed Leonhart. And he berated Jermaine for causing a resistance over revenge instead of, and not for Relaine's horrible treatment of the citizens. So he called her selfish. Ooh. So that made Jermaine angry and blinded by her rage. She decided to go along with the execution. The next day he was executed before the public, noting, oh, it's tea time, as he was decapitated. <laughs> Alan's afterlife, important. <laughs> Alan woke up after being killed in the Heavenly Yard and met Sickle, who was formerly known as Talus. Do you remember that guy? Yes. Good. Who explained that Alan was an irregular. Sickle explained that Alan was not allowed a moment of peace and was given the task of learning all of the Third Period's history from the black box device. Alan received memory data from the souls in the Heavenly Yard and learned of the present and past over time. Even though he was not allowed to see his friends in the afterlife as an irregular, he spent the next few years learning and watching over Rillian. We get a treat! Yes! Woo! How many, how many of these do we get to watch? I want to just watch all of them now. We, you get to watch Daughter of Evil, Stern of Evil, and then the ending song. Yay. So we're very close to the end. Oh, oh my fuck. god. I'm so- I'm still, like, reeling from that. <laughs> You, like, ruined my child. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, not the first time I've been told that. God damn. <laughs> you ruined my childhood, child. <laughs> With the truth? Yes! Rip. Rip you, but I'm built different. Because I knew all along. I'm so happy. <laughs> I love your reaction to learning about the lesbians and, and the whole thing about Nay. I'm so glad. I love telling people I love telling people about Nay. I'm so pissed. Like, I'm like pissed. Not at you. I'm just like pissed at the internet yeah. for not telling you the truth. You're lying to me. Long intro, but it's worth it because the song is a jam and I'm not interrupting it. No, nah, man. Woo! Let's fucking go! Fucking go! Ba -da -ba -da -ba -boom. I want this dress. I want this dress. Oh my god, it's so. I, me, when me and, Li, uh, me and uh, Cloak were younger, um, we always talked about wanting to do a Servant of Evil and, uh... Yeah. And, it's so uh, nice. I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed. <laughs> Cause now I'm gonna get to that part of the song and- And you're gonna know what actually happened. The reason I chose this music video specifically is because it includes all the panels from the manga. Or the light novel. Mm. Look at Leonhart! <laughs> this was my first Vocaloid song. Uh, it's a good one to start off with. I was like, it's what definitely... the fuck is going on here? It was definitely one of my firsts. Kyle! Slash Neg! Slash Neg! Kyle slash Neg! See... Notice how it says that Kyle was in love with Mikaela, not that they were in love with each other. From the beginning, it's always only been Kyle. No one just ever noticed that specific lyric. <laughs> I love her. 
my baby. That's my evil, that's that's my evil, evil child. My evil child. Again, she's 14 and possessed by a demon. Most of her childhood, she was possessed by a demon. <laughs> oh, I love her. Here she is. Here she is. My other wife. I love any character put by Mako, actually. Honestly, valid. Woo! Look at her, queen. It's her. Clarice! That corpse right there, that's Miriam's corpse. This is right here. Oh shit. Oh, it makes me so sad. <laughs> Emily! This ain't Project Sakai, this is the real shit! <laughs> Notice I just include the part where Alan beat, <laughs> but got Kyle. beat by Kyle. <laughs> Glossed over that bit. Glossed over that shit. I, I don't think they mentioned that in Servant of Evil either. Fair. Rip. 07. 07's in the chat. 07's, honestly. 07's in the chat. Chai, no, you're gonna collect all the cards and they come out and- oh, Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like so pissed. I'm still not over this. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> hey, but see, T H Y, which yep. is the Heavenly Yard, Mothy, Master of. Yeah, yeah, okay, I have it now. <laughs> Alright, now we get Sword of Evil. Yay! <laughs> Poor Colleen. Nah, she signed up for this. She signed up for this. I, I've been lied to for a decade. I think I'm val I'm allowed to be a little upset. Ashley! We have a mod, guys! <laughs> it's been a surprise visit before. Yeah, we got an Ashley camera. Now we get an Ashley Ashley. Why is it in Chinese? Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, where's English? The fuck? I guess we don't get English. Okay, I think it'll show up in the in the video. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's on the top. <laughs> oh, oh, the nostalgia! <laughs> I love this song so much. Change the change. It changed the trajectory of who I am as a person. Is the reason I am the way I am. <laughs> changed my trajectory forever. Look, that's when they got the, the glass bottle. And this is <laughs> happy memory. Also, this is where Relaine got possessed. <laughs> oh, my babies. I, 
I want her dressed so fu fucking badly. Mikaela Hours! Mikaela Hours! Her! Her! My girl! Oh, it's so, so sad. Alan just wants his sister to be happy. I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed. This is all <laughs> lies. This is all lies. Why did they not? Oh my god. No, we're going back. Because read, oh, read the lyrics. since he actually did it it just implies and the implication was wrong because it was this bitch <laughs> i think about that one live person where, where they kill lead and the one guy kind of goes lead no <laughs> songs in the series is actually 85 Between you and Cloak, who was Relain? Cloak. Oh. <laughs> this is so important to me. <laughs> it was cloaked? Yeah. Excellent. Now I, no, now I want to know what, you think, what you're thinking because of that. Listen, now that I know that you were Alan and you're Phil Zakini, I understand you as a whole person. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I need you to pause that right now. I need to pause this right now. I need you to pause. I need you to pause. I it's almost pause. done! What? <laughs> I need you to explain to me why those two, it's those two that make so much sense about me. I need you to explain this to me right now. <laughs> Listen, it just sounds like you seem to not have the full picture, and you seem to kind of put people before you. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I always assign myself as really am. <laughs> as a Leo, I get it. I love attention. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait. I need somebody to clip that so I can send it to Cloak. <laughs> Have you gotten a cut corruption of judgment? No, that'll be next week. Because unfortunately, this story of evil is way too long because it doesn't end here! So, oh god, Jesus fucking Christ, not again. Exit slideshow, and then start the slideshow again. Of course you're a Leo! Fuck off, Eden! <laughs> 
All right. So after Alan's death, Rillian ran away and ended up at the monastery with a bunch of orphans. This was the same monastery that Clarith would just so happen to be working at. She started going under the pseudonym Wren. Hey. After Rillian, quote unquote, Rillian's death, Luca and Gumelia appeared at the monastery as well to check on Clarith, where they presented her with the Mikaela sapling. A manifestation of Mikaela appeared, and Clarith and Mikaela were able to confess their love for each other, say their vows, and Clarith took responsibility of their sapling before Mikaela disappeared. Lesbian rights. Lesbian rights. They somehow have the happiest ending, honestly. <laughs> so. And then Rin wondered if Clarith would still treat her kindly if Clarith knew that she was actually really Anne all along. But we'll get back to that because Kyle's not done being a fucking loser! Fucking Kyle! God! I'll never be free! God, why, when will the Kyles just end? Kyle somehow... I just realized something. My Spotify widget stopped updating like 20 songs ago. Wow. Whoops. So we got, we, we, we got, we were. Just give me one moment. I would just need a momento. Do, 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 Spotify widget will never be free of Kyle. Kyle will never let me rest. Kyle is a curse. I mean, it's him and William Afton, William uh, Second coming of Christ after was taken. Yeah, was taken. <laughs> They're working together. They're working together to personally ruin my life. Okay. Just chatting. And we're back. Fix the Spotify widget. Okay. Kyle somehow ended up getting possessed by the demon of pride because of his hand mirror after Lexiel's beheading. Thanks, Abyss. Kyle planned to take control of Lucifania and conquer all of Avilius. Nay, of course, came to help and spread lies that Germain, Aluka, and Gumelia were the ones behind Mikaela's murder. He officially ordered for Germain's arrest and spread lies that she was a traitor as he merged Lucifania as a part of Marlon's territory. Meanwhile, Yukina, remember her? She's back, was becoming a published novelist at the ripe age of nine. <laughs> oh boy. Good for her, I guess. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Kyle started a witch hunt to capture Aluka and Gumelia. He utilized Prim's special maneuvers task force, his mother, to hunt down the witches. And through Abyss's influence, Ney was appointed head of the task force and was given the glass of Conchita to raise the dead for her, their army. You know, casual quirky shit. Meanwhile, 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 Germain and Chartet had fled to escape Marlon and ended up in Biel uh, Bielzinia Empire to join their army. Germain had become an alcoholic from the constant nightmares about Alan and Leonhardt. No. Uh, noise. Meanwhile, in the meanwhiles, meanwhile, Abyss had discovered Aluka and Gumelia infiltrating Marlon Castle. I'm not kidding when I said this happens all within like a couple days of one another. <laughs> like all at the same time. <laughs> Abyss had discovered Aluka and Gumelia infiltrating Marlon Castle to look for the demon vessels. She intercepted them and quickly defeated Aluka. Aluka fled to, into Gumelia's body, and the two shared it for a while. I have no context for this! You don't need it, it's fine. Everything's fine. Just accept it. Just accept it as it's happening. <laughs> it was in Lucana's body that Abyss chose Ney to la lead the task force. We'll get back to that. So now, Aluk now Irina is in Aluka's body, which is Lucana's body. And Aluka is sharing Gumelia's body right now. Okay. Back to Rin real quick. This all fucking happened in EC505. Rin sneaks into the confessional late at night when she believes that no one is around and begins confessing to her crimes to God, but which includes, but not limited to, <laughs> genocide, murder, bad leadership, destroying a country, destroying her own country. <laughs> you know. Things you do when you're 14. <laughs> Clareth overheard her. Rin wrote her final wish and put it in a glass bottle and threw it into the sea, wishing to reincarnate to be with Alan again. Clareth snuck up behind her, ready to kill her, but Alan, using a black box in the heavenly yard with the permission of Sickle, because Clareth was being influenced by the fucking demon of wrath, which I need to prophesize, is Seth. <laughs> Back. He's back, back, back again. I do not know how the fuck he ended up like he. So his spirit's kind of wandering around with no real 
vessel. So I just, I guess just being in the forest can make you possessed by wrath. I don't fucking know. Amazing. But Mikina Freezes was sent as a spy working for Biss. Mikina is Yukina's mother and Kiel's uh, wife. She's voiced by Miki, obviously, from the fucking name. <laughs> Clareth instead chose to simply cut Rin's hair instead and teach her how to make brioche. The two planted Michaela's sapling in Hell's Forest. Are we done? Is no. <laughs> We're not okay, done with so Kyle. Oh god, I, I forgot about her. Okay. But yeah, this is kind of where Clarit's story starts to fizzle out because she's basically done. She planted Michaela. Rin is still going, though. Fucking Kyle. He's not done. Fucking Kyle. Okay, there's another really Ann. <laughs> They're completely unrelated. They're just both named really Ann. We're just going to call her Lily because she's voiced by Lily. I don't know why. I don't know why Mothy decided that he couldn't just call her, like, Lillian or Lilith or any of that shit. But no, he was like, we'll do uh, we'll do Lily in this story and call her fucking really Ann as well. To piss off Chai. <laughs> She goes by Lily. We're calling her Lily. It never fucking ends. A little before, Yukina had become interested in the Vessels of Sin and decided to cross in the Belizean Empire. She ran into Lily Muchit, or Machit, I don't fucking know, a former soldier of the Luciferian army and formerly a commander of the Marlon army. The two spent some time together and Lily got Yukina into Belzenia. Shortly after this, in EC 505, was when Ney had begun summoning the undead and Lily defected and escaped into the Belzenia as well, where she ran to Chartet. Lily also met up with Jermaine and criticized Jermaine for only sitting around drinking instead of helping the resistance against the invasion. I don't know why in the story everyone shits on Jermaine so much. Like, on one hand, they kind of have a point, but on the other, it's like, Jesus Christ, this is targeted at this point. Because Jermaine tries to argue that um, it's all for pointless vengeance, which Lily argues wasn't that why she started her own revolution in Lucifania to begin with. When the two sober up, Lily has somehow convinced Jermaine to rejoin the resistance to take charge. Yukina thought up of a plan to find Kyle, who was living in the Lucifania castle, because he had taken over Lucifania with his army. Gumilia and Jermaine would, pos would pose as her bodyguards, and she would enter the castle looking for Kyle, as her father, Kiel, and Kyle are best friends, and she spends a lot of time with Kyle. Mm. Tricking the loser, idiot, fool, motherfucker, idiot, loser, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so Kyle was keeping around one of the four mirrors of Lucifania, and Yukina spent the night at the castle and planned to steal it from him to give back to Gumilia. She was almost successful, but Kyle intercepted and took the mirror back. Gumilia tried to explain to Kyle that he was possessed by a demon, and he argued, nah, -uh, and then proceeded to undergo a demonic transformation and spread wings and flew up into the sky. I'm not kidding. Like, that is like line after line. She's like, you're possessed. He's like, no, I'm not. And then he begins to undergo a demonic, like, a demonic what? transformation. <laughs> Oh my, I'm gonna need the, that list of the, the fucking songs in this part, because I- what the fuck? I yeah. remember none of this. <laughs> it's a lot. But Kyle found them- uh, oh wait, Yukina, Jermaine, and Gumilia meet up and discuss what to do at the Freezes family well, where Michaela, Michaela was murdered. Kyle found them and attacked. The battle went on, and Michaela's spirit from the sapling sing- I forgot to include this! I knew I would forget to do this. Okay, so Kyle- his, like, acts of uh, affection is that he gives people shell necklaces. He gave one to Mikaela. He gave one to Rillianne. He gave one to... He gave one to, uh, Yukina. Okay. And he has one himself. So, as the bell's going on, Mikaela's spirit from the sapling sang a spell song that amplified Gumilia's magic onto, onto his shell necklace that he had. And the demon was exercised, and he woke up with minor amnesia. He basically could only remember the... He couldn't remember the last five years. Mm. Oh yeah, there's a lot of context you're missing out on. You miss the lesbians, you miss the Kyles, yeah, there's a lot. You miss the whole thing with Nay. You missed your girlfriend's breakdown. <laughs> there's oh, always one. 
<laughs> one poor deep dive. So, Kyle decides that he has to find and confront his mother, who was the cause behind so much chaos in Lucifania and Marlon. And he takes Yukina, Jermaine, and Gumelia, and some other guys I forgot to name, but it's too late now. And they have to run in with a giant fucking octopus that tries to destroy their ship. But Gumelia enhances their cannon so they can get away from him. The octopus was sent by Abyss. Why a lot? Why? octopus yeah it's just there's just an octopus and it tried to kill them but it didn't and they moved on they hit out they hide out in the freezes family home and see a luca who attacks gumelia for control of there's more than one kyle <laughs> no 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 there's only one there's only one kyle there's only one kyle why are you saying there's two kyles there's our you, one you what? You did you say Kyle's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just I'm just slurring over my words at oh, this God, point. I can ask a again. <laughs> Don't read ahead. How dare you? <laughs> Luca fights back and wrestles control Lucata's body and forces Arena out, who's now left with no real body and is just a stuffed cat again. So Luca's back in her body now. And the group prepares to raid Castle Hedgehog. Fucking hate Castle Hedgehog. What's wrong with Castle Hedgehog? <laughs> you know damn well what's wrong with Castle Hedgehog. God, no, if there were multiple cows, I would quit. I can only handle the one. So we're really close to endgame. We're really close. Oh my god. Nay god. raised to reanimate an army of corpses against Kyle, Jermaine, and his army. As they attacked, Nay fled into Heartbeat Clock Tower, where Prim was waiting, and waited for Kyle's arrival for a one on one. When he sent his soldiers after her, she swiftly killed them and presented the bodies to her, to her, her mother. She waited for approval from her mother and found none, as Prim was too busy explaining to Kyle that she wanted Kyle repossessed with the demon of lust that she had in her mirror, and that she had them acquire, and she had also acquired the clockworker's doll. So, Nay's in the corner, holding two dead bodies, going, Mom, look at me! Mom, I killed men for you! Mom, look! And Nay and Prim is like, that's nice. Anyway, Kyle, my love, my only son ever, I want you possessed again so that we can take over the world. I hope you don't mind that. It's <laughs> too much. So, Nay then stabs Prim. Yay! But after calming down, she denies what she's done and blames it on Kyle. Nay! <laughs> <laughs> Driven into a frenzy at this point, she undergoes a demonic transformation, which mostly just changes her uniform into Banika's red dress, and she begins to talk about wanting to eat her enemies. The siblings fight, and Nay attempts to... <laughs> Nay attempts to beat him to death with her fist, but Kyle launches his rocket glove and shoots her to the ceiling, knocking her out! <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to mention, Kyle gets a rocket glove at this point. <laughs> Colleen? <laughs> Colleen? <laughs> It's like a Nintendo, it's like a Nintendo power glove. <laughs> he just shoots his sister with. It's I very- had to, I, had, <laughs> I had to disconnect from the call. <laughs> I, I, I needed to compose myself. That's so valid. Completely understandable. Have a nice day. Rocket glove. Rocket glove. Uh, irrelevant to the story, truly. So it's not actually over yet. We have like two arcs left, but we're almost there. Um, Kyle collected his mother's corpse, the two mirrors, and Clockworker's doll, and left the tower. Nay was also taken, and she's taken to Lioness Castle and tied to a bed for everyone's safety. While Kyle regrouped with Yukina, Jermaine, Kiel, Aluka, and Gumelia, like fucking idiots, like fucking. Fools! I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. They put all the vessels of sin they had collected in so far in the same room as Nay. Why? Because they're idiots! And they were like, yeah, we'll just put it with the crazy bitch. Surely nothing bad will come of this. Can't believe them. Okay. As they discussed, a flash of light appeared and everyone was knocked unconscious. Kyle awoke in a black box where Benika was holding a six-year-old Nay. Benika revealed that Nay was actually a reincarnation of Gretel, and Nay apologized to Kyle for all the bad things she did, and that she hoped to reincarnate so that they could be siblings again. 
Kyle cried, begging to hold her at least once as Benika took Nay away to the sea that appeared before them, and Kyle woke up to find Nay dead and the vessel stolen. Kyle had Nay and Prim buried next to each other, and later on discovered that Yukina had run away to search for her mother, Mikina, who is <sighs> under Arena's control and had been the one that murdered Nay with a Marlon spoon. Oh. Here's that scene from the manga where Kyle's crying as Nay gets taken away from him. Like, honestly, I just feel bad for Nay. Honestly. Kyle, I feel bad for, but also he's such a fucking loser. Like, my god, not a single W your entire life, bro. <laughs> oh, god. Poor Nay. Look how cute she is. But yeah, she's Gretel. And she gets taken away. And so, fun fact, uh, she never does get to see Kyle again. <laughs> Good. Benika's been scheming. So Benika transported into the red dimension of the wine glass with Nay, aka Gretel, in tow. She waited until all of Nay's memories were fully returned as Gretel. Nay, now back to her original form as Gretel, is then given her old duties as Benika's servant and starts going by Arte once more. Benika continues her plan to become master of the graveyard with her and Boyo once they find him, but now she only has Arte. Okay. time, Makina had frequently visited the monastery where Clareth and Rin had worked in the past, and it was it is where Jermaine and Yukina went to go search for her. Luca and Jermaine and Gumilia had went searching in Levantia and Marlon. Yukina reunited with Clareth, yay, and ended up meeting Rin. Rin and Jermaine also locked eyes, really awkward, and Jermaine recognized Rin and have as having actually been really Anne. Jermaine bid her farewell and didn't give her the time of day, though. <laughs> Cause she was like, "There's bigger fish to fly. To there's bigger fish to fry. To there's bigger there's bigger fish to fry." Jesus Christ! There you go. <laughs> you would, I knew you would have gotten it. That was hard. <laughs> Um, two days after arriving, they encountered the masked Mikina on the beach and began to fight. Abyss reveals that she is the Marlon Spoon and brings up her theory that Jermaine may be a relative of Benica Conchita. She is. That's just, that's just revealed like three sentences later. She's like, she is actually. She is related to her <laughs> due to her fast healing abilities. Makina reveals that she made a contract with the demon of greed within the Marlon Spoon, and it is why she's able to conjure up spells, which she uses against Jermaine and Yukina. The fight continues. Abyss takes control again of Makina to engulf y Yukina in a powerful fire spell. However, Alan, communicating with the af from the afterlife using the black box, told her to not give up and survive so that she could write a novel about Jermaine, Rillianne, and her own story. He assured her that his sisters would help her. Sure enough, Rin appears and attempts to steal the spoon from Abyss AR. Abyss is caught off guard and tries to attack the group again, only to fail at using her magic because of Benika and Nay's interference. Makina was defeated, and Arena's true body, the Red Cat, tried to run away before Jermaine, with Alan's spirit helping her, skewered hit. Don't worry, she's not dead. She can't die, silly. Ha ha! Why would we have Elis Chronicles if Arena is dead? She never dies! Oh my god. But this manga panel is very pretty, because it's Rin, Jermaine, and Alan all working together. All of all of Alan's sisters working together, the both of them. Aww. Even though they fucking hate each other. Well, Jermaine hates Rin. And Ren just wants to be forgiven, and Yukina's just there watching, and she's like, whoa. Nice. I promise we're so close to the end. This is where I got really lazy. I'm just gonna copy and paste from the wiki, because I did not want to get into Neo-Apocalypse. <laughs> I did not want to get into it, but it's important, so I'm just gonna fucking go through it. So, Neo-Apocalypse was a terrorist political movement existing within the whole Livianta, founded at the original ne original Apocalypse, the one that destroyed Livianta because of, like, remember, Aluka being dead and Carol, the whole thing? Yes. Okay. The organization focused on overthrowing the Levia sect, dominated Levin Church, and acted numerous destructive acts through the religious capital. In EC 508, Abyss traveled to the Holy Levianta and collaborated with Mikhail Asayev, who possessed the twin blades of Levianta. She then had Mikhail possessed by the Demon of Envy, influencing the creation of Neo Apocalypse and subsequent terrorism. The Four Horsemen incident was the name given to the numerous terrorist attacks in Holy Levanta per per perpetuated by the Neo Apocalypse and attempted to overthrow the Levin Church. Part Partially instigated by the suppression of the radical heretics of the domain of Levia sect and the incident of the Levanta to call for the international help and put in the growing crisis. It's just terrorism. Just another terrorism has is happening because of because of Arena. Okay. Christ. Around the time of the incident, Aluka had lost the glass of Conchita again, <laughs> and end up with Arena again. 
Then on return, Chartette ended up with the twin blades of Levianta and she ran away with them. We'll get back to Chartette later during Envy. Arena and Jermaine bat had battled and after defeating her, took over her body as her latest medium. So now Jermaine is possessed by Arena and she's going to go by Julia Halbert in the next part, but I'll explain that next week. Okay. Don't forget about Lich, because I did. <laughs> Remember Lich? He's back. Oh my god. When Ney had unleashed her undead army, Lich was there and was very offended by this. Lich had also been shocked to learn that Demon Gluttony was no longer Vlad, but Vlad, which was Eater's cousin, but Bonica Conchita. Lich and Eater became subservient to Bonica and merged into the red wine glass as dormant spirits after Arena had reclaimed the glass and worked under her command as they searched for the graveyard. So here's Lit Lich. Looking like the creepiest motherfucker alive. Yeah, really. He's so ugly. <laughs> Look at that bowl cut. Not a single W found. Epilogues. We're at the fucking epilogues. <sighs> oh, God bless. Clareth left for the monastery after finding and raising a young Natsuma boy named Ain. She was tired of discrimination that her clan was facing and started her own monastery order called the Sisters of Clareth. Good for her, honestly. She remained in contact with Rin and established a church at the entrance of the Millennium Tree Forest in order to protect Michaela's tree from all harm. She gave Aluka and Gumelia permits to enter the forest freely and release an autobiography. I wish I could read this autobiography. I really wish. Yeah, really. <laughs> I want to know her thoughts. I guess that's what Daughter of White is, but like, damn. Give me the canon story she wrote. Rin was baptized as a nun under her new name, and she became the head of the monastery at 43. Rin raised several of the orphans, and they looked up to her as a kind mother, and at her deathbed, they stayed by her side. She told them how she was waiting for a reply from her glass bottle message years ago. If her sins were forgiven. When the orphans asked Kyle, bad, bad idea, what those sins were, he explained all her crimes and how the person Rin had been had sent the bottle who had already died for those sins because he's a loser and couldn't give these orphans like a, a sugar-corded tale about their mother. He was like, nah, your mom was a fucking <laughs> horrible person. <laughs> right. So the orphans wrote a fake response to give her some closure. She thanked them and passed away. More epilogues ripped your main, honestly. Yukina continued to writing and publishing stories based on the incidents caused by Vessels of Sin. She had no interest in men or women. Arrow Ace Queen, honestly. She, li she lived with Kyle for the rest of her life. She learned later on the story of Miku Ulia, the Kyle Grand, who and she wrote the story Flower of the Plateau. She Kyle left the throne with Arakatari... Arkator, I don't know who the fuck that was, but he, he got the throne. After Lucifania was given complete independence, and he lived as a painter and living with Yukina, because he couldn't get bitches, because he never got over Mika He never got over Michaela. He never got over Michaela. She was never into you, bro! <sighs> When learning about Mikulia Calground, he was shocked at how much Mikulia and Mikaela looked exactly alike. He never really got over Mikaela. Then he told a bunch of orphans that good old Sister Rain was a filthy sinner. And I forgot about this kid, so I had to include his slide this morning. Shaw Freezes, Yukina's brother, is a character I haven't mentioned once because he wasn't important until I realized. You need to know who he is to understand the sloth arc. Oops. That's on me. Sh Shaw was Yukina's brother and witnessed many of the tragedies that occurred over the Vessels of Sin, though he did not play a major role outside of being a scared child, understandably. However, I completely forgot that Shaw had a huge crush on Gumelia and became her underling in a way, and was the one who had alerted Kiel and Kyle that Yukina had gone missing alongside Yukina. After witnessing so much death and destruction due to the Vessels of Sin, he grew terrified of death and begged Aluka for the secrets of, uh, to, to immortality. She refused. Good. He then prayed to Michaela, Michaela's tree and was given eternal youth, which is against the rules, Michaela! Oh <laughs> yeah, after this, in the in the light novel, basically, Aluka just, like, fucking, like, reads the shit out of Michaela. She's like, you fucking idiot, we shouldn't do this shit. God. But we can move oh. on to Sloth, but first. See everyone in part two, guys. Oh this my fucking god. Hold on, I have to open the link first and then do the whole thing. I'm like stressed. <laughs> I'm gonna just like sit here. Where is the lyrics? There it is. Jesus Christ, I got scared. Okay. 
I was listening, I promise. That's fine. I know no one's listening. <laughs> this is just for Colleen. No. Fun fact, this song came out in like 2014 and wasn't canon yet. And now it is. Because Nothi loves to do that. He loves to release songs and be like, not canon yet. And people are like, what? And he's like, not canon yet. Just wait. Just wait. And then it, now it's canon. Because it's, it's about the orphans that, that Rin raised. <laughs> the cantina button. No, not during the song. <laughs> Yeah, Mothi loves to release songs that he doesn't explain how they're connected to the story up until later. Because he's insane. <laughs> this this is the song I told you about where I made an SBI. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna hurt you so fucking bad. How fucking dare you? How goddamn fucking dare you, you motherfucker? You wanna hurt me like this? I'm standing up out of my chair. I know which twins you're thinking of now, you motherfucker. <laughs> I love you too. I love you too. Not, not Philip or a techno, because I was thinking the same shit. <laughs> Zero days is last dream SMP. <laughs> Mothy, my guy, my bro. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna like inspect him under a microscope. Thank I'm God. Like still... <laughs> I'm recovering from several things. <laughs> oh, this song made me cry the first time I heard it. This is the first time I'm hearing it, so... It's very good, right? <laughs> oh, fucking Kyle! Fucking Kyle. Fuck you! Clarice! Oh! Alan! He's still singing because he's still talking. I'm going to cry, like actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a really fucking sad song. Because you have to remember how fucking young she was. She was just a baby. <laughs>
and that's Reach for the Stars. The last I'm song of Rin's story. The last song I'm of this story of evil. I'm like in pain. <laughs> I'm like in physical pain. Yeah. Especially now that you made it a fucking SBI <laughs> agent. It's a good song, though. It is. Oh. Childhood was a fucking lie. <laughs> and then next week, we get to see part four sloth with content warning, abuse, cheating, mass murder, delusional behavior, disassociation, suicide, and Eve moonlit. We did it! We went through Are everything you... I have! How do you feel? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my childhood in multiple ways today. <laughs> and I feel so lied to and cheated. It's not my fault the internet lied to you. Can I? Yes, you can hit the button now. <laughs> Go ahead, Ash. What's the button? The cantina button. She uh. has enough points. There it is. <laughs> Perfect song to end off on, huh? Oh my god. I'm like in shock with how much I did not know. Thoughts, feelings? Other than just how much you didn't know. Rage, depression, <laughs> agony. Anger. Lots and lots of anger. Yeah, that tracks, that tracks, that tracks. Confusion a lot as well. God. But yeah, that's... That is the story of evil. And that is the fucking... Fuck. That My head hurt. Unfort I and now I'm recording this time. So we're all good. Welcome back. We're here now, and I don't have Colleen's little picture in the corner. Hold on. That's a problem. That was fast. I was gone for five minutes. <laughs> oh god, giant Colleen. No, no, no. We shrink. We shrink her. This is accurate to what- this is accurate of what's gonna happen when we meet up. I'm gonna be like a whole head taller than her. <laughs> I'm gonna join the VC and she's gonna yell at me. Hi. Hello. Hello. Scared the shit out of me. Hello. Can you hear me? Can I have your PowerPoint when I review with the exam? No, you gotta just take notes while class is happening. <laughs> oh my god. Can you hear me just to be sure? Yes, I can sure. hear I can hear okay. you. You're all good. Oh. Awesome, we don't need more <laughs> God. Colina's five foot two, I'm five foot six. Who asked? <laughs> oh, Ella, Ella did. I'm pointing fingers. Ella did. <laughs> No, Colleen's really short. <laughs> Ella, you've seen me stand. Like, I don't know if you, I think you saw it. I don't That's all good. But, like, I. For comparison, that video I posted on TikTok of me and Emily, my girlfriend, she is 5'9. Like, it's. It's. How tall. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll fucking take it. I'll fucking take it. <laughs> you expect me to do math Seder <laughs> No I'm math here saying. No math here, only anime Alright, speed run The five seconds I did last time We're at part four, sloth Recap, no recap We die like men Content warnings for this part We've got abuse Child death Cheating Sex work shaming, drugs, mass murder, a little sprinkle of racism, delusional behavior, disassociating, suicide, and Eve Moonlit. Yeah! Yay! Let's fucking do it, guys. Are you ready? I'm ready. Just in time, literally Eve's song started playing. Oh my god, the Sleep Princess song started playing. <laughs> Oh my god. It, we already went over the Keel Freeze update. He's actually a Seth Twilight ghoul child. I didn't know that. Egg, egg on my head. Didn't know. 
<laughs> Content warning, there's gonna be a Kaito. <laughs> They're always gonna be God. here. <laughs> Kaito slash... I can't even say Kyle. No, it's not, it's just Kyle. It's just Kyle. <laughs> Alright, oh, we They're already did this song. There are good Kaitos out there. There are good Kaitos out there. He's just not one of them. Yeah. Alright, here's the songs I used for this part of the, of the PowerPoint. We got Journey of the Two Mages, Great Wall, and Watchmen. Gift from the Princess Who Brought Sleep, which is a song that's playing right now, chat. A uh, Fifth Piero, Duel of the Merry God Plateau, and Boy of the End Hansel. I know none of these. That's fantastic. Really? Not even the princess song? I, I don't know any of these. I miss... Okay, Carlos wasn't even that good, <laughs> but I still miss him. That man, he was different. He was truly different. He was built so differently. Yeah, Kai... I don't know... Uh, I'm holding your hand. I I'm holding your kettle. I'm holding your hand because so true. Kai Miroko hate club. Hate that bitch. We'll get him later. That's the next part with more racism. <laughs> oh god. Is it a worse Kaito? Yeah. Oh. It's a it's consistent. I I don't, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's pretty consistent. He consistently plays assholes. Mafi just hates Kaito. Mytho, Mafi hates Kaito, loves Rin and Len, <laughs> and just shits on Miku at any chance he's given. Oh my god. That's the Mafi way, baby. Alright, are you ready? Consistent. Are you ready, ready to begin? Alright. Oh boy. So what's up? So, as you guys clearly, obviously remember, because everyone here did their homework, Delphi. Yeah. The Sin song is Gift from the Princess Who Brought Sleep. That's the one that's playing right now. Alright, so, as you guys clearly remember, after Arena had taken control of Jermaine's body as her latest medium, she went under the al alias of Julia IR. She used Jermaine's body to murder Chartet during the Jacoco Civil War to get the Twin Blades of Leviantia. That was a whole thing that I didn't want to read, so I just skipped it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> also, this is the wrong picture of Julia. Just imagine with her eyes, because this is actually a different character that dressed up as Julia. <laughs> awesome. I hate the Evilist Chronicles. Um, the Jakoko Civil I War. I hate the Evilist Chronicles they say as they make an entire PowerPoint about the Evilist Chronicles. 247 slides. <laughs> oh my god. We are at slide 129. <laughs> Yeah, Ar Julia is Arena 5.0. Um, so what was the Jakoku Civil War? So Aluka and Gumilia were also involved in this war. The war was for the unification of Jakoku, and the war ended when the Tokugawa side winning over the Hatsune side. This is irrelevant to the story, but it shows the amount of detail Mothi puts into his worlds. <laughs> it's a new record. Just accept it. I Listen, I said this last time, I'll say it again. Just accept it. <laughs> Just it most deep dives is just a lot of nodding on my end, to be fair. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> you do get a gold star. You get a gold star, Cloak. You get a gold star. Uh, Yukina wrote a story about this. It'll come back technically later, but not really. It's just, a, it's just another thing. After she returned to Evilis, she ended up finding Grim the End, the Vessel of Wrath. Remember the key? Inside of the key was Seth Twyright, reincarnated as a demon of wrath. Oh god, he's back. He's back. Immediately. Th first slide in, he's back. <laughs> we couldn't get a fucking reprieve from this bitch. No, not at all. Alright, so Julia's going up in the world, though. So Seth, the snitch, explained to Julia everything he knew. Everything he knew. He explained that Aluka was not actually Aluka, but the goddess and god Levi and Behemo sharing her body. You know, <laughs> as it happens. Just, I'm so I can't wait to see the people who were here or and haven't caught up. You mean my mods, wait. except for except for cloaked? <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for all the people who did it who have no idea what's going on to start fucking typing in chat because this is gonna be so funny for me. Yeah. She also spent her free time around this time experimenting on Eve Moonlit's dormant spirit and created a court for Eve to conjure within her dimension in the Clockworkers doll. The court functions as a place of judgment to destroy the gods. That's a surprise tool that'll come back and help us later. I have a feeling I know when. Yeah! It's fine. Everything's fine. 
<laughs> Later, Julia reforged her identity to be Julia Abelard, and she amassed a huge fortune. She got an apprentice named Mairana Blossom, who is this bitch, it turns out. Um, who Julia taught about Aluka, the vessels of sin, and how to make various types of poison and magic. Um, Julia then created a criminal organization known as Pere Noel. If you remember, Pala Noel was one of the ghoul children. Well, I'm, I, okay, I'm sorry, I read ahead. What the fuck do you mean, first Santa Claus? <laughs> I'm getting to that! Never read ahead! <laughs> she took the name First Santa Claus and named, and named Mariana Why? Fourth Shadow. Mariana became a shadow leader for Peter Noel. She called herself First Santa Claus because the way that she would go around and getting people to like her in the town she was living in currently was that she would go around and give presents to children. Fine. And also, Peter Noel is another way of saying Santa Claus. I, see, I knew that, but I didn't want to, like, make, be like, what does Christmas have to do with any of this? It's always Christmas for me. <laughs> like, where does Christmas play a part in this? Listen, Matthew was just in a silly, goofy, festive mood. <laughs> Clearly. Outside of Better Noel, Julia began her plan to become the Lucifer Republic's president. <laughs> So she's entering her presidential state. <laughs> oh my god. They recruited a woman named Yuzette Aura into Peta Noel and had her make a contract with the Demon of Lust in order to gain the ability to change people's faces. Because remember, that's what happened with Venomania. Yeah. She became known as Seventh Magician. She's pretty important. We'll get back to her a lot as the story goes on. This was the Christmas special that's also lore relevant. <laughs> Exactly. You get it. You get it cloaked. Meanwhile, Aluka, again. So, <laughs> you know you know the face you get used to saying Aluka in? Forget the face, she has a new one. So Aluka and Gumelia had long since disappeared from public eye. So they decide to masquerade as Shaw Frieza's great-granddaughters who had recently passed. Shaw was Yukina's little brother. Who, okay. who if you recall, gained um, a... A slight okay. form of immortality at the end of Story wait, of Evil. Wait, wait, okay. I remember, because he, you said he had, like, eternal youth or whatever, right? Yes. So he looks like he's ten years old. I literally don't know how it works. <laughs> because that's concerning if he has great-granddaughters, because that means... No, because he, age, he, he ages just really, really fucking slowly, I think, because okay. Aluka, Aluka had to, like, twiddle in and be like... Mikaela, you can't just give people eternal youth because they ask nicely. <laughs> okay, I had to make sure because I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold, Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> but yeah, okay. um, Aluka is now going to be known as Hane Lore, <laughs> and Gumilia became a uh, Hidamari Lore, or Lore, depending on how you want to say it. Sounds. But yeah, basically Gumilia became a cop and she became a private investigator, d journalist lady. Damn, can't believe she can't- oh, damn. Yeah, I'm more that. worried about who's the partner was to get the children- Yeah, that's another question! <laughs> it's so- literally, I don't know why Mothi decided to make it so that Shaw lives so fucking long for no reason. <laughs> Listen, we had to jump over the incest hurdle a long while ago. Yeah. So, like, at this point, I'm not expecting shit. Just like, just my, like, <laughs> the standards, standards are low. The standards are on the ground. It happens. But Gumilia Hidamari became a police officer in Marlon, while Aluka Hane became a newspaper reporter in Elphagort. I hate saying that word. Oh, yeah, the incest hurdle. Just, just accept it. Don't question things you're not ready for the answers for. <laughs> Don't question things. <laughs> it happens. Listen, it's totally normal. It's <laughs> In this world, apparently, yeah. Um, so... They separate in order to search more thoroughly for Arena and the and the vessels of sin with their snoopy ass jobs. Little did they know that Eve Moonlit's Clockworkers doll was activated after the death of an infant named Margarita Felix. Thanks to Julia's interference, Eve lived as Margarita with the Felix family in Toragay. Margarita what? never. That's where they live. Okay. Okay. Which one? Wait. Which? 
Who is Julia again? Julia is Arena currently. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Why does this child matter? They did it. They just happened to die exactly when Arena was there, and she was like, "I have the Clockwork doll. I can make this work." I yeah, she was literally in the book. It explains that she was just like in the area visiting families, and when the Felix family lost their baby and their mother in the same day, she was like, "Ooh, they're they're mourning. They're vulnerable. I can just sneak in with my Clockworkers doll." And I think the Felixes are like descendants of like um, Mikulia, if you remember her, the Miku in um, Venomania's harem. So she was like, she's perfect. She, she could be the newest vessel for Eve Moonlit. So she she fucking barged in there with like, oh my god, you're mourning. Let me see your dead baby. Look, your baby's okay. Because she put Eve Moonlit's spirit into it. But Eve, because it's fucking Eve, she came out and she was like, I think I'm Margarita, actually. And forgot all of her past life again. And because she was not actually alive, Margarita never slept, and doctors could never explain it. They never considered the the, the, the the possibility that she was actually a corpse being possessed by the original sinner. So this is Margarita. All right. Bruno, Marlon, and Caspar. They're descendants oh, of Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> well, are, they, are they just as big of an asshole as their fucking... Yes! <laughs> They're worse! Um, why does being an asshole have to be genetic? <laughs> it runs in the family. <laughs> so, Shaw's aide was a man named Bruno Marlon. Him and Aluka were friends. Bruno Marlon was killed and replaced by a man originally... Oh yeah, he, that was the original Bruno, Bruno Marlon. And then a new guy came in called Kaidor Blankenheim. And killed Bruno Marlon and then took on his um, name and he became the new Bruno Marlon. Okay. So, so Kaidor had a had a brother named Carl and he and and Kaidor had a son named Caspar Blankenheim who is this Kaito right here that he left with Carl. <laughs> yeah, Bruno Mars is here now. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> Perfect. So after learning that Caspar was growing up to look exactly like him, he contracted he contacted Julia Abelard, aka for Santa Claus, to help him change his identity and start a new life. Seventh magician used his venom sword to change his face in exchange for the knowledge that the golden key was in his son's possession. Because Arena, remember, was still on the lookout for them. Okay. So Caspar then grew up to meet several potential marriage candidates over the years, as arranged by his father before he disappeared. And proposed to every single one of them because he's a playboy. Caspar uh, and Margarita were childhood friends. Caspar had promised Margarita they'd get married when they grew up. They did, but it was because Caspar was broke and the Felix family is all doctors, including Margarita. So Caspar was like, ooh, she's rich, and decided to marry her. God. Adoption arc! This shit is wild. Okay, so a few years before the wedding, so before Margarita and Caspar got married, oh, you have, you have, there you go. yeah, I went back to re refresh of who Caspar was. Julia had come across a man named Gat Coulomb and named him Sixth Venom and made him her right hand man in her political conquest. She next went to an orphanage and met the orphans, two of them being Lemmy and Wren. Woo! Lemmy is the latest reincarnation of Hansel. He's an irregular because, remember, Gretel is already with Bonica Conchita, so there's no yeah. more Gretel reincarnations. Oh, so, boy. Uh, Julia ended up adopting Lemmy, and he became known as Lemmy Abelard, the fifth piano, but she doesn't hire him till later. <laughs> as a child living in Julia's mansion, he touched the glass of Conchita and was possessed, not by Conchita, but by Ney, who I was just talking about. She was still living in the glass with her master Conchita, and she decided to go by Nay instead of Gretel, because she didn't want to reveal her identity just yet. Meanwhile, Rin was adopted by a man named Tom Corpa. All my homies hate Tom Corpa. Fuck awesome. that guy. Fuck that guy, he sucks. <laughs> uh... Who noticed she had a beautiful singing voice and took her to Seventh Magician to change her face and make her into a singing sensation because she was quote unquote ugly. Uh, 
The seventh magician made her face into into really Anne's, and she was known as Rinchan, the diva of Elphagort. Oh. Wait, wasn't that what Mikaela was called as well? No. Uh, she was okay, known. Okay. She was she. Well, she was known as the diva of Elphagort, but she was but not Rinchan, obviously. <laughs> no, that... no. Uh, Miku. From the... Yeah, Mikaela was the diva of Elphagort for a while. Okay. I'm... That I'm not completely losing my mind. I'm keeping track of shit. Yeah, you're being a very good good boy. You're being a good smart boy. Are you get a cookie? You'll get a cookie if I think you earn it by the end. Goddamn. <laughs> there we are. Reunion. Shortly after Mikaela and Caspar's why did I say Mikaela? That's that's supposed to be Margarita. Sorry. At <laughs> Thinking about her. I always, so I, I've always got Mikaela on the brain. I love her so much. <laughs> so, shortly after um, Margarita and Caspar's wedding, Julia had taken Lemmy to the theater where, she, where they saw Rin Chan's debut. And Lemmy was confused about how that was Rin's voice, but not her face. Mikaela was too good for this world. You're so right, Kettle. You're so fucking right. She was taken too soon from us. I loved her. <laughs> I miss her all the time. Julia was confused as to why she looked exactly like Rilly Ann, however. Also, one of, Rin, uh, one of Rin Chan's most dedicated fans was Hidamari, who often skipped out on work to attend her concerts over the next few years. Because, oh as always, even with Gumilia, all cops are bastards and bad at their job. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Even can't have shit in evil lists. <laughs> Ah oh, shit, is that the cop at the Rin Chan concert? <laughs> oh, so Caspar's a criminal. <laughs> awesome. So, meanwhile, Caspar and Margarita were having a failing marriage. Even though Margarita loved Caspar, he really only married her for her wealth and political reasonings. He, in fact, approached by Mariana Blossom, who was going under the alias Aluka in order to frame Aluka and hide her true identity. Yeah, he the body was Gumilia. Okay. Um, and so Mariana Blossom, remember, um, Julie, Ari, uh, Julie, Julia, aka Arena 5.0's right hand man, um, is going under the alias of Aluka. So Aluka offered for Caspar to join Petit Noel as a black market dealer, and he agreed for earnings in exchange to hand over Grim the end. He became known as Second Dealer. Eventually, Caspar got Margarita involved as well, and she became known as Third Sleep Princess. The two remade the mansion's basement into a drug den where they experimented on creating creative, curative medicines and energy tonics. So we're on the we're on the uh, drug arc. <laughs> I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm keeping my mouth shut. If you if you talk, no, get off! <laughs> We already have a dream SMP reference. <laughs> no, my rent uh, zero days since last dream SMP. At least it wasn't me this time. At, At least... least it wasn't me. <laughs> I hate it here, Keto. You were the chosen one. <laughs> I was keeping my mouth shut. <sighs> At least it wasn't homestuck. True. Thank God. God. Just wait. Reset the board. I gotta reset the board. No, Kettle! No, this is your first day here! <laughs> there are tears in my eyes. Alright, Julia's Me inauguration too. arc. Because now we're- what? I, I, in case you forgot, this is now a political story about becoming the president. So this is Lamanberg! No! <laughs> clip that. Clip this. No! Clip this right now. I'm gonna throw myself out the window. I'm on the second floor. I could do it. <laughs> this is so funny. I was, gonna, see, I was gonna say something when you first mentioned the president arc, I, but I was like, nah, I don't need to. But then you mentioned the drug dead. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I love always circles back to evilest orgy recipe, and it's every, le everywhere. <laughs> You're welcome. Tears in my eyes. D tears running down my face. Good lord. Alright, in EC609, Margarita and Caspar were given the task of converting sap of the Millennium Tree into medicine. Remember, that's Mikaela's tree. The stress of the job started getting to Caspar, who starts to suffer from insomnia. 
August 15th of that year, Hidamari was assigned to investigate an attack on the deputy mayor. August 18th, Julia was elected president and gave her inauguration speech while Lemmy was in attendance. She threw a party in the Luciferian so, Palace. Yes. Okay, so just to be sure I'm getting this right. Yes. The evil motherfucker who wants to collect all the, the god the, with the two gods inside them. He just elected into president. No, no, no. That was a Luca. Oh, oh, yes, you're right. Aluka is the good, the bad one. Got it. Yeah. So Aluka's the Aluka. No, Aluka's the good one. Arena's the bad one. Okay. Who has the two? Okay. We okay. Okay. Aluka. <laughs> Aluka has the two gods inside of her, and only Olivia is is awake, and Levia thinks she is Aluka. Arena is the one who is in love with her brother, who wants to like basically use the vessels of sin to destroy Aluka. Got it. And take over Got the world. It. Okay. So we are happy that Julia is president. No, right? we're sad because Julia's the arena. Fuck. Okay. We don't. <laughs> I'm trying so hard, Chai. You have to understand that I really am trying to get this all straight in my head. Okay. Le let me. Let me. Let me put it very simply for you. Okay. So Aluka, good. She has two gods in her. Arena, bad. She's the incest one. She's. <laughs> Arena, okay. they're both like for the vessels of sin. Are Arena for good reasons. Aluka for bad reasons. Uh, 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 fuck, Aluka for good <laughs> Schindler said over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Aluka good. Arena bad. Aluka has two goods. Aluka has two gods inside of her. <laughs> See, I think my problem is I. <laughs> I because I remember Livia and uh, both be 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 whatever fuck the other dude. Behemo. Behemo. Because I, I remember them causing problems on purpose. So I was like, oh, so they're the bad gods. And then. What, the yes, however, remember, Levia has amnesia and thinks that she is a Luca, so she's doing good things now. Awesome. So I'm Julia, trying. Julia right now is Arena 5.0, and Arena is the one trying to kill a Luca and take over the world, really. Which okay, means so Julia's arena. Yes. So Julia's arena. So this is bad. It's bad that she has power yeah. now. Got, Got it? it. Got it. I think so. Cool. I can you tell I'm trying? Please you are. Uh, you are, and I understand. It's a lot. There's a lot of name changes. We took like a two week break. <laughs> it's okay. a lot. All right, so <clears throat> August 18th, she was she threw a party in Luciferian Palace. Rin, uh, Rin Chan put on a performance during the party, and Lemmy pointed out that Rin's voice was no longer her own. Bruno Marlon then pointed out that Ton was notorious for adopting underage girls, turning them into performers, then having those girls die under mysterious circumstances. Oh boy. This is and this is because Tan had overworked Rin to the point of her losing her voice and she had to lip sync over the sound of a Natsuma girl's voice. He couldn't put a Natsuma girl on the stage because she would get hate crimed. Oh, there's that sprinkle of racism. See, there's yeah, there's the little sprinkle of racism. I told you it would show up. <laughs> Meanwhile, August 24th, Margarita starts experimenting on turning gift poison into an airborne pathogen. Sure. Also, you have to understand this entire time, Margarita thinks that she's helping. Mm. Stop with the jersey references! <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Not the <laughs> let's be the <laughs> bad guys, please! Also, uh oh, rut row. <laughs> <laughs> August 30th, after toiling away to create the perfect gift to cure her husband of sleeplessness, Margarita mixed her creation into some jam and gifted it to Caspar and his mistress. The I next morning, mistress. he's been cheating on her throughout their entire relationship. Got it. Awesome. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Caspar is a notorious cheater and playboy. He, he would bring, like, three, four girls over at a time and just, like, have, like... <laughs> raging orgies and like lock margarita out of the house guys guys we need to make a path that no kaito kaito should remain bitchless <laughs> bitchless if you're kaito remain bitchless by default it's how we keep the universe balanced See, this shit that happens down here at the bottom of the slide is <laughs> is why we should keep him bitchless 
<laughs> no, you're not dumb. It's just confusing on purpose because Mothy hates his audience. <laughs> Mothy hates. His no one hates their audience more than Mothy. <laughs> he wants us to suffer. So, uh, the next morning after they ate the jam, Caspar and his mistress were dead. The world police arrived to investigate, but couldn't find, could find no signs of Margarita had anything to do with it because of Bruno Marlon's interference because, uh, Julia heard about the fact that this bitch was dead and she was like, we cannot let people think that Margarita did it because that'll mess up our whole organization. So Bruno Marlon was sent to interfere with the police investigation. Nice. August 31st, that same day, Caspar was found dead. Uh, Hane had, had scheduled an interview with Julia Abelard where she asked about the town and if Julia had ever heard anything about Yukina Frieza's missing manuscript of the original story of the Flower of the Plateau. Uh, she also noted that creepy red buildings in town. There, Hane learned of the existence of gift poison that originates from the cow ground where Mikulia was from. Hana then visited a library where she found the flower of the plateau. After threatening the librarian, she learned of Caspar's involvement with Pet and Noel. Got it. Visiting Torigay, Hana ar arrived to investigate the Pet and Noel after visiting Dr. Marks Felix, Margarita's father. She couldn't find much and returned to visit Shaw. Through Shaw, she learned that Pet and Noel was led by a woman and that someone was going around calling themselves a Luca Clockworker. Hane, the real Luca Clockworker, returned to Toenike to investigate further and learned that the Frieza's foundation was partially responsible for not investigating further into Caspar's murder. Around this time, Margarita had developed Fifth Gift, and on September 18th, she used it on her father, who told her to stop communicating with Aluka. Quotation marks. She wanted to help him sleep as well. During Caspar's funeral, Hane finally saw Margarita and her semblance to Mukulia and burst into laughter and got kicked out of the funeral. <laughs> Amazing. That is very true. Kodaka did make a $60 game talking about how much he hates his fan base. So that is true. <laughs> so I so in the scale of who hates their fucking fans, I would say Kodaka number one, but Mothy's pretty high up there. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we got ads! We got ads! It looks like somebody isn't subscribed to Chai the Chew on Twitch.tv! Couldn't be me! Couldn't be me, because I'm not subscribed to myself, because I can't! <laughs> Imagine having ads. Huge sadness. Big L. Big L, yeah, truly. If only, there, if only there was a way for you to get ads with, without paying. Imagine <laughs> Imagine if there's such a thing called Imagine if there's a thing called Prime Sub which you can use for free. Free? Free. I think you should forgive Arena because Julia is so free. That's just Jermaine's body. That doesn't count. <laughs> Amazing. Goodness. Alright, imagine getting kicked out of the funeral. Huge L. Hanna stayed in Torrigay, pretending to be there to write an article about Caspar. Margarita and Hanna spoke about the history of a Luca clockworker. Hanna discussed Margarita's odd birth and her sleeplessness with local doctors. As Hanna continued investigating in Torrigay, Julia had Mariana move the organization into her mansion in Collaground. I don't have Amazon Prime. You gave me your money and I appreciate it. And I love you so dearly, my beloved Delphi. Mwah, my favorite Ender Boy. Don't tell Eden he'll kill me again in Minecraft. <laughs> and Julia also learned of Aluka and Gumilia's uh, aliases as Hane and Hida Marie, and ordered Bruno dispose of them so that he can take over his son's position as second dealer. Because remember, Bruno was Caspar's real dad. No, oh, don't tell Eden. He'll kill me again. I have levels. It's Our, me. It's him. It's him. He's a court jester like me. Exactly. Oh my god. Did I just find your new kin? I will fight you. How, did, you... That is... <laughs> How did you accidentally set your currency in yen? How did you do that? <laughs> That's really How? Funny. I don't know. <laughs> Le 
Let me, Mila, want to save Rin. October 6th, let me put down a clown costume and put on a clown costume and infiltrated the Corpa estate and headed towards where he heard Rin Chan crying. With Nay's voice guiding him in the dark, he found Rin locked in her room. He unlocked the door with Grim the End, which he just casually found. He just found it in his mom's room and just like took it with him. Because he's just a little boy. He's just a little boy. And and Rin Chan let him know that Tan was going to kill her as she wore as she wore out her use to him, as he already killed the Netsuma girl. Oh God! Yeah, you know the sprinkle of racism. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy, possessed by Nei, then murdered Tan and essentially kidnapped Rin Chan and brought her to Torge. In Torge, the two spoke, and and Rin explained that the seventh magician had changed her face to look like Princess Rillian's. After some time bonding together, they ended up in Calground. Lemmy gets hired! Woo! Woo! Cheer for him. He's employed at the ripe age of like 10. <laughs> God damn. Good for him. He's been applied. He's been employed. Lemmy and Rin went inside Mariana's mansion and were met with Julia, who had anticipated he'd show up after hearing that Ton was found dead. Tor gay. More like Tor gay. Get it? Because it's this gay in it? <laughs> Get it? I'm funny. Julia then praised uh, Lemmy for killing Ton and hired him on as her as the new fifth piano in Pete Noel. Julia told him Pete Noel was fighting for the greater good and doing what the police refused to do. Nay, in Lemmy's head, was against joining Pete Noel, but Lemmy shot her down and agreed. Lemmy was given his next target by Julia, the seventh magician, who had helped out in Rin's abuse. Rin, meanwhile, is left to live in Mariana's basement freely, though. She just kind of lives there now. Not a kidnap one. She just kind of lives there now. <laughs> Fair enough. Julia also let Lemmy know his mother was a prostitute who had abandoned him, and he began to hate prostitutes and murdered all the prostitutes oh, enrolled. Damn he, it. He came across while looking for the seventh magician. These serial killings would go on for months. We got him. We turned him into Jack the Ripper. We did. We did. Look what you did. You fucked him a perfectly good boy. You fucked it all up. Meanwhile, with Luca and Gumelia, so ignoring the prostitute killings, because that shit was fucked up, um, Hidamari was searching for uh, Rin Chan's kidnapper and trying to get her idol back because remember, she's the biggest stan. She ended up in Torage, where Lemmy and Rin were last spotted, and she ended up meeting with Hane again. The two consulted a doctor about a red liquid that Margarita had left behind with Hane a day prior. And Hane came to the conclusion that Margarita was behind poisoning Caspar and Dr. Felix. Meanwhile, to further test and perfect her, quote-unquote, medicine, Margarita administered an airborne poison to orphans and her midwife, Rita Flan, in a charity institute hoping to help them sleep. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, as you do, October 17th, the orphans and Rita had died to the poison. No shit. The same day, shop priests had also fucking died. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her gifts that she's been making have been poisons, if you haven't been following. And they yes. killed all the- and she killed all the orphans and her old midwife that actually kind of raised her, really. So it's a double whammy. And October 17th, the orphans and Rita had died, and the same day Shaw freezes had also died. Hana and Hidamari attended Shaw's funeral, only to be arrested after Bruno Marlon blamed them for the Charity Institute poisoning, even though they weren't even fucking there. Margarita, I need to preface this extremely well, Margarita is completely delusional. She has no idea what she's doing. She doesn't know, what, she doesn't know who she is, where she is, what she's doing. She truly believes that she's helping. She truly, genuinely believes that she's helping. Which is the even more fucked up part. She's just quirky like that. She's just built different. She's just built different. Um, while in prison, the two mages discussed Margarita definitely being the culprit and decided to stop being in disguises and go by their real names once more. My god. More deaths, my god. Margarita, <coughs> Margs, please, bestie, honey, this isn't you. <laughs> Margarita continued her poison work as the airborne toxins spread through Torge to the point where the area had to be quarantined and sealed away. She, meanwhile, hid away in 
Aluka, so Mariana's, mansion with a new lab on the second floor. The real Aluka and Gamelia had rushed to the hospital where Dr. Felix was still in comatose state and witnessed his final words about a strange doll involved in his murder attempt. He then died. Rip. <laughs> Oh seven, truly. The duo made their way back to Torigay and met up with Julia. Mariana, obsessed with pleasing Julia, had long since transformed her face and body to look exactly like Germaine, aka Julia, aka Irina. Gumelia then questioned Julia about the fifth piano's whereabouts, and Julia let her know that he was already gone. It was only Rinchen in the house. The three battled, and Aluka realized that Julia had no cat, so she must have been Mariana the whole time. Gulia Gumelia entangled Mariana in thorny roses and tore her body apart. So Mariana's dead now. <laughs> okay. You know, as you do. I hate this. Bye bye, alcohol girl. <laughs> so two? Yeah, she's about to go too. So Aluka and Gumelia ran up the stairs to where Margarita was about to drink her seventh iteration of the gift poison. Aluka demanded her to craft an antidote to the poison, but she insisted that she was saving them as the sleep princess. Aluka tried to explain that her mind was just corrupted by the demon of sloth, but Margarita only laughed and admitted that she was starting to remember all of Eve's memories and that all she wanted to do was to be human and finally sleep. She drank the gift and collapsed. Aluka and Gumelia attempted to save her life by, by making her throw it up, but she began to die and, ex and excited to finally be able to sleep. Before dying, she resolved to meet up with her prince, Adam, once again. Remember Adam? Ah! Yeah. Remember her twin brother who she married and fucked? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It, here's the incest hurdle, guys. Yeah, remember that part? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it so cool? <laughs> Because, okay, because Mothy hates me. <laughs> That's why. <sighs> Margarita then passed away and Eve woke up in the clockworker's doll. Yeah, but I don't, I don't fucking know. But Eve's dead now. Well, not really. Margarita's dead. Flash warning that we finally get the song. Please. It should be great. It's a good song. Please, why? Ah, uh, no, full screen. Yeah, I fixed it. Everything's fine now. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm a tech wizard. It's a good song, though. I'm so glad I can hear this one. Oh, so yeah, I, I have to say again. Flash warning. There is a flash warning. The, the 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 PV flash is a lot. So this is your five second warning. Four, three, two, one. And the song's like five minutes long, but yeah. Hi, Hi Emily. Emily! Oh good, they we were just, we've just been shit talking Kaito this whole time. That's yeah, our favorite do. activity. Okay, it's flash. I love this song though, it's so good. There's there's Kaito's character. Motherfucker! Is Kaito still alive? No, he died a while ago, Bestie. <laughs> Also, huge shout out to uh, Mario G Gabriel because they make a bunch of the PVs that include a lot of the images from the manga so that you can understand or at least point out the characters a lot easier. Yeah. G God bless him, he does, the he does the Lord's work. He truly does. <laughs> Also, I said this. I said this to Colleen. And I said this. To, I said this to Ashley too. When I finished the deep dive PowerPoint, do you want to know what fucking happened? Mafi released a new novel. <laughs> I've never been so sad in my life. He released a he released a new novel for pre-order. It was they texted you texted me last night, and I'm just like, oh god. 
He's watching. Three days ago, that novel got released for pre-order, and it's about the original Sin story, so shit that I already covered and I thought that I finished. They were waiting for me to be done! There's, there's, there's Hane, there's Luca. Yeah, it's another original Sin story. It's apparently a sequel, so I guess it's gonna go over more confusing details. I love it here. Oh, I love this song so much. Should I? What should I do at 200 followers? I don't know. Thinking. Should that one be the Sonic Unleashed one? Oh my god. Shadow the Hedgehog. <gasps> Wait! <laughs> at 200, should I do Shadow the Hedgehog? Because <laughs> I wanted the Conquer Project one. That one doesn't need to be. Oh, that could be. Oh, I do love Project Eva. I already have. I'll just do that willingly, honestly. 200 can just be willingly. But it has to. I, I want y'all to earn me playing Shadow the Hedgehog. Y'all gotta earn that shit. <laughs> This song is so good. I just, I'm so, I'm, I have no words. It's just such a good song. Yeah. I missed out on all of it. I was just, thinking, I'm so sorry, Miko. I was just thinking about Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's like that fucking meme. It's like, sorry, babe, come back to bed. I can't I'm talking about Shadow the Hedgehog. Fuck, that's so hot. <laughs> Use the shadow of the cut on the Chai Twitch channel. Exactly, exactly. Shadow the Hedgehog outside of Eclairs is my aesthetic. <laughs> That's my whole aesthetic, if I'm gonna be real. <laughs> Who the fuck is messaging me? Got it. Yay. Yay! Oh, this this whole part is just like Aluka and Gumelia checking out the area and be like, oh, we should go check out uh, Julia next because Julia is behind everything here. You gotta find out who the fuck that Julia person is. Next. Whoops. Whoopsies. Whoops. Ooh. Oopsie doopsies! With Margarita and Mariana dead, Luca and, went, and Luca and Gumilia went to the basement where they found Rin Chan and quickly rescued her. Rin was afterwards taken in by Gat Colomb and then later moved to, Lem, to Lemmy's nanny's little sister's home and chose to stay out of the public eye for so long. I don't know why they went through such lengths. <laughs> it's Lemmy's nanny's little sister's home. Um, Luca then got separated. stabbed by six venom aka gat and was rushed to the hospital uh after recovery yeah. the duo returned to Torgate, only to find that 72 pe only 72 people survived by hiding in the basement in the blakenheim mansion luke and gumilia returned to the millennium tree to ask Michaela for her sap in order to create a better antidote for gift there luke noticed eve in the clockworkers doll walking around and it headed towards the moonlit residence luke went to go confront her Doll walking around. Yeah, there was just a whole ass doll walking around, and Luca was like, mm, "That looks like something I have to investigate by myself." <laughs> Better go check that shit out by myself, by Gumilia. <laughs> hey, hey, chat, hey, chatters, hey, chatters. If you see a doll walking around on its two little feet by itself, run away. <laughs> don't deal with that don't nonsense. Don't be a don't be a little don't be a little white girl in the forest. Just run away. Just go the other direction. That shit ain't worth it. It's not worth it. I'm just telling you right now. It's not worth it. 
Um, Luca spoke to the doll alone and realized that Eve had replaced the real Margarita Felix when the baby had died and was able to use hypnosis as a demon of sloth to convince everyone of it. Eve notes that even she fell for it and believed that she was Margarita. Eve admits to Aluka about how she was Mikuli in the Flower Plate Plateau, how she was Platonic the Thief, and how Arena had made her body to simulate Mikulias. Aluka grabbed the doll by the neck and absorbed Eve's spirit into her own body, musing how Aluka wanted humanity to, to develop on its own without interference of mages and demons. Doing this, she accidentally woke up her own memories but th that she was not the real Aluka, but she was instead Livy, a Barasol! <gasps> Gasp! Everyone gasped! <laughs> I know. Who could have seen this coming? Except for me, because I wrote this. <laughs> Levy, a barisol! Gasp. <laughs> Gasp for. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am, I'm not going to make fun of your typos. I love you. <laughs> Gasp. I know. Uh, she decided to live in denial for that for now and continued her research for Pan Noel's leader and even used hypnosis to have Gumilia forget that she had absorbed Eve into her body. The Bearsel's child's an only child! How could that be? There's a. What if there's a hit song about it? Who could have guessed it? Whoa. This fucking loser. <laughs> Gakapo always plays the saddest motherfucker. Kaito always, Kaito always plays the biggest bitch. Gakpo always plays the biggest fucking loser. <laughs> God. Gat returned to Julia to talk about how he had failed to get the Clockworkers doll and also how he almost killed Aluka. Julia yelled at him and told him there was no one to kill Aluka but her. She told him to weed her garden as punishment. She continued to read in her newspaper about how the cure for gift was found and that Bruno had become the vice president of the Freezes Foundation. No, not not my man's loser. <laughs> A pathetic wet napkin of a man. <laughs> 4.5? This is all about Pen and Noel, so I made it a 4.5. What the fuck is happening? You know, shit. Shit be going. I'm so Cloaked, I'm sorry that you're, you're a little meow meows, just a fucking loser. I'm so sorry you're, you don't have better taste than meow meows. <laughs> just putting it out there. <laughs> Due to exerting herself, I think, Aluka's legs started to give out and she was confined to a wheelchair. Gumelia and Aluka returned to Lucifania and found out that Lemmy was still on the loose and killing prostitutes enrolled and that his target would be the seventh magician, Yuzette Aura, and that she had the Venom Sword. The two made their way to the brothel she worked at and hypnotized everyone into believing that Aluka and Gumelia were the owners. We <laughs> had those axles stands. Hey, I can admit that our meow meows are pathetic. You're in denial. <laughs> I can admit that Axel Kingdom Hearts is a pathetic, sad, wet napkin of a man. <laughs> I can admit that with my whole ass chest. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> On February 11th, Lemmy appeared at the brothel and found Yuzette. She attempted to use the Venom Sword to brainwash him, but Nate took control of his body and helped him murder her. <laughs> Aluka, who witnessed this, rolled into, the ro rolled into the room and hypnotized Lemmy into believing that she was the third sleep princess and to take her to meet Julia. He agreed and brought her to Gumilia and brought her and Gumilia to Julia despite Nate's protests. And also, let me just say, Nay, for some reason in this book, is just so the only one with a brain cell. Truly. God, that's great. She's like, hey, why would the third sleep princess be all the way enrolled and just, like, come to you and also be owning a brothel? Is that so weird? And Lemmy's like, shut the fuck up, Nay. I gotta take this bitch to my mommy. <laughs> Oh my god. She also spends the entire book just roasting the shit out of Lemmy for having mommy issues. <laughs> yeah, it's Len's character. <laughs> Prim only I raised. Had a pick. I clearly wasn't caught. <laughs> That's so Kyle fucking big. Brain cell. Kyle, Kyle lost brain cell privileges a long time ago. Lies and truths. Aluka lies to Julia where they when they meet, telling her he, that she's really Margarita possessing Aluka's body and that she hypnotized Gumelia as well. After hearing that, Aluka and Gumelia are appointed to become the new seventh magician and eighth sniper in Petit Noel. Three months later, Julia met with Bruno, who told Lemmy to kill the other vice president of the Freezes Foundation. 
Nob Nicole, which is an ugly ass name. <laughs> I hate it. Fucking Nob Nicole, I just kill myself. <laughs> yeah, really. Levy was very excited as he felt like he was getting great at killing for his mom. Uh, Kyle didn't have a single thought when Michaela had to tell him that she's a lesbian like three times and he still didn't give up. He doesn't even give up when he's like dying. He doesn't give up when he's an old man. He's like, man, I miss Michaela. And he sh and it's like, bro, she was gay. A whole lesbian. She was a whole ass lesbian. He was like, man, we could have had something. And it's like, no, you couldn't have. You're a whole ass man. Oh my God. I, I hated him so fucking much. May take the hit. He never did. Mik Mikaela in one of the chapters explains to him just like she's in love with Clarith. Like he explained to her, he explains to her what love is, and she's like, "Oh, that's how I feel about Clarith. I'm in love with Clarith." And he doesn't take the hint. He's like, "Man, that's crazy, girl boss, girl. I love girl pals, gal pals. Do you want to be married?" <sighs> He's so pathetic. Mikael then after like, kissing women and Kyle thinking he can shoot a shot in the next one. <laughs> the, the most pathetic little meow meow of a man. I hate him. He's not e he's not even a meow meow in a good way. He's just sad. He's just annoying. The worst. There's another part where Clarith also explains that she's in love with Mikaela and they're t and they're together. Like they're trying to get together. And he still doesn't take the hint. <laughs> Like, uh, these ladies literally drew him a fucking detailed ass roadmap. <laughs> and he still got lost. <laughs> he threw away the map because it got too confusing. <laughs> lesbians, I, no! He's like, lesbians? In my kingdom? Impossible. Never happened before. It's, uh, he's so stupid. He's so fucking stupid. If I think about him too much, I'm gonna start getting angry. So, three months later, Julia, blah, 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 Nob Nicole, May 23rd, Lemmy put on his costume and prepared to murder Nob during a government meeting. Before he could, investigators burst down the doors and kidnap Bruno Marlon for being suspected of being Cador Blackenheim. He was. Julia motioned at Lemmy to kill Bruno, but he didn't want to. Bruno got taken away, and Julia's presidency started to be in jeopardy. Bruno got taken to Castle Hedgehog, it's back, and to be tortured no! for information. <laughs> and never oh, went- no! What? Wait, no, my headphones are unplugged. Don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. <laughs> what was the question? Why does why does Castle Hedgehog have to keep showing up? It's, what is the important? It's Lord important! Castle? It's Lord important! It's an oh, important why? building in Evilis. So stupid. What's wrong with Castle Hedgehog, which no. had Princess Sonica Sonic? <laughs> In case you forgot, in case you forgot, Krypton, the company behind um, Miku, Len, Rin, all of them, is owned by Sega. <laughs> in case you forgot. <laughs> shitting me. No, I'm not shitting you. That's why all the Project Diva games are released by Sega. There are... <laughs> Guys! <laughs> Guys, guys, there's 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 Sonic costumes in Project Diva games. <laughs> Serious, like they 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 work together often. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the silence. <laughs> the stun. The Kali was too stunned to speak. I that meme I said that Delphi lovingly made that I sent in the Discord. <laughs> That more often. <laughs> wait, wait, what meme? Oh, you didn't see it? It's in, it's in the Discord. It's like, it's <laughs> <not> like... <laughs> not a single thought behind these eyes. Not, not, not a single thought. You need, whenever I, I, you need to save that, and whenever I have like a stunned silence moment, you just need to flash that on screen. I should, I should. It's really good. Hey guys, join the Discord. Hey besties. Hey girl boss, pussy, uh, pussy queen slays. You should join the Discord. Mods, mods, plug the Discord. Mods, mods, quickly. <laughs> Before the moment is gone. <laughs> 
There we go! Okay, well, <laughs> Colleen got to it first. God damn. Ah. <laughs> anyway, so, um, rumors of Julia's involvement in Pet and Noel began to circulate. Lemmy's life low key starts to fall apart. <laughs> Good. How dare you? It's. A it's okay, Delphi, you can do the Twitter. Delphi, you can do the Twitter. Delphi, you can do the Twitter. It's okay. You got this. All right. Lemmy's life is low-key fall apart. Um, after several assassination attempts on Julia's life, she... Uh, there we go, Delphi! Woo! After several assassination attempts on Julia's life, she sent Lemmy away to live at an inn in September of that year. September 2nd, he was approached by Eluka Gumilia, who offered to take him away as they planned to turn run away to Jakoku soon. Luca also revealed to him that she wasn't really the third sleep princess. Lemmy was given until midnight to decide. He chose to confess everything to Luca and told him to Jul and confess everything Luca told him to Julia after having a dream about Banika Conchita and Gretel. Lemmy returned to the brothel to try and catch Luca and Gumilia before they disappeared, but it was too late. A few weeks later, he learned that Six Venom had killed Bruno, and Vin Chan was also being questioned about Julia's involvement with Penn and Noel. So, like, all of his life is just falling apart right now. Rip. Zoinks. <laughs> yes? I was about to say, that's what you get for being a fucking... Sex for a fucking... Jack the Ripper. Yeah. So, uh, Lemmy grew obsessed with the idea of protecting his mother from her enemies. From early October to d to December, he began his killing streak, which included killing people such as Elman Oddbang, Isidore Angel, and Jean Marcel. People who don't matter, but they're dead now. December 26th, however, when he targeted investigator Ein Anker, Lemmy was shot and left to bleed out by Gumilia and Aluka, who told him he deserved this ending after going down the path of evil. Julia had a funeral for him. Aww. So Lemmy's dead. Can we get some 07s for our little boy? For our little guy? 07s for, 07 for this bitch. 07s for, for little Lemmy. He was like maybe 13. <laughs> but wait, there's more! Woo! Uh, Julia learned the magician was actually a Luca, and she sent a letter to a Luca for her to meet at Mary God Plateau in Elphagor. She left the glass conchita at Lemmy's grave and spare change of clothes because she knew that he'd eventually revive himself and crawl his way out of the earth. Wild, I know, but it's because contractors with vessels of sin can't die normal ways. Remember, she knew he'd come back. He's not dead yet. At Mary God Plateau, Julia, no, Arena, waited for Aluka's arrival with her clockworker's doll. January 29th, Aluka and Gumilia made her their way to the plateau where Aluka broke I'm just, the... Yes? I'm just saying that the fact that I'm just noticing that we have exact dates for these things. Yeah! And I try to get a little concerned about the fact that we have exact dates for shit. Mothi spares no details. <laughs> Because we didn't have, like, the exact dates last time, I don't think. Not like this. I didn't include them. We did have dates before, though. The reason I didn't include a lot of exact dates is because a lot of them were either not very specific or they weren't occurring at the same time. Like, in this part, because every event happens so close within each other, I use the dates to know which part to put in before the other. Because, like, some of the events occur, like, a day before the others. I need to make sure the continuity was correct. But yeah, January 29th, Aluka and Gumilia made their way to the plateau where Aluka broke the hypnosis on Gumilia and explained Arena's true identity. Along the way, they killed Six Venom and took, took his groom at the end to meet with Arena. So Gats is dead now. Rip to that guy, I guess. And I just was the specific timeline would look. I would cry if I had to make that. I would just sob. Let me wake up. You fucked up big time. So let me wake oh, up. No. Let me wake up and digs his way back to the surface with all his injuries full, having fully regenerated by now. Nay explained how that he was alive now and could go see his mother at her duel. He changed it into the clothes Arena left behind and ran to Mary God Plateau. There he saw Aluka Gumilia and Arena locked in magical combat in Palo Noel's tomb. If you forgot, Palo Noel was one of Seth Twilight's clones, the serial killer. Yes. Several hours of fighting later, Arena screamed while she watched Gumilia shoot Lemmy with a golden bullet and fuse the Grim the end, and Lemmy is killed for real this time. 07's for real this time. <laughs> oh my god. 
As she cried over his body, she was swiftly defeated as well and gave up Jermaine's body and returned to her cat form. Remember how her cat form had a black box in it? No. Too bad, because she uses that black box to erase Aluka's false memories and self-destruct and bringing everyone in into Levia's inner psychological world. What the fuck? <laughs> Hi, Jane. What the fuck does that mean? So, what the fuck? Okay, so, 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 so. The black box. It explodes. So she uses the black box to suck in all of Luca's false memories of. Thank you for the hydrate, Jay. I'm hydrating. <laughs> We're going brain mode, boys. We're entering our brain mode, boyos. I hydrated. You should hydrate too, Coley. This is for both of us. I, I've been hydrating. But Good. I've, like, I've, I've pulled, like, I almost died with the smart water. Epic. So, we're going big brain mode. So, yeah, so she uses the bo the box to absorb all of, Luke, all of Luca's memories of her being a Luca because those are false memories. The uh, s same black box Banik Banika was in the st start of Story of Evil? I believe so. I believe so. No, because this is the box that specifically is inside of, the, inside of Arena's doll form. Inside of her little cat doll form. Because Seth had put together a cat plushie and a black box. And she's using that black box. Um, and she observes all the Lucas false memories. And then it explodes. And she explodes. And they enter Levia's like, inner psychological dimension. How? Nobody knows. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Welcome back. <laughs> so, Lemmy's ending. While everyone else was in, was in Levia's mind dimension, Lemmy woke up in the afterlife in Banika's mansion in the Glass of Conchita's dimension. He started to remember his memories of being Hansel and met Banika, who he assumed was Julia. Banika showed him a glimpse of the outside world and showed him Julia sobbing over his dead body, and when he realized he was dead... Arte called him Boyo, which triggered all of his memories at once of his past lives. He then rejoined Banika as her servant alongside his sister. Oh. And then we took a Banika again for a while, so enjoy the two seconds that you have. Moving on. <laughs> so where are we? Great question. We're inside of Levia's mind. <laughs> Behemo reawakens, and now Behemo, Levia, Gumelia Arena, and Eve Moonlit Spirits all stood in front of the Levia Behemo Temple inside of Levia's mind. So they're all here. The gang's all here. <laughs> Irina explains how she learned that Aluka was really Levia and a sleeping Behemo sharing a body all along, and Levia regained all of her memories. Arena then declared her, inten her intention to destroy everything, including Levi and Behemo, and revealed Eve to be the master of the court and had her summon said court. So I would like I'm just too much. They're just they're, so basically uh, they're in Levia's head, and Arena's like, I want to kill you and everyone in the world. Also, Eve Moonlit can summon a court to to kill you. Okay. So that's what they're doing. And then, so, remember how I said there were four endings and there's, like, the masters? So we have Master of the Court, Eve Moonlit. That's, that one's revealed. So she's bringing trial with everyone receiving harsh judgment. The harsh judgment being execution, basically. Because no one is Yay. worthy in her eyes. Yay! We got two out of the four! Woo! Before Irina could use the new stage of the court to her advantage, Banika Conchita appeared to interrupt the fight with a giant world eater skeleton man. I forgot Banika comes back for this final battle. She's back again, guys! The wife! My wife! She's back! What do you mean? What do you mean by world eater skeleton man? <laughs> so do you remember Eater? That man named Eater? Who was Lich's friend? Okay. <laughs> so Banika has four servants. Arte, Pollo, Lich, and Eater. Eater is just a very large man, and he can turn into a giant skeleton man. And the, and and when he's skeleton man form, its its name is World Eater. See. Yes. Do I know how it works? No. Do I know why it happens? No. And you want to know why I don't know? Because it's never been fucking explained. Awesome, we love that. Thanks, Mafi. Also, hold on, because the song got released like two months ago that I didn't know existed. So this is a new ass song. Lich and Mikaela were siblings. What? They were siblings. 
so lich the guy that made um arth so rin and so really and alan's uh mud body like their mud dad he made their he made his mud body and lich and Mikaela were fucking siblings because lich was also a bird <laughs> The That's same as Mikaela. I didn't fucking yeah. know that until like last night, and I was like, I hate it here. I hate it here. Amazing. But yeah, I'm gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> Don't. I'm trying my best here. Um. Uh, da, 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 no, you'll see the sexy lady later. So this interference resulted in a large explosion that made Arena, Levia, and Eve's souls fuse together into a, Lu a Luca Clockworker's body. Gumelia was lost in the blast, not killed, lost, as if she ended up waking up in the Hellish Yard, alongside Behemo. In the Hellish Yard, she learned she learned that with no master of the Hellish Yard, anyone could walk their way into heaven. Gumelia tried to follow Behemo into the Heavenly Yard, but could not as she was still alive. She learned that Levia used to be the master of the Hellish Yard, and according to Behemo, a miasma would eventually cause her physical body to rot away. So. Yeah, Mikaela, Lich, and World Eater all grew up together in the second period before this whole thing happened. So Gumelia's all alone now. She's left alone with Seth. Poor girl. Aww. This poor girl. She's left behind with Seth in his mask form. She wore him, and the two decided to work together to stop the miasma in the Hellish Yard. She then became the master of the Hellish Yard, as over, as over the years she would stand before the grates of the Heavenly Yard and not allow demon contractors through the Paradise and judge souls for their sin. At some point, Gumelia's physical body rotted away, and she was left in her Earthling form. So this is her new look now. She's hot. <laughs> She's really hot. <laughs> so now we have the master of the Hellish Yard, Gumilia. Awesome. So Rinchen got an ending as well. Um, after all that shit, in January of EC 611, Rinchen resumed her singing career. And February 15th of that year, she opened up before a large crowd. And it's assumed that she had, had successful. It's assumed she had a successful career for many years after. Good for her. Really, someone's happy. Someone came out of this happy, and it was just Rin Chan. <laughs> so Jermaine's ending um, is fucked up. Honestly, they didn't have to do. Remember how I said, uh, "Cloak." I said this to you. And I said this last time. Mafi, for some reason, writes it in universe. Everyone fucking hates Jermaine for the crime of being mad that her dad died one time. The universe fucking hates Jermaine, because Jermaine wakes up in Palo Wells 2 after all was said and done, and she was taken into custody by the police who arrived at the scene and blamed her for everything. She explained, uh. to, them, she explained to them who she was, and she had no memories of a Julia. She began to rapidly age after all these years caught up to her, and she only had about two months to live after. She was given about a day out in the town in Lucifania and remarked how beautiful the cities had become over the last 100 years and how pretty Rin Chan's voice was and died in a prison cell without regrets in March of that year in 611. Uh. So, Ma, we have this now. So with Levia, Eve, and Arena souls fused together in Lucana Octo's body, they woke up and were unable to conjure magic anymore while their body was too weak at the moment. The new entity decided that they needed a new name, and she decided to continue going by a Luca Clockwork until she could find a new body to swap with, and decided on her true name to become Ma. She, uh, she decided on Ma because of how all three of the souls had at one point tried to become Mem Aleph. Remember Project Ma? That's what it stood for, remember? Yeah. yeah. After deciding on a new name, she began traveling. Okay, so. Yes. Luca's fucking gone. Right? Yes is fucking dead. Yes. Sad. We don't like that because she was go the good guy. Yes. Well, fucked. Yes. So I now, so now Aluka is a combination of, um, Arena, Levia, and Eve Moonlit. The three that's worst just, people alive. <laughs> I was about to be like, that sounds like the worst combination of individuals. Also, I'm not gonna play the full song of Fifth Piano, even though it's a fucking jam. You guys should all listen to it. I just want to play the part where it's flash warning. Huge, 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 huge flash warning. Huge flash warning coming up. 
Um, I just want to play the part of the instrumental for the dual Mary God Plateau because Mothy never released the song, but he did, res- but like an instrumental was released and this is like the rock cover of it. It's so fucking good. And Marga Gabriel has it in this video. I haven't watched the stage play yet. We should watch it together. Yes. To my beloved sister-in-law, I'll be waiting at Mary God Plateau from Marina Clockworker as Julia Abelard. Get ready. Flash warning. I love this song! It's not even a song, it's just... Yes! Yes! Fuck it up! Fuck it up! Jam! Jam! Catch him! That's my boy! Behemo! It's a lot. It's a lot. Also, Benika's here. Hi, queen. My wife! My wife! Oh, there's a world eater. This is world eater. He's a giant skeleton man, I told you. Yeah. I did not exaggerate. <laughs> One bit. <laughs> the explosion it happens you ever just explode yeah. <laughs> you ever Absolutely. just explode sometimes big move happened to me last week <laughs> happened, to, happened to me this morning damn small world twin flames honestly And now we have M.A. Oh, no! What did I click? No, get me out of here. No, that's for later. And now we're finally at part five, Envy. Yay! Yay! Oh, I know this song. I loved this. I remember really liking this song. So I have to go over the trigger warnings again because there's a lot of them. Oh, God, Alan, not again. <laughs> not, not again. Not again. Not my boy. No, actually. <laughs> so, content warning, child death, incest, murder. <laughs> it's mothy, unfortunately. It's, yeah. Abuse, SA, suicide, racism, xenophobia. Alan really going through it all the goddamn time once again. <laughs> I am realizing that technically speaking, that bitch was my first penny. <laughs> oh, sad. it's all coming together. Back back again for Envy. Let's go. But yeah, fucking Envy is a lot. Envy's okay. I have I, I, I have pictures and diagrams to help. That's scary. It's fine. So the songs used are just oh yeah. T trigger warning, this guy's the worst. Kai Miroku, the, the so he's just Kyle but racist. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I recognize, I only recognize the Taylor of NB Bizaka. Yeah, so the songs used are the Taylor and Bizaka and then Weathered Head at Onigashima. I love Rolling Girl. <laughs> Rolling Girl! Ah! That song rearranged me as an individual. <laughs> As you can see, we're gonna have a lot of tomfoolery. True, Envy needs more songs. There's no song from like the point of view of Kai because we, so people don't know how much of a shithole he is. People don't know about the the fucking horrible person he is. Oh my God. When will we get a Kai? That's a, a, a Kai. Jesus Christ, a Kaito. That's a good person. Um. Give me a second. Uh, um. Uh. I'm 
I'm gonna be real with you. The closest we got was Kyle. Oh, Carlos was close. Cause he, cause when he was a shithead, he was just a little kid. He became a good person. The closest was Carlos. All the so way sad. back in Gluttony. So sad. When the closest thing to a good Kaito in the series is fucking Carlos and Kyle, you know they've got them fucked up. He unlearned his fat phobia, that is true. He did have a glow up. So, we have to go back to Behemoth for a second. So Behemoth in the Heavenly Yard, which is the moon. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, so the Heavenly Yard is also the moon. Oh, the, the, the Kaito that killed, that killed, killed... Catrice! Catrice! True, true, you're so based. No, no, that was, Carlos was only in, um, in Benika's story. I have one good Kaito. Carlos, you, Car Carlos was pretty, pretty based, but that guy was also super based because he did kill Venomania. So, we're on the moon. On the okay. So, he just, so he decided to figure out what Behemo missed while she was asleep by checking a black box left behind by Talos, aka Sickle, aka the sun god of the third period now. Uh, Behemo couldn't open the black box, so he used their artificial eye to x-ray mode. <laughs> don't ask, okay. I don't know. And check the inside of the box. Inside the box was Alan Avedonia. My boy. My boy. Behemo got Alan out of the box and took him to the Garden of Champ Elise. There they found the Akashi Recorder. I don't know what those words mean. I don't know what those words mean. If I'm gonna be real here. So the Akashic Recorder was a recorder that kept that kept record of all the third period's history, which became which Behemo uh, used to catch up on all the lore he missed out on. With the recorder, he learned about Ma as well, and the fact that Alan was key to the end of the world. He also, somehow, sent an order to the Frieza's family and told them to kill all the ghoul children remaining frozen under Castle Hedgehog. Um, Held Spirit um, yelled to Behima for freeing Alan and was like, Hey, you can't just free that bitch. I have, I have him locked away in a box for a reason. <laughs> And returning to a black box, but not before Behemoth let Alan know that really I was would reincarnate and soon in Jakoku in about 200 years, and they went off in the merry way. It's fun for Elysian Fields. Oh yeah, the Greek mythos thing. Yeah, so it's like the garden where all the champions, where all the good, good, good people are. Anyone else should platonic in health? I can see it. Meet Kayo. <laughs> So, Kayo Sudo was born in Enbizaka, Jakoku, to Nagare and Kagura Sudo. They were a family of tailors and lived in their tailor shop. <laughs> Kayo isn't as hot! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> Nagare died of an illness when Kaio was around 10 years old, and later on, Kagura allowed the delinquent samurai boy Gakuga, Okto, to live with them. Um, Kaio and Gakuga fell in love, despite the fact that they were cousins. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, the two were married when Kaio was about 16, and Gakuga was, I don't know how many years old he was. Uh, and I did not want to look it up. Yeah. Yeah, so we let's just let's just move on. Let's just move on. We're gonna be here all day if we don't move on. Uh, shortly after the wedding, Kagura disappeared. I know, I know, Valid sucks, and I hate it. I wish I was dead. Val, I love you. Please kill me. <laughs> so who was Kagura? Um. Okay. So I. This is where this hi. This is where me Chai, uh, also known as Chai Pat, also known as uh, the the sinner. This is where I come in. I didn't fucking know this part of the story. I didn't know this part of the story, and this is important. Um. So, Kagura. Um. So do you remember? Do you remember Levia's mother, Raha Barisol, from the song uh, "Barisol's Child Is an Only Child"? I didn't listen to that song, but but I remember you talking about it. Yeah, so Reha Barisol is Kagura. So Kagura was actually Reha Barisol, the demon of envy, all along. She took on Kagura Octo's human form by using the swap mind technique and used the body to marry Nagare. After Nagare's death, she grew bored of the humans, and after Kaya was married, she faked her own death and threw herself into the sea. She transformed into a mermaid. 
she just can do that. She left behind okay. the twin blades of Levianta by the cliffside after switching the real Kagura's spear into them and observed the do- her daughter's life from afar. So do not forget that this means Kayo is the child of a demon of sin. She was never possessed by the demon of sin. Okay. She-, she was the child of him. I didn't know this. I thought... I thought Kaya was just another one that got possessed and was making a contract. No, she just straight up was, like, half demon. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so that shit got me fucked up. Also, there's a lot of things about, um, about the, about the Envy series people get horrifically wrong, and you'll see what I mean very soon. So Gakuga isn't a good husband. So after Kagura disappeared, Kaya took over the tailoring shop family business and Gakuga took up drinking drugs and spending time far away from home and telling his wife that she could sprout wings and fly one day. That's important because he does it later and it's never explained why. <laughs> awesome. It's just kind of implied that all of the octos are some kind of are it's so basically what it is is that everyone in the octo family line is descended from lucana who had a child with venomania while he was possessed so all octos are somewhat possessed by the demon of lust when they're born so they're all slightly demonic um eventually kayo and gakuga had a son named ren sudol Although she was taking care of Ren mostly by herself, Kaya became friends with her neighbors, Yuka, Musubi, and Mei Miroku. Mei's husband was Kai Miroku, and the two ran a dry goods business in a shop that they called Miroku Shop. Very original, I know. Um, she was the daughter of a doctor and loved her Kayo and loved her friend Kayo very dearly. Mei had two children named Miku and Ren. <laughs> he couldn't he just couldn't think of a name <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did I? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, because Chikoku is, like, Japanese-inspired, um, he was just like, yeah, Miku and Rin. Yeah. <laughs> Mei, Kai, Miku, Rin. This, this arc, he got kind of lazy. Um, remember how Behemo said that Relaine would reincarnate in Jakoku? Yeah, that's her. So, Rin is really Anne's reincarnation. Hey. She's here now. We have our Rin, so Alan's gonna try to get her. Yeah. Colleen dies a tiny bit every time. <laughs> every time I every time I drop a new name, I can I can hear her soul leave the leave the Discord call. <laughs> it, it really is like that. There's just, it's just so much, Chai. I know. I don't know how you haven't lost your fucking mind. <laughs> oh, buddy, I never had it. <laughs> So we keep on Alan are up to something. Listen, when you've been working on this for as long as I have, buddy, you lose it after a while, and you don't go back, and you move on. <laughs> So Behemo and Alan, uh, Alan, uh, learning about Rillian reincarnating into Rin, reincarnated himself via being being born from a tree trunk in Momogengo, Jakoku. He was found by an elderly couple who named him uh, Kokutan Doji. He was treated very poorly by the villagers because he of his blonde hair and blue eyes. Behemo also reincarnated around this time because Sickle yelled at him until he went. She decided to reincarnate as a woman named Bo- uh, Bufuko Tsukimoto and wait as a servant to the Octo family. So, <sighs> there's no image of what she looked like as Bufuko, but I just put her in her maid dress, and this is what uh, Koktan Doji, aka Alan, looks like in this uh, story arc. Alan's back! Alan's back! He's gonna go through it. So Kai hated foreigners. This is because his mother... Oh, damn it. So this is because his mother was allegedly essayed by foreigners, and she committed suicide over it when Kai was 10 years old. Kai himself was mixed and hated, but he hated all foreigners that weren't Jakokuis. He joined an extremist Jakoku supremacy group called the Crimson Robed Masses. Um. Okay. Yeah, because there was a freeze. Just... Yes. <laughs> so we just we just had. Okay, this is getting bad. Yeah. So Kai is a huge racist and xenophobe. <laughs> This is why I hate him so much. You should, as we should. I also hate him. Remember, guys, that is a lot to unpack. How do you think I felt when I read it? (laughs) I was alone. I'm giving 
given y'all the briefest rundown. It's bad. It's bad. Because there is a Freezes Foundation training center in town, Kai attempted to burn it down because it's run by foreigners. However, Gakuga saw him and startled him, which started a larger fire that, swall that threatened to swallow the entire neighborhood. Kayo, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Kettle, thank you, Kettle, I'm in pain. <laughs> Kayo grabbed her baby and escaped towards a bridge at the other side of a hill with Gakuga, but they were trapped in the crowd. A burning building fell on Kayo and Ren, and Gakuga chased after Kai to the mountains and collapsed due to the, his burns and injuries. Also, when he was chasing when he was chasing Kai, he sprouted wings and had a demonic form and then passed out because of it. That happens. That happens. Like I said, the Octo family is cursed to be just a little bit demonic. Just a little bit demonic. Uh, Gakuga was then taken in by a monk monastery and was given the na new name Gaksha. He had amnesia and could not remember his own name. So Kaio's life turns upside down. After the fire, Kaio woke up and to find Mei treating her. Mei explained to her that her baby did not survive and Gakuga could not be found and was assumed dead. Later, Kai was taken in by her grandfather, Gato Octo. While, re while recovering from the fire and from her injuries, thanks to Bufuko, because remember, B Bufuko works for the um, Octo family. Her cousin, Anan Octo, questioned her constantly about where the whereabouts of the twin blades of Levianta that Kakura had taken when she ran away to get married to Nagare. Kayo had an idea of, and her, and her doubt, had, had no idea, and her downward mental spiral was becoming apparent, and she constantly called Bufko Ren, since they both were blonde with blue eyes. So this is where she starts mixing people together, reminder of her past. When Kayo had made a full recovery, she was told by Anan that Kayo was getting kicked out of the house for not recovering from her PTSD from the fire. Damn it. Like, that's, I hate it. I hate that. Yes. So because Kyle, so Kyle recovered physically, but not mentally. She was still very convinced that she was covered in burns and scars. She was not. She was, she had very minimal damage from the fire. Her face was completely fine, but she could still constantly feel the heat of the fire. And because of that, her family didn't like that. So they kicked her out. Jesus Christ. Anand also let her know that her tailor shop had been repaired after the fire and that Anand would be working for the Freezes Foundation tailor shop and Bufko as his servant. Before they parted ways, Bufko asked for Kayo to tailor her a maid dress. Alan, sorry, Kokdan's little interlude with his friends. So Kokdan Doji had meanwhile become close with a boy named Inukichi, living his best life in the village while waiting for the time to find purpose. Because, oh yeah, um... When he reincarnated, Rahab had become aware and had used her magic to keep him from getting his memories back of being Alan. So he had no idea why he was born, but he knew that he was, like, looking for someone. That someone being really am, but he did not remember really am. <laughs> oh, you're traumatized? Time to zone! <laughs> oh, oh you, damn. Oh, you have trauma? Get the fuck out of my house! <laughs> I love the Evilist Chronicles! Woo! You Woohoo! So, Koktan Doji was hanging out by the shoreline one day when a mermaid, Rahab in disguise, appeared and told him he should follow his purpose of finding his real mother. His real mother being Kayo, quote unquote. Um, Rahab also told him to introduce himself as Ren. She thought doing this would heal Kayo's fragile mental state. Little did she know that it would just make it worse down the line. <laughs> Rahab tried. She tried. She just doesn't. She just doesn't know better. <laughs> sad. Um, he started to travel with Inukichi and came across a blacksmith searching for the twin blades, Saru Teto. So this is Teto in this one. And she's back. She's back! She's just kind of there to be kind of quirky and she's just looking for, she's looking for the twin blades because they were in her family line. Um, the Kokudan Doji's journey was very long. He met lots of thieves and defeated a lot of people and grew close to Inukichi and Saru Teto. Main thing to get from this is that he got hate crime a lot, specifically by the Crimson Road masses. God. He got chased down. Like, people tried to set him on fire. People would try to kill him. People tried to th rob him. They would try to, like, steal. Like, they would try to kidnap him and kill him. Just a lot. Just a lot. And remember, this is the organization that Kai is in. Oh, bitch. So, back to Kai for a second. After returning to Enbizaka, Kaya met up with Miku, who showed her around the rebuilt tailor shop. Mei had rebuilt it to look exactly like Kaya's old shop. After Miku left, Kaya had a breakdown. <laughs> 
she was overwhelmed, to say the least. Later, she met Rin working in her father's shop, and Rin had mentioned how she was waiting for someone. Kai had another breakdown shortly after, distraught and envious of seeing a happy family still together after she had lost hers. She finished up she finished up Bufuko's maid dress, and when she delivered it to the Frieza's trade station, she ran to a Ma, who had arrived at who had arrived in the area. Ma took advantage of Kyle's delusional state as she was still convinced she was covered in burns by telling her that, that swapping bodies would heal her burns and cure her fits of envy and exercise the demon of envy that had taken her over, quote unquote. So basically, this is how it used to be. This used to be Ma, this used to be Kayo Sudo. Now, this is Kayo Sudo, this is Ma, they're both voiced by Luca. Aha. Okay. So, once again, before, after. <laughs> okay. You're all good? All, all good. good. Also, because obviously they don't, they don't look at all alike, um, uh, Ma had put a spell over the entire uh, city to make everyone think that Kai looked exactly the same. Fair. So. Just naturally. Naturally. It's what you do, you know? Um, Kaya was visiting around Chai, you saying words, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, so that's why in the video for, um, Taylor and Bizaka, she has pink hair, even though Kaya originally had black hair. Mm. So, the thing about the Evil's Chronicles is that there's so much fucking body swapping and name changing and aliases that it's just so fucking annoying. <laughs> and really? like, yeah, really. And like, half of the Mikus are Eve- just in different forms, and then you don't know which ones aren't Eve. <laughs> and it's sucky, and I hate it. Um, Kaya was visiting around when she spotted Kai at the bridge. She saw his burns and believed him to be her husband, Gakuga. Later, she she visited Yuka's hairpin shop to deliver the old kimono she had requested by the four of the fire. Yuka mentioned the fire, and Kaya became visibly distressed. She also began talking about how her husband and Ren, as if they were still alive, and in her mind, Kai and Bufuko were her husband and son. Rumors began sp to spread about her mental illness around the village, because Kaya could catch a fucking break. <laughs> Everyone starts, like, shit-talking here, being just like, oh my gosh, she's crazy. Yo, have you seen that Kaya, bitch? She's crazy. She's delusional, and nobody helps her! Imagine. Imagine what, what, what beneficial mental health screening will do for a bitch. Oh my god, I literally- it's so fucking painful to get through. Um, one night, due to the fact that she now had Lucana's body, she started having prophetic dreams of her killing Kai and his family. At first, she was horrified at the thought of killing, but then she learned via another prophetic dream that Kai was the one who set the fire that ruined her life. So this, evidently, breaks the illusion that Kai is Gakuga. So from this point forward, even though everyone who watches the PV thinks that Kaio thinks that Gakuga is her husband, she's th she thinks that Kai's her husband, she is fully aware that's not her husband. She's playing a ruse. <laughs> Colleen? <laughs> Kayo is like not aware that this isn't her husband and that those aren't women. She didn't even know she was married. Yeah. Oh yeah, she is married. Yeah. She was married. She I did have a son. No, like the way the way I remember this the song was like, oh, it was just this Taylor. Spoilers for what I thought the song was about, by the way. I was just like, oh, it's about this Taylor who wants to impress this guy she likes, but oh, she just is doing it by because she keeps seeing the met the well, she pays attention to and ends up killing them so he can take some she can take something from theirs and then blah 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 nope <laughs> so basically i'm explaining right here so kai wanted revenge she did however did not want to involve the the crimson road masses so she decided to use the fact that everyone already knew that she was delusional to cope with her sad reality and pretend that it was based on deluded jealousy mm. so basically kaio is aware that everyone knows the, about the fact that she's very severely mentally ill. So what she does is that she uses that to, like, like the like Kettle says that she she easily fakes delusions 
and be, to already play off her already pre-existing delusions that she's already aware of. I doubt. So, in the PV, it makes it look like Kayo's character, so Luca's character, is insane and thinks that this man is her husband and he's cheating on her when really they weren't, they weren't together at all. But that is technically what is happening. But she is aware that it's not her husband. Those aren't people that she's that he's cheating on her with. She's faking delusions in order to make sure that the, the like the this like extremist group doesn't get involved. And also because she's trying to make it seem like she's trying to push off any like um what's it? N- not evidence. You get to listen to- not ev- listen to this song. Yeah, it's not Something evidence. Right. It's like oh. assumptions that she's involved in any way. Okay. Yeah. So that's essentially what it is. Um, one night while May and Kai were out, May questioned Kai as to why he was out on the day of the fire. He lied to her about simply wishing to see the scenery, and she told him that she was tired of him lying and being racist to foreigners. She, so, so I love May, but she's the equivalent of like a white girl with like a racist boyfriend who's like, but no, I can fix him. <laughs> yeah. Fortunate, really. Plead insanity. She's she's trying to do. She's trying to plead insanity. So, she left for a solo walk shortly after, and Kyle followed May home from the Frieza's trading house and stabbed her in the throat repeatedly and through the chest. She then stole her kimono af- off of her. So, K- May is now dead, and Kyle killed her. Whoopsies. Remember, they were best friends. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. But she's like, mm, revenge, revenge first, uh, friendship later. <laughs> uh oh, gamers. So Yuka came to Kayo distressed the next day about the murder, and Kayo claimed that she could not even remember May. Once Yuka was gone, she continued tailoring May's kimono. After May's death, the Miroku family mourned heavily but had to continue running the shop. Kai ran the front storefront while Miku handled the sales outside. Around this time, Miku told her father Kai that she was pregnant with a foreigner's child, and the two were engaged as of a few months prior. Kai was enraged by this, and Miku ran away and spent the night roaming the streets as she didn't want to interact with her father. Kayo found and murdered her as well and stole her obi. Oh, shit. Yeah. So now Miku's dead and so is her unborn child, which is fucked up. Hey, Kai. Yeah, rip, rip, rip Miku, but damn, fuck Kai, bro. I don't fucking even know. So one day while working, uh, Buffalo... <laughs> Who the fuck is Buffalo? <laughs> chance in the luggage of a freezer's trading ship. Around this time, Kokutan Doji, Inukichi, and Sarute Ito arrived in on- Onigashima. Inukichi quickly fell in love with Bufuko and joined the Freezes Foundation for her and asked her, asked her out on several times. Kokutan, meanwhile, decided to finally meet his mother. He went to the tailor shop to ask her to fix his sleeve and he introduced himself as Ren. Since he had blonde hair and blue eyes, Kayo immediately believed that he was her son. Kokutan Doji moved in to live with uh, Kayo and they began to live living as mother and son despite how wrong Kokutan Doji was feeling about his mother's mental state. Around this time, Saru... So is it, mm-hmm. This is, um, this is Al... This is still Alan, just to be sure. Yes. Awesome. So this yeah. is Alan's reincarnation. Um, around this time, Saru Teto investigated around and met Kiji Yadera while looking for the twin blades, as not even Anan knew where Kagura left them. Kiji, as it turns out, was the foreigner that Miku had been engaged to. Kiji had tried to beat up Kai after coming back to... En- he left to Elphagort to visit his family, and came back and found out his wife and kid were dead. <laughs> and Damn. you know what? I wish they let him beat up Kai. I wish they let him beat up Kai. <laughs> It's what he deserves. So Rin's demise. This part's sad. So 
while because remember, Rin is really Anne. So Walk. while Kaio and Ren were playing mother and son, and Kaio celebrating how haggard Kai was becoming from stress, Ren had went away to live in her father's hometown for a while. While there, she acquired one of the four mirrors of Lucifania and accidentally contacted with the demon of pride once more. She dreamed of her past Damn life. It. She dreamed of her past life as really Anne, and that Kai would murder her on the Onigashima on, Onigashima shore. After getting knowledge of her past life, she returned to her father for a week and visited a hairpin shop where Kaio spotted her with Kai. That night, Rin went to the beach and would wait for Kaio to arrive. Rin tried to explain to Kaio that she couldn't die until she saw Alan. Kaio ignored her and she was stabbed to death and left to bleed out by Kaio. Her body was never found and was ruled as a disappearance. Kaio took her hairpin from her... Kaio took her hairpin before then leaving her after taking talking to Yuka the next day. I hate this. So Rin, aka Rillian, is now dead. Kayo Kayo left her body to the shore and I guess threw it in the in the shore because no one could ever find her body. And then Kayo afterwards disappeared from disappeared from um uh, Nbizaka. She took all of the items she stole from the dead women and disappeared for a while. So you already know this part. Kayo found Kai mourning his family's death on the mountain temple. She approached him while wearing Mei's kimono, Miku's obi, and Rin's hairpin. She stabbed him and tore his body to pieces with her scissors. Rip Kai. (laughs) Woo! Kai's dead, guys! Let's go! We win these! We love that. We love that for him. I'm glad he's dead. We love that for you know what Kyle was justified in killing him at least. <laughs> I would have okay. killed him too. Queen shit, truly. Sad about the three women she had to kill, but uh, <laughs> at least she killed Kai. <laughs> took a, took a, it took some time to get there. <laughs> Drake, let's go. Uh oh, consequences for actions. Kiji had figured out that Kai was the murderer befo- behind Mido- the Miroku slaughter and followed where Kai was spotted in an abandoned temple with some magistrate officers to arrest her. I hate that man so fucking much. I did too, and I'm glad he's fucking dead. Kokudan had also been with the officers after discussing if Ma, he met up with Ma earlier, was correct in saying that Kai wasn't really his mother. All Kokudan wanted was to talk to Kai about the truth, but when, he- when everyone found Kai, she was covered in Kai's blood. A month later, Kokutan watched as Kaio testified to having killed the Miroku family under the delusion that Kai was her husband and his two daughters and wife were women he was cheating on her with. A.K.A. a lie. She was still sentenced to be executed, however. Haha. <laughs> yikes? Big yikes now. Um, before the execution, Kiji had come up to, see- to speak with Kokutan. Kiji explained to him that Kaio had killed the Miroku family to get revenge on Kai after Kai had, been started- had started the Great Fire, fire and Bizaka. Kaya had to feign delusion to prevent war between Onig- Onig- uh, Onigashima's magistrate and the terrorist group Crimson Road Masses. Kaya was brought to the execution grounds, um, but the katanas they had to cut they, they had could not cut through her neck, as it would instantly heal due to her demonic blood. Uh, Bufko, meanwhile, tried tired of this shit, stole Kyle's old scissors and took Grim the end to Koktan. She noticed how his memories of being Alan still hadn't returned yet, and she revealed herself to be Behemo and returned his memories for him. She should have been executed. She- free my girl! She did a good thing! Free my girl! She did three bad things and one really, really good thing. <laughs> free my girl! <laughs> She gave him Grim the End and showed him how to transform it into a sword and behead Kaio and free her soul with. Um, shortly after, Behemo came across Ma having a confrontation with Rahab. Behemo ignored Ma entirely. A.K. his sister is in there. He's just like, excuse me, uh, get out of my way, bitch. Uh, let me just pick up, uh, let me just pick up these swords. Um, <laughs> he instead took up Kagura's spirit into the heavenly yard while Rahab re-entered the scissors. Big sad. Uh, the next day, Kaya was brought back to the execution grounds again, only this time Kokutan was to execute her. Kokutan, through his tears, bade his mother farewell and used Grim the End to decapitate her. For her crimes, Kaya's head was put on public display. <laughs> After talking with Inukichi and Saruteto that he planned to leave with Bufuko to find his actual family, he then went to where he saw Gaksha. Gaksha had regained his memories and was searching for his wife. Um, too late. <laughs> and he did not re- recognize Lucana's head on display to be Kayo. Alan was then taken back to Behemo to the Heavenly Yard. Song! 
Yay! Woo! Yeah, poor Kokdan. Oh I just want Alan to be happy. He's not allowed to be happy. He finally got a mom and had to fucking kill her. But song time, guys. Song time, guys. Woo! Why doesn't it work? Why do you not go full screen, you little bitch? And he didn't get to reunite with his sister because his sister was fucking dead. Eh. I got it. I figured it out. I think there's a flash warning for this one. Can you make a pop quiz? I think my I think my I think my chat would kill me. <laughs> I would kill you. I would kill you. The idea of doing a pop quiz for this shit? Fuck that. <laughs> Let me just skip to when the song actually happens. This is just the fire. I remember this song. Oh, this is such a good song. It is. Also, Ma Mary G Gabriel again, my boy. I'm cat jamming. I'm gonna go grab a snack. You take care of chat. Hey. So, chat, how we doing? Original. Oh, um. Yeah, that was so fun. I love the original. <laughs> Listen, y'all should. Y'all have. I. I'm barely hanging on, guys. That's all we remember that fuck Kai. This song st is still so good to this day. I just really like this song. It's so good. It's been years since I listened to it, but I still just like it still goes hard. so far. I worked really hard on it. I'm exhausted. 
shit. I love you. Uh, you put so much work into this shit, and it shows. But oh my fucking god. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> As you can imagine, I did not think. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my whole thought. I did not think. <laughs> that's quite rude. Okay, no. I did not think it would be as long as it is. I truly thought this would be a lot easier than it was. I'm just, a, I'm just a sad little fool. I'm just a sad little fool. Then again, it's 15 years worth of Vocaloid songs. Why did I think this would be easy? Also, you know how hard it is to find these novels translated into English? <laughs> I would imagine. Hellfire. Don't fuck up. Hi, Glow! I got chips! It's all coming together now. It's all together. Sorry, it was like hella lagging on my end. I don't know if it was lagging for y'all. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. It's always the YouTube videos, huh? <laughs> But I got my chips, so I'm very happy. I have chicken waiting for me downstairs, so I'll probably eat more Ooh! I'm gonna have the house to myself for like days. It's gonna be great. But yeah, that was. Can we look at pictures of Lucana Octo? There she is. GB. And now she's gone. Okay, guys, we uh are. We are here now. It's time. Is it the end? Is this the end? Close. It's this part and then and then Master of the Heavenly Yard, which is the end. <laughs> Alright, guys. I cannot okay, listen. Let me just get through this. Okay, so we're at part six, which is greed and wrath. They're happening at the same time. They literally happen. No, this Kaito is not worse. Nah, nah. He's just another Kaito. Nah, Kai's still the worst one, though. This guy's just a loser. <laughs> this guy's just a big loser. <laughs> so, uh, content warning. Freak behavior. Uh, child neglect. Child abandonment. Seth Twilight again. Delusional behavior. Slavery. Racism. Truly disgusting amounts of racism. Essay. And... The worst incest we've seen yet. <laughs> what do you? How? The fact that there is the worst incest. That is the worst sentence. Uh, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it's just freak. They're just freaks. They're just. It's, where is she? She's just a freak. Ma is just a freak. Also, content warning. Lots of government and politics and. Bleh. And yeah, uh, I will I will be giving a huge disclaimer of the uh, amount of racism shown because it pertains to slavery. Um, so I'll be giving a huge content warning when uh, we're about to get to that slide. I'm shy. I want to go home. You are home. <laughs> this is your home now. <laughs> yeah. Why are you crying? This is a great time. We're having a great time here, guys, right? And a content warning slide that says content warning, slavery, racist, <laughs> and incest again! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not apologizing. Yeah, listen. <laughs> you signed up for this. You agreed. <laughs> this is the home at home. <laughs> All right, so the songs you use is a lot. So... We got Judgment of Corruption, Miniature Garden Girl, and The Girl Went Mad, The Last Revolver, Master of the Graveyard, Heartbeat Clock Tower, Muzzle the Nemesis, Master of the Court, Successor of the Court, Heartbeat Clock Tower, Capriccio Farce, Red Shoe Parade, Seven Crimes and Punishments, and Master of the Hellish Yard. Again. I only recognize the first one. Judgment of Corruption? Yeah, because that's Kaito's song. 
You don't recognize his nemesis? Damn. All right. <laughs> Judging a cushion. Yeah, boy. It is a jam. It is a fucking cat jam. That is so true. All right. So how this one works is that this part is long because it's technically three parts all happening simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. That's my boy. This is Bruno Zero. You'll meet him soon. He's the best character here. He goes through so much and he's my man. He's he's a little bit <sighs> limp wrist, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Ah, we get more homosexuality. That's great. His taste in men, though, uh, could be better. <laughs> I mean, cause the guy he's into I is this guy. <laughs> oh, why? He could, uh, bestie. Okay, so we're doing a lot of POV switches. So get ready. This part's fun, though. This one, this part might be my favorite. Because, listen, I came into Evil's Chronicles of Time being like, Adam Moonlit, my little baby with Meow Meow, and this guy, Anti. Now, nah, this is my baby, this is my baby girl. <laughs> this is my baby girl. This is my little, this is my little hiss hiss. <laughs> this is my boy. Is he problematic and horrible and, a, and, you know, a piece of shit? A little bit, yeah, but I loved him. I loved him. That's my baby girl. <laughs> All right, peace and love, bro. Also, in eight and EC seven eight seventy eight, the United States of Evilist was formed. It <laughs> so we got the U S E U S E. <laughs> so we got uh, it was a union of Lucifania, Elphagort, Levianta, and Marlon. <laughs> We're gonna be Chai's problematic babe. He is so problematic, but he's my favorite. <laughs> Around this time, the UCE Dark Star Bureau was also established. It was a government office in Levianta and in the USC and conducted trials for alleged witches and evilists. Got it? Perfect. <laughs> I love the unsure, quite sure. <laughs> so, while traveling, Ma, so going by Luca, wanted to become pure as she could sense the end of the world was approaching. She wanted to do this by finding the demons of sin and expelling the spirits of Levia, Eve, and Arena from her body. While traveling, she met Bruno Zero, a slave from the Freezes Foundation, and married a man named Gandalf. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even say. This. She married a man named Gandalf Marlon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Colleen! Tell me about Gandalf! <laughs> Gandalf is just a guy! <laughs> he's just a guy! So he's a descendant of Kyle, or of like the Marlon family. Alright. He is ugly as shit. He has like an ugly beard. He's just really fucking ugly. Um, and to understand Bruno, I'll screenshot the wiki on the next slide, because, dear lord, he's important, but not to later story-wise. Um, in April of 944, Ma broke into the home of Mata Corpa and stole the Marlon spoon. She absorbed the demon. This gave her the power to eventually expel Levia and Arena's soul from her. Levia needed a vessel first to put Levia in. Le <sighs> Ma needed a, a vessel to put Levia in, so she searched for a girl. <laughs> Wait, where did I put a screenshot? Where did I put a screenshot? Or, or not, where did I put a copyright? <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with all the major territories are named after the sin demon names. Ma flopped, Aluka outsold, so true. All right, so this is the part what I meant by disgusting amounts of racism because Bruno Marlon, uh, Bruno, not Br Bruno Zero is a black man and he was a slave. Um, so here's the disgusting amounts of racism that he's gone through. So you understand why oh, he has the God. things he has. So he was born as a slave sometime in the 10th century in EC in Mastia Sigurd Zero, along with his mother, father, older sister, and younger brother. I mean, older brother and younger sister, worked on a plantation in Mystia. At some point, he and his family were sold by their master and bought by the Freezes family. 
and hoped that their situation would improve. He was te instead treated cruelly by the freezes, forced to sleep in the stables and work around the clock. One day, he and his family were let loose in the forest from one of the freezes' human hunting outings. So they Excuse did. Excuse me? So they were, so the freezes, by this point, have all become hers. Um, so they all have hereditary evil razor syndrome. And, um, so, uh, uh, Loki freezes and the current freezes family. Um, so they're doing the most dangerous game shit. Um, they're doing human hunting outings and his entire family were killed by Loki freezes with his younger sister being mounted and stuffed in the young man's room. As a reward for surviving the hunting, he was made Loki's butler, as well as a member of the association given a new name, Bruno. During this time, he met the sorceress Ma, who at the time went by Aluka. This I met I... by disgusting amounts of racism. Huh? So now, when uh, Bruno is going to be like, I fucking hate Loki freezes, I want him dead, you know why? <laughs> I want him dead too. Yeah, not a problem. I agree. Let's not a it. problem. I get it, bestie. I'm right behind you. So yeah, that's what's going on. What the fuck? I know this came out of fucking left field. I was like, I was like researching happily, and then I got to that part, and I was like, excuse me. But yeah, moving on, I suppose. Um, human experimentation. So not much better, actually. Um. Ma began magically experimenting on a girl named Lilith Baldured. She did this in order to create the perfect vessel for Levia. After the experiments, she became an ageless, emotionless shell of her former self. Ma attempted to put Levia's soul into Lilith, but failed. Instead, Ma made Lilith into her servant and gave her the new name Postman. Also, this is Relaine's most current um, reincarnation. <laughs> so Relaine reincarnated and immediately got experimented on. <laughs> She goes through it all the time. She tried to make her own vessel by sleeping with Gandalf. The child ended up being a boy named Galarian Marlon. Shortly after, this is our sinner of the week. Um, <laughs> hey. I'm naming him. Shortly after Galarian was born, Ma was arrested by the world police and was taken away for witchcraft and the murder of Mata. She faked her death and shortly after, and Galarian was raised by believing his mother was unjustly executed by the courts. Ah, there he is. The- that motherfucker. The tool. Oh my god, Chai Pat's covering him. Chai Pat, you fucking bitch. There's Galarian. Look at my boy. Look at my sinner. I love him. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's hard to control Chai Pat sometimes. They have a mind of their own. I think Chai Pat's possessed. He's a bitch boy, but he's my bitch boy. Of course I'm gonna allow that. Auto mod. Auto mod. How dare you silence Emily? <laughs> So we love secret organizations in the chat, don't we? Say yes. <laughs> Silence! Thanks, Emily. <laughs> so, Colleen, do you like secret organizations? Hello? Oh no. Hello? <laughs> we love so. <laughs> Thank you, Seder. Thank you, Seder. Uh oh. Colleen's <laughs> dead! Hold on! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I thought I finally broke Colleen with Gandalf. <laughs> oh no. I guess I'll just sit here and eat my ch eat my Cheetos. Hi chat, how are we feeling? How are we doing in the chat tonight? It's almost like I can still hear them now.
shy. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. My fucking everything crashed. What happened? My, I couldn't see the slideshow for a little bit. And so I tried to refresh my thing and then it just went to shit. Oh no. Are you back now? Yes, I should be back now. Because I can now see the screen. Yay. I'm so sorry. What, what was the last thing you heard? Uh, I don't remember this slide. Go back. <laughs> okay. Oh, we were just starting that slide. Okay, so you so okay, so it was like the last thing you heard about Lilith? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'll reread it again. Okay, I'll reread it again. No, so last thing I heard was the faked her death. Okay, so she faked her death. Galarian was raised believing that his mother was unjustly executed by the courts. Okay. Yes. Now we're back here. So we're we have yes. another secret organization. Yay! Yay! That's the enthusiasm I was I was missing. Let's go! <laughs> so with the name Aluka Clockworker legally dead, she started going by Kaio Sudo, and she took up a career as a playwright with, uh, with Ma as a pen name. She began making films glorifying Aluka's past for the next 10 years. Amazing. Bruno, meanwhile, had grown close in the meantime with Shido Netsuma, Hel Jako, and Feng Li. Now, now, now I know what you're thinking. Is that just a fucking tiger? It is. <laughs> awesome. Some. However, the tiger. Oh yeah, Colleen, do you like secret secret organizations? Chat loves secret organizations. <laughs> I don't mind them. <laughs> Let's go. Also, um, I, I think uh, they're interesting to learn about. Another thing about Fengli is that even though Fengli is in fact a tiger, he insists that he's a human man, and he can walk and talk. <laughs> I don't know why Mothy did this. <laughs> I truly cannot tell you why. <laughs> why Mothy did this. <laughs> um, so he decided to form a secret organization to overthrow Loki and the corrupted Freeze family. Ella. Thank you, Ella, for the fucking syndicate mention. Now I have to destroy the tally. It's not even an hour. Alright, it was dubbed Petter Noel, aka PN, because you know the first Petter Noel went so fucking well. It totally went so great. It's not like all the members got murdered or anything. Yep. Okay, so, Ma, after hearing about it and meeting with Bruno again, joined the organization as well. This gave them ac access to Lunaka Labor, because you know the last Petter Noel went so well for her, too. Also, um, Shido is, um, a another Haku. That's my girl. I love her. So, Galarian. Yay! Galarian. Galarian was, was sure. being followed by Sickle all his life and being raised by mostly his wet nurse, Polina Marchef. He became friends with Loki Freezes, a.k.a. the fucking enemy. The, ra the, no. raci the racist, ugly enemy. I hate him. But Bruno didn't know. I'm not Bruno. I mean, um, Galarian didn't know about the horrible atrocities that this child has committed. Um, Galarian would discuss often his desire to become a judge. When he was 14, he was employed by the Dark Star Bureau so he could begin his personal oh. mission to rise to the ranks and become a judge. By the time he was 16, he was already a senior judge. How? Uh, he's smart, I guess. Um, he worked as an aide to the Bureau's deputy head for trials. Loki was growing increasingly jealous of Galarian's success, going as far as to tell his girlfriend, Mira, to stop talking to him. The enemy. So, Kaio's trial. Ma had an unlicensed screening for her movies, during which two anti-witch extremists raided the theater, so Ma struck them both with lightning. <laughs> as you do... She was arrested yes. shortly after Just for- Just yeah. Chai, you're- You- oh, Chai. Yeah? Yeah? Hello? Yeah? Chai? Yeah? Yes, I'm still here. What the fuck? <laughs> oh no, not again! Oh god, they're dead! 
Hi, chat. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, they fucking glitched out of existence. <laughs> oh, sevens. I missed them already. I'm just eating Cheetos at this point. <laughs> oh, sevens, truly. Um, let's just chat for a while. Hey, guys. How are you feeling? We can pull up a jam. This is an okay jam. I want a better jam. Oh, my God. I love this song. I love this song. Not this one. There you go. I don't remember anything. Good. Hello? You live! I, you were talking about that, um, fucking slide, and I was still on the slide you were on before. And then I was like, can you hear me? And then you didn't hear me calling your name for another, like, three minutes. What? Like, it was like, fucking, like, like, the la it was like a fucking stream lag to the extreme. That's wild. What the fuck? Cause you well, cause you when you were asking Chai, Chai, I was like responding. I thought you couldn't hear me. I, yeah, I wasn't hearing you responding when I was saying Chai. But I could hear you talk. What the but fuck? But you were like three minutes behind me. What the fuck? The amount of technical So it was like I was talking. I was calling you. Calling you, calling you, and I and I did not hear you start to three minutes. Jesus Christ! Like, I was just like, oh sh, because you, I was, I was just trying to tell you like I don't see the slide you're talking about. Oh, but I kept hearing you talking about. Oh no! So hopefully, I turned the AC on, so hopefully my laptop won't explode. I hope so. Uh, do you see no. the Do you see the title Kyo Trial? Yes, I do. Okay, Jesus Christ. Um, oh so God. we're gonna get through this. I swear. I'm we, so we have, sorry, Chad. It's okay. We have forty seven slides left. We're fucking. We're speed running the lore. This is speed running to me. <laughs> scuff stream, my beloved. At least I have one stand of the scuff. <laughs> Thanks, Sater. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, so Ma had. By the way, we're the the third period had advanced to the point where now they have cars and they also have movies. Got it. I can see that. Awesome. Awesome. So, Ma yeah. had an unlicensed screening for her movies during which two anti-witch extremists raided the theater. So Ma struck them both with lightning, as it happens. She was arrested shortly after because she struck people with lightning after her illegal screenings, witchcraft, and attempted murder. <laughs> she chose to represent herself in court, and her judge was none other than Galarian himself, who had pointed out how she was a spitting image of his mother, because she was. But she couldn't be his mother because had, she had not aged in the last, like, 16 years. 
Galarian Jesus declared Christ. Ma, aka Kaios Adol, innocent, and Ma was set free. He was suspended for 30 days due to his ruling, and Loki invited him to go hunting in Pixie, where Kaio had told the authorities she was staying in. There, Galarian met Bruno and was shocked by how racist Loki was towards him, but he still went into Loki's car and hung out with him after anyway, so really, the next page is completely on him, and it's his fault, let's be real here. Agreed. Loki's a freak. Loki's a fucking freak. So, world's most dangerous game kicks in. Little did Galarian know that Loki had planned to hunt him down like an animal, the same way he'd done to Bruno and his family, and kill him. Bruno had yeah. known this would happen, and Shido on standby with a sniper rifle prepared. As Galarian ran away from Loki, Shido shot him and he fell unconscious, which Bruno knew would happen. Bruno told Loki that his hunt was successful, and once Loki was gone, he took Galarian to Luna Lunaka Labora for medical treatment. There, Galarian was recruited into PN as well and discussed plans with Ma. After recovering, he met up with, Mir with Mira, Loki's girlfriend, and they planned to get Loki thrown in prison for his crimes against Bruno's family. As they should! While talking, while talking to the Yanera family, aka Mira's family, Galarian got Mira pregnant. The Yanera family agreed to help convict <sighs> Loki if Galarian released their serial killer son. <laughs> So they were like, we'll give you the money and we'll help you, but you have to also release our serial killer son. And he was like, I guess? <laughs> and then he did it. Jesus Christ. A year later, Loki was convicted and got a 30-year sentence. Bleh. Shit be happening. Um, so, Bruno called for Shido to assassinate Loki while in his prison cell. Shido was, shoot Shido was to shoot him in his cell if he refused to kill himself with a gun that was delivered by Postman. Loki refused, and Shido shot him through the forehead from afar. It was ruled as a suicide. So Loki's dead! Woo! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Thank God. I hated his ass. <laughs> Bruno began to work and set under a Galarian. He would often take care of Galarian and Mira's daughter, Michelle Marlon. So this is our Miku. She's not yes. Eve. She's just straight up a girl named Michelle. <laughs> and she's lovely. Yay. Be gone, racist! He explodes. <laughs> Thank God. God. Oftentimes, Galarian and Mira would spend most of their time fighting and didn't have a lot of time for her. On Galarian's- By the way, Galarian had only just turned 20. On Galarian's 20th birthday, Galarian met with Ma instead of Mira. Ma ordered him some drinks and he cried about how he couldn't even divorce Mira because of Michelle. Damn. Okay, so... Remember how their mother and son... No. While Galarian no. was drunk, Ma slept with him, and the two continued to have an affair for <laughs> the next six months. <laughs> that is worse. I told you. <laughs> and the thing is, Galarian didn't know. Ma knew. <laughs> Slamming my head against the pizza boxes. Currently crying, spitting, throwing up. I fucking hate it. I want to die. I want. I. It, it just keeps getting worse. It's worse. It's worse. Uh, Galeria was completely unaware that she was his mom. She was completely aware and hoping to get a vessel out of sleeping with him in order to remove her impurities. Bruno found out about the affair and screamed at Ma for sleeping with her son. Good. She, good! Bruno's the best character in this fucking story! She giggled and pointed out how he he really seemed to like and care about Galarian. Flicks wrist. Flicks wrist. She knew she was pregnant anyway and decided to leave the country. Ma let Hanma Baldred, Postman's father, know she was leaving and the two promised to keep in touch. Ma, Ma ran away to the Millennium Tree Forest where she gave birth to her daughter in the long since abandoned Adam and Eve moonlit residence. Me, this <sighs> poor fucking incest baby. So this is Nem Nemesis Sudo. I kin her. <laughs> That's so sad. No, literally, literally, Bruno was like, you're sleeping with your fucking son, that shit's gross. And Ma was like, well, you're gay, so <laughs> who's the bigger sinner here? <laughs> I'm going to cry. And, and then Bruno was like, leave. And then she's like, okay, I'm pregnant anyway. And then she just leaves. It's, just, it's the worst.
scariest thing I've ever read in my life. I wanted to throw my entire self out into traffic. I have a headache. I have a headache. <laughs> so, Nemesis Sudo, my, 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 my lovely queen, was born in EC 964 and left for dead by Ma after transferring Levia's soul into her. So she is now Levia's soul. She now has, she has Levia's soul. Yeah. Ma returned to Hanma and told him to kill Nemesis for her. She then disappeared to travel the world for a bit. Hanma, who now is going by Nicole, Nikolai Toll, d decided on instead to raise her. But not really. Nemesis spent most of her life alone. Nikolai would drop by and occasionally teach her magic and watch her from afar and how to survive in the forest. As Nemesis grew up, her isolation drove her to con concoct delusions of her mother in order to, con to comfort her. She could invent scenarios where Kaya was visiting her for the holidays, birthdays, and that she didn't abandon Nemesis, only was away for a long time. It didn't help that the voices of Hansel and Gretel were in her ear, tormenting her. He's back. Nemesis would often narrowly avoid danger by, her, by sheer miracles because she was unaware that Mikaela was protecting her from the Millennium Aww. Tree. I know, she's like, this is a baby. She's a good baby, you. Meanwhile, Gumelia sensed ab about Levia's reincarnation and sent Seth into Grim the End to watch over Nemesis. He, re he returned as, as a Ziz Tama octopus, you know, as he deserves. <laughs> sure. And Nemesis adopted him, believing him to be a present from her mother. After he was adopted by her, he appeared in her dreams and tricked the young girl into forming a contract with him, which she did. Now Nemesis could not die by any mortal means. She named him Zizsan. So remember, Zizsan is Seth Twy, right? God damn it. Over the he's years- an He's a fucking octopus now. Over the years, Nikolai taught her how to telepathically communicate with Zizsan. Because, you know, magic. That's just what you do. This is what you do. You ever find a baby and you're like, do you want to learn how to telepathically communicate with your fucking octopus? And then you just do it? <laughs> Damn, yeah, I my my parents made a big deal about it. We had a party and everything. <laughs> Happened to my cousin Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so fourteen years have gone by now. While Ma spent the 14 years traveling, collecting rare books, and writing screenplays, Nemesis joined a gang to cope with loneliness. The gang was called the Zeus Gang. Hey, hey yo, she just like me for real. <laughs> A after the murder of one of her gang members, she and a few of the other members met up at a bar with the rival gang, the Hades Gang. Damn! When one of the Hades members tried to grab her, she telepathically told Zizsan to constrain everyone in his tentacles. By the way, Zizsan is now the size of a fucking kraken. That's just his tentacle. Jesus Christ. Uh, when one of the, uh, that is how her and her gang found out that the man who murdered the members were, was going to be boarding a ship called the S.S. Titanus. Very different, Hi. different, very different from the Titanic. Unrelated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> That's the worst. It's fine. Everything's fine, guys. Ma had contacted Galarian to meet up with her, and so and so he did, along with Bruno and Shido. Postman led them to Ma, who wanted to help moving some books with her cars. Uh, Ma and Galarian's home met Michelle for the first time since she was a baby, and Galarian noted how Ma had not aged in the last 14 years. Ma asked him to sponsor for her for her future film adaptation of The Daughter of Evil by Yukina Freezes. <gasps> I know. He denied her, though. However, he still wanted to hear about what happened to Aluka Clockworker, Gumelia Abyss AR, and Jermaine of Av Adonia. Because he was reading her screenplays, because she was there, so she knows more about what happened. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There he learned about the existence of Vessels of Sin, and Ma told him if he collected them all, you would be granted any wish. He kicked Ma out of the house shortly after, after begging her to not tell Mira about the previous affair. He had waved Michelle and Mira off as they went on a trip on the S.S. Titanus. So, I'm expecting the ship to make it to its destination nice <laughs> and safe yeah. and with all its passengers intact. <laughs> Michelle is going to be so fine. Everything's going to be okay. Why else would I make a note of the fact that they're that both Nemesis is heading towards the Titanus, which also has Michelle and Mira on it? Nah. Unimportant. That's just an irrelevant detail. Anyway, so Michelle dies. <laughs> <laughs> so Nemesis wanted revenge for, the, for her fallen gang members, so she told Zizsan to sink the S.S. .S Titanus, killing everyone on board. Michelle and Mira both drowned. 
After Galarian found out, he became despondent and let go of his staff as he mourned for his daughter. Not really his wife. He was like, damn, I didn't even really like her, but no, Michelle. <laughs> Amazing. So fucked. Um, this son only found out one thing. The, only found one thing out of the wreckage: the Clockworkers doll. Mikaela spoke through the doll after Nemesis ran away from the Zeus gang after the ship sank. Mikaela told her how a group how a group was coming to take her away one day. She ran to the cave where this son was kept. But but when Mikaela was talking to her through the doll, it was like weeks later. I see. So she ran to the cave after Mikaela told her about the group where Zissan was kept and saw that his lake had frozen over and, Nico and Nikolai was the culprit. He, afraid Nemesis had become too corrupt, wanted to keep her away from Zissan and own up to her crimes. By the way, she's like 14. Oh my god. And he's like, mm, you're too far gone. Mm, you're too far gone. I gotta arrest you now. Mm, I let you join a gang at 14, but this is unacceptable. And it's like, what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> she was shortly after arrested by Bruno and Shido. Bruno and Shido had left Peter Noel to join PN, a po po aka police neutrality, aka just a private police force. Amazing. So they left, they left one PN for a new PN. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. There's no reason, but whatever. Um, Bruno had found the Clockworkers doll after Nemesis' Nemesis's arrest and gave it to the postman to bring back to Ma. Ma decided to use the Clockworkers doll to, to house Arena Spirit and decided to use it and the Marlon Spoon to convince Galarian to help her search for her vessels of sin. Adam Moonlit and the Marlon Spoon got lied to by Ma, who told him that the Clockworkers doll held Eve Moonlit's spirit. Oh God. Ma met up with Galarian in Michelle's room and she handed him the Marlon spoon, telling him that the vessels of sin could bring back his daughter. Galarian then made a contract with Adam and Ma handed him the Clockworkers doll after, telling him it had Michelle's spirit in it. He believed her and Arena's spirit from within the doll played along. So, the doll, even though it looks like Miku, is actually Arena. Got it. Imagine getting this by a fucking spoon. <laughs> Imagine being such a fucking loser, a spoon possesses you. That shit, embarrassing. Embarrassing. Really? It's the fucking moonlets again. <laughs> They're back. They're back, the fucking demons. So corruption begins. For both of them. Bruno got rehired after he let Galarian know about Nemesis being behind the sinking of the ship. Galarian was very happy to hear that Mira could rest, and but told Bruno how Michelle had, had was disabled and very dependent on him now. Brino was- <laughs> I'm back at the fucking beginning again! <laughs> Brino was very confused and was very concerned with Galarian's mental health, especially after seeing him talking to the doll. In order to make up for Moss stealing the Marlon spoon, Galarian paid bribes to the b bureau to ignore it, which marked the beginnings of his greed taking hold. He began taking bribes to judge his rulings in order to fund his secret security and, ex and exploits to find the vessels of sin. He also arranged for all the members of the Zeus gang to be killed in prison. I mean, fine. Just a ripperoni, I guess. Except for Nemesis, who was not in prison after the rest of the members were convicted, as Bruno gave her a new identity, Themis slash number eight. And he brought her into PN's protection without Galarian's knowledge. She was taught how to shoot from Shido and was hired as an assassin later on when she turned 17. Amazing. They consist- they consistently are just getting a bunch of child soldiers. Like, truly, this they is a theme at this point. Honestly. God. So, collecting the vessels. Um, the Octo family still had the Venom Sword in their possession. Two brothers were currently in charge of it. Two soldiers named Nyoze and Gamon Octo. So, this is Emo Gakpo. Amazing. <laughs> Emo- <laughs> Emo Gakpo is a lot. He is- very consistently here and he sucks and i hate him but he's also a little meow meow he's just so pathetic you kind of can't oh, like not God. like him galarian my beloved my guy you ever just do a prison massacre casually it happens sometimes i guess oh my god emo and a meow meow gammon <laughs> pick a struggle <laughs> 
So, when Galarian's friend Jason Jack had been accused of murdering a prostitute, he hired Media Cole. He, uh, he took a bribe to prove his innocence and decided to frame Nyoza for the murder in order to get access to the Venom Sword. Nyoza was arrested and convicted. Gammon repeatedly attempted to talk to Galarian about how innocent his brother was, but Galarian shut him out every time. Galarian- ah! Oh no! <laughs> I'm done! <laughs> no, we're not! No, we're not! No, we're not! No, we're not! We're right here! We're right here! We're right here, Vince! Don't even try to leave! Stay! <laughs> A little mass murder never hurt. Exactly, Ella. You get me. <laughs> anyway, you're never free. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, Galarian was able to collect the Venom Sword as evidence in the trial. Ma took the Venom Sword shortly after to hide it away for safety and absorb the Demon of Lust. So, Nyoze had escaped incarceration. It's like when the teacher gets a phone call and you try to leave during it. <laughs> and the teacher just locks the door behind them. <laughs> That's what I just did. So, Nyoze had escaped incarceration and changed his name to Shaksan and moved to Rold, Lucifania, to escape the police and he disguised himself as well. That same year, Galarian discovered the glass of Conchita and, and one of the, this This shit is so wild. Okay, so, he found the glass of Conchita and one of the mayors of Lucifania in the graveyard in a restaurant which was being run by Arte Pollo Lich and Eater. Galarian got Arte arrested for running the restaurant without a license and Bruno got Lich and Eater recruited into PN. Lich is number six, Eater is number seven. Arte, remember, Ar Arte looks like she's like 10 years old. <laughs> She just never aged past 10 years old, and then he just threw the baby in prison for apparently running the whole show. <laughs> so Bonica ate the demon of gluttony to become the demon of gluttony. Do you think if Venomous slept with the demon of lust, he would be the demon of lust? I don't think that's exactly how it worked. But I like where your head's at. <laughs> um, Arthur just kind of served a full sentence for a few months. That was just irrelevant to the story. She just was arrested and just continued Amazing. her sentence. She just, she just did her sentence. Good for her, I guess. Um, Ma was kept from attaining the glass of Conchita for herself, and she noted it was probably because he didn't want her absorbing the demon of gluttony. So, Ma has absorbed everything except for the demon of gluttony so far. So, what's Galarian up to? This is where, this is, this is where the third storyline comes in. The evil's theater. So, some more corrupt trials later, where Galarian was favored money over the right thing, Galarian often would just hire PN to take care of his opponents. He also, the same year, uh, uh, Nemesis was added to PN, got another mayor of Lucifania. A war broke out the next year in 982. Galarian chose to buy the old Moonlight residence and property. I don't know who he bought it from. Nobody lives there. It's in the middle of the forest, I guess, from the Sisters of Clarith. I'm assuming it just says that he bought the property and it's like from who? Who fucking lives there? Sure. From God? <laughs> <laughs> he built a theater and a storage unit there to hold his vessels of sin and he collected thus far with Ma. After removing Adam and Eve's skeletons, he built the evil theater. By the way, the skeletons were just there the whole time. He built the evil theater. He included Yay. the clockwork tower as well and called it Heartbeat Clock Tower, which was named after the clock tower from Castle Hedgehog. <laughs> It never Are you, please, please tell me this is the last mention of Funky <laughs> Castle Hedgehog. I think this is the last mention of Castle Hedgehog. Thank God. You're free from the demon that is Castle Hedgehog. <laughs> he was very upset about having to leave Michelle behind, but Ma thought it'd be good. It would be good for her, so he left Michelle, aka the Clockworkers doll, in the um, Evil's Theater. After having some nightmares, he woke up to Bruno telling him they found Nyoze and Galarian ordered him to have him killed and have number eight carry out the mission. Later, he held a film screening showing all of his collectibles in the evil theater and Ma left behind Kaio's scissors and with the rest of the vessels. So before he got, before Nemesis got, number eight, aka Nemesis got ordered to kill Nyoze, this is what she was up to. In 982, Nemesis had been sent to roll Lucifania in the spring of that year. She was admiring the cherry blossom trees where she met Shaksan. After spending some time flirting, she returned to her apartment to find Postman and Bruno who had a list of targets for her to kill. If she refused any of her targets, she'd be killed on sight. While taking down her targets one by one, she'd end up spending most of her free time flirting and hanging out with Shaksan. In the summer, Nemesis put on a red kimono that she had, that she had belonged to- Oh my god. 
that she had, which belonged to Kayo, at least that is what Nemesis believed, and watched the fireworks festival with chuck -san. I'm very sleepy trying to stay awake, and I appreciate it, Emily. I love you dearly. <laughs> As they hung, Nemesis often feared what would happen if Shaksan found out about her assassin life. Also, this is a very cool detail I didn't notice, but her, her kimono that she says is from Kayo is red with a green Olvi. Yeah. It's such a cute little detail. I love it. Ah! So, uh, in autumn, Shaksan confessed to Nemesis and the two became a couple. After she killed her fourth target, Postman reappeared and let her know that her next target was Nyoze Okto. Oh, she read like a radio from Homestuck? I'm gonna kill myself! <laughs> I hate you! I hate you! Why would you say that to me? I was having a good time! I was having a good, good time! I was having a lovely time! I was having a lovely evening! <laughs> I've been trying to go home sucker because I haven't found an inn! That was horrible. <laughs> I guess I'll take it. Zero days since the last homestuck. Erase the board, guys. Erase the board. There it goes. There it goes. I should have an exclamation point homestuck and exclamation point recipe so it can be used anytime we end up like resetting the board. Can we please? I need to add that after stream. I have to add that's so funny, I'm gonna add that. <laughs> <laughs> that winter, Nemesis gave him a diamond ring and a marriage proposal. She then pointed her gun at him. Oh wait, I forgot to read this part. It's important. When she went back to Shock Sun apartment, she reads a letter from Gaman that reveals to her that her that Ga Gaman was suspicious of her. And the Shock Sun was Nyoze all along. She went home crying after finding out. Oh god. That winter, Nemesis gave him a diamond ring and a marriage proposal. She then pointed her gun at him. Nyoze revealed to her that her father was actually Galarian and that he was the master behind PN. He tried to comfort her after she had a breakdown at this revelation, but instead she shot him in a panic. Oh god. After shooting Nyoze, she shot herself as well through the temple. However, because she was to contact with Seth, she did not die, only knocked herself out for a few minutes. When she woke up, Seth had reappeared before her, using the Grim the to shape shift into a, his human form. Seth had disposed of Nyoze's body while Nemesis was unconscious. Seth then told Nemesis the truth about who she, about who he was, but kept the lie that, his, that her mother chose him as his Christmas gift, as to not break her mentally. So, like, even when... Seth Twilight is aware of how mentally unstable you are. It's time to get help. <laughs> oh my god. He then convinced Nemesis to use either his golden bullets to kill herself or kill the people that were evil and to live. She chose to live and wore Seth as a mask, the same way Gumelia did in the Hellish Yard. Me. Nemesis moved up to, to Ritasan to, to escape the police and postman. While there, she was drugged and captured and met Gum and Octo. There, Nemesis agreed to join the Tazan party to take revenge on Galarian for forcing her to kill her lover. The Tazan party was a political party founded as an anti-government political organization and backed Leventia's anti-war movement. Amazing. So, we've got that going on, and Gamon's the head of it. Nice. Uh oh, uh oh, rut row. Some bitch named Tony Osden did a did a fucking oopsie and genocided a village and killed Shido Netsuma. Oh my god, he did an oopsie. Uh, just, an oops. just a little oopsie. Galarian and Bruno met to discuss the event and how bad it looks on Galarian because that was his old friend. Tony had explained to Galarian that Z that Zenosai, the village, had sided with the enemy, the Tazan Party, in the Leviathan Civil War, and that he did not mean to kill Shiro. It's an accident. Oopsie. Oopsies. Tony pleaded and bribed Galarian, who accepted, and Tony was declared innocent. After this, Gaman and Nemesis met up at Shido's grave. Gaman instructed Nemesis to kill Tony and then Galarian. After hearing about this, Hell and Fang quit Dark Star Bureau, unable to withstand Galarian's corruption any longer. Bruno, however, stayed by his side. Bruno then compared the two of them to Alan and Rillianne, implying that he was willing to die to keep Galarian safe. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> That's kind of fruity. <laughs> Just a little bit. That's just a little fruity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the next song time. It's almost there. When the Tazan party, the opposing party against Tony, heard about the Galarian accepting Tony's bribe, Galarian's previous bribes and connections kept him from getting any repercussions. Adam Galarian, meet up. The Moonlits, they're back. They're fucking ah. back. Galarian's mansion was surrounded one day by the militia. While he waited to kill, wait, while he waited around to get killed, Adam Moonlit was summoned. Adam began to mock him for assuming that it was Michelle and the doll. Adam actually was also wrong because it was because as we know, it wasn't Eve either. 
He, in fact, learned the, quite quickly that after Adam has summoned the doll from the theater and the doll set the soldiers on fire with blue fire, a.k.a. Rena's fire. So, Adam was extremely upset at this and disappeared shortly after because he just found out that Ma had also lied to him and it was actually Irina and the doll the whole time. Jesus. Galarian then took Michelle to his studies again and to comfort her while the mansion was got set on fire. He then finally spoke to Sickle, who had been following him around his whole life, who then told him how Ma was his mother, Aluka. Ah. Yeah, imagine you're about to die. Like, he then, okay, so him finding out that Ma was his mom and also slept with him honestly explains his next actions because he just fully gives up. <laughs> I would do. Uh... He fully, he fully pulls a fucking. Hi, Frosted. Welcome back. He fully pulls. Uh, he fully pulls a fucking, like, he fully pulled an Oedipus and went, like, I'm done. <laughs> I mean, what, well, he was like, I can't do this it? anymore. I've given up. <laughs> I mean, Oedipus was a big inspiration for a lot of his life. Jesus. Yeah, it's like an Oedipus Rex shit, but if Jocasta knew the whole time, basically. He then decided to watch a screenplay Ma had written before she disappeared about his life called Judgment of Corruption. The Civil War continuing. Well, meanwhile, Nemesis had infiltrated the home of Tony Osden while wearing Seth as a mask. Nemesis shot Tony with Shira's own custom gun. She then made sure to let his wife and child flee, despite Seth wanting her to kill them both. She then headed toward, over to Galarian's mansion to meet with Gammon and the other members of the Tazan party, only to find he was already on fire. Nemesis entered the mansion herself, knowing the fire wouldn't kill her, and headed inside to the final confrontation with her father. Inside, she was shocked to find him talking to Clockworker's doll, remembering she herself had it at one point. Nemesis then revealed everything to him about her parentage, her assassin life, and how she had to kill her lover because of him. Galarian was shocked to hear this. It turns out he never knew that he had a daughter with Ma, so that made him feel worse. <laughs> yeah, naturally. She also, he also didn't know that she was an assassin or that she worked for PN. He only knew her by her code name, and it turns out that Bruno was the real mastermind behind Nemesis' assassin trauma. By the way, by this point, Bruno had been captured by the police. Just as a side note. Just as a side note. Michelle, not Michelle, Nemesis offered to repent for his sins in exchange for his fortunes, and he refused. He held Michelle close and told Nemesis to kill him instead. Nemesis did, and before he died, Galarian ca called his daughter by her real name for the first time. The house burned to the ground, and only the clockworker's doll survived the fire. Ma showed up a few days later to pick up the doll and return her to Evil's Theater. Alright, no problem. So Galarian sold- but his afterlife is weirdly detailed, but I don't care about it. He went to the afterlife, he got to the- he got to the Hellish Yard, he got sent to Hell, which is a different place. He somehow ended up meeting- he somehow ended up at the graveyard where he read the memoirs of the moon goddess Luna Hazuki using a black box, learned about the Evil's Theater and its inhabitants, and learned about the existence of regulars. This comes back later. He knows about irregulars and how rebirth day works. Yay, cause I- we still don't know what the fuck rebirth day's about. Yeah. I have to go to the bathroom. I assigned myself a bathroom break. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, but guys, it's Judgment of Corruption. A fucking jam. It is. It's been a... F it, this wasn't one of my favorites, but I do remember listening to it a few times. So. Oh, motherfucker. I hate it here. Whatever. What the fuck? No! Hold on, I will get this. I will get this right. I swear to God. Yes, I did it. I believe. Enjoy. I'm gonna go piss. Oh God! Thank you. The song still slaps so fucking hard. Hey. 
I love how you recognize which version this is. Um, well, so the thing with the vocal, I don't know if you know what, but I don't want to, vocaloids are essentially, um, robot, synthetic, uh, singers, so this is all a robot singing, so that's probably why it sounds the way it does. Yeah, you missed the, uh, so I did a really good explanation on the other part. It's essentially, the whole thing with Vocaloid is these are all, like, this is all a computer program that people put in the lyrics and then they sing for you. And each, that's what all these characters are. They're all the different voice boxes from the different, from the different, uh, programs. Like, Kaito's a program, Miko's a program. That's, but it's, you will go to have to go back to watch the, uh, fucking, Part one and two, cause holy shit, it is a lot. I fucking love this song! It's so good, still to this day. Every single one of Maki's songs are fucking jams, even if you don't know the fucking batshit insane story behind them. Agreed. Of course, I would not put you through the untuned version. Retuned ver And the thing about Mothy is that he only keeps getting better and better with his music and shit, so it's like, of course it's gonna play the retuned version, it fucking slaps. Also, I, I already refilled my water. I already did it, past Chai. <laughs> ah. Get fucked past me, trying to watch my health and shit. Lame ass. <laughs> I don't know why the full screens just aren't working anymore, because they worked perfectly fine during the fucking Markiplier deep dive, but I guess not this one. Anyway, this song is also- this is- this is so, the same shit, but now Nemesis's point of view. Yay. Also, again, warnings. Flashing lights. Uh, Mario, I love you dearly. He's one of my favorites. He's great. You guys should go subscribe if you want to hear a lot of, like, chiptune remixes of Evilist Chronicles and things like that. He does mostly Evilist Chronicles content. Um... However, most, if not all, of them have a lot of flashing. Yeah. This song is so good, too. And I have I my Cheetos. Know. 
So, so this is the Nemesis song. This is the Wrath song in the Sin series. Hey. I, n I know why you probably didn't know, because it came out way later from the rest. Ah, uh, that's fair. Not even just this PV, just like the song in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so good! The very amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's a very amazing octopus! We're really close to the end. Like, we're really close to the end of the PowerPoint. Oh. Are you having a good time? I am. I generally am, but I'm also so fucking exhausted. <laughs> also, this is- look how thick the uh, the Akna Monogatari, the, the Serve Evil song is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, uh, Akna Musume is so fucking thick, god. But yeah, there's Conchita, I believe this is Enbizaka, and this is Duke of Venomania. That's cool. Yeah. And there's Judgment of Corruption. Son of a bitch, you ruined many people. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Speak your truth, nemesis. This is one of my favorite songs. Just in general, I love this song. I'm gonna rat jam myself. Fair. I wish I had a dancing emote <laughs> so I could just Honestly. dance. But I don't want to put Cloak through the, the trauma of making a gif for me. <laughs> Cloak, unless you want money. <laughs> Cloak, take Cloak. Bestie, can we talk later? <laughs> That's Seth. That's a mask. Yep. <laughs> I always want money. We'll talk. <laughs> yep, buddy. Oh my god, Cloaked, I never sent you the sketches for the sub badges. Oh my god, I have to do the after stream. <laughs> oh my god. I'm an idiot, I'm a fool, I'm sorry, I'm a bad streamer. <laughs> Did it. This is a lie. She did not raise you. And I just love this song. It's good. This is the first time I'm hearing it. It's really fucking good. It's also the song where I um, uh, started to put piece together. When the song came out, I started to really piece together the story. <sighs> because I was like, wait a minute, that's the Jen of the Corruption guy, and that's your dad? I thought this shit happened way after the judgment shit. Oh no, like I knew there was a story. I didn't know yeah. how deeply they were connected. Truly. Boy, I love him. He's shitty and I love him. I love her! Woo! My favorite frog. Hello. <laughs> We're talking about the series. My baby. Hi, Nick. Billion. I love you. 
My wife! My wife! Problematic face. This motherfucker! Nim, what a time to join. <laughs> When I was in Japanese class, the way that I learned um, the word for oh, mm, the, the angst, sorry, can not interrupt that? But the way that I learned how to say repent is because of this song. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> it's also how I learned the word for servant and, you know, evil. All Most of my, like, random ass words that I just know are, you know, because of this. <laughs> you fair. Sorry, I had to find out this way, Sensei, if you're watching. Jeffy Sensei, <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're stalking your Twitch chat. I mean, you never know. Sensei was always very supportive of me. <laughs> until I, until she wasn't, because I'm a mess. <laughs> oh, God. But we ain't done with this. There's still a little bit more to go. And then we'll get to Master of the Heavenly Yard. We're really close to the end, though. Yay. No, <laughs> no. Sorry, the song's playing right now is really, really good, too. I used to, I'll send this <laughs> later. <laughs> I, I have a lot of energy from the Cheetos. Fair. So, Nemesis then spent her 20th birthday in a jail cell because even though she got away with killing Tony and Galarian, her past was Zeus cut up to her. Pose would occasionally watch her in her cell. Gammon got her out with early release due to her connections with the Tazan party, and she became the vice leader in 989. As the Tazan party took over Alpha Gort, Nemesis went to a bar and met with Nikolai's servant. She met with Nikolai shortly after, and she shot him to death, not even because she hated him anymore, because it was merciful and also a bit of revenge. If she was honest with herself, it was probably a little bit of revenge. The Evil's Theater. Um, there's a lot of colors here. <laughs> We're meeting a lot of characters. Oh, God. I know, right at the tail end, they throw us a lot of shit. So... In order to keep the Clockworkers doll alive, she was connected to the inner mechanisms of the Heartbeat Clock Tower as a form of life support. Sometimes after, sometime after, Adam Moonlit and Benika Conchita were awakened by the and given bodies made of mud and given the names Gear and Master of the Graveyard. Okay. Gear also attached himself to the tower by ripping out his own heart and connecting himself to the Heartbeat Clock Tower. This drained this drained the spoon of its power and kept Gear confined to never leave the tower. That's so fair, Emily. That's I'd so like... fair. Take a nap, Emily. Enjoy the your nap. The will be here. I love you. <laughs> uh, Clockworkers doll became the master of the court, and she created her court inside of the theater. The forest around the Evil's Theater became known as Evil's Forest, and Ma took up residence there. Post became the waiter. Um, Ma spent her time in the theater writing about the actions of the reawakened vessels. Master of the Graveyard would often eat any intruders looking for Galarian's treasures in the theater. Gammon Acto also... <laughs> I know how to read. Gamma Octo also broke into the search of the Venom Sword to cure him of his lust, and therefore Master of the Court, and, and before Master of the Court could execute him, Waiter hired him as a new gardener to do her chores. Ma became known as Sorceress of Time. A cool name, not gonna lie. Mm. So, these are everybody. Uh, we'll get to them in a second. <laughs> So, we've got Sorcerer of Time, Ma, Master of the Court, The Clockworkers Doll, aka Arena, Gear, Adam Moonlit, Master of the Graveyard, Benica Conchita, Lich, Eater, Arte, Boyo, Waiter, which is really Anne's newest reincarnation, we, and well, we Chris have Gardner. Two, we have two wins. We have two wins. Totally, totally not confusing at all. It's totally fine. There's just two wins. It's fine. Okay. Ma's final pur purpose. I don't understand this part. So we're just gonna blaze through it. Um, Ma had Gem and assist her in writing more screenplays as an octo. He had prophetic dreams that told her both pa he that told both the past and the future. This way, Ma was better able to capture what occurred in the past for her screenplays. He had vision. He had a vision one night of Master of the Court's Utopia and how it connected to the end of the world. I don't know what happened. Master of the Court ended up pregnant with two entities slash twins named Adam and Eve. Not that Adam and Eve. Um, I don't know who got her pregnant. Or how it's never explained. She just is. Awesome. Now. They're just awesome. in. Her, they're just in her womb. Virgin, virgin, fucking. I don't fucking know. Might as well. Yeah. In 998, she called the vessels to a trial to discuss the search for the vessels of sin, um, of wrath, for the vessel of wrath. 
This is, this is the only one they had. They didn't have yet. The doll asked Ma about where the the key was, and Ma told her that it was still with the master of the hellish yard, Gumelia. Over time, Ma had absorbed pride and gluttony to purify herself. Back to Nemesis for a second. With Gammon gone to Evil's Theater, Nemesis became the president of the Tazan Party, and soon enough, Nemesis was the, was the dictator of Elphagort. Because, you know, the natural progression. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It was bound to happen. With Seth Twilight's help, Nemesis survived the Boy of Destruction, Amastia. Cloak, do you remember Amastia? <laughs> He's back! It only took, like, 500 years! More like 900 years. He's finally here. Seth created him centuries ago. Nemesis presented him to Elphagort scientists and ordered for a weapon to be created based on the boy called Punishment. The weapon was tested in the Millennium Tree Forest and... <laughs> fuck! <laughs> the weapon was tested in the Millennium Tree Forest and the o and Onigish Oni Onigashima and both of the tests successfully wiped out the areas and birthed into a crisp. Models of punishment were pointed across the world ready to fire Nemesis' command. The evil's theater survived the explosion in the evil's forest with Ma's magic force field protection. Later that year, the doll gave birth to twins Adam and Eve, which are just blonde Miku and Kaito. <laughs> oh my god. In the process, her body was damaged beyond repair because she's a fucking doll. Hi, Frosted. Thank you, Frog. Never saw her shits. Bruno Zero and his team broke into the Tazan Party HQ. They were quickly captured and disarmed, and she learned that someone had leaked information about the punishment to PN. Nemesis spoke with Bruno while she was captured and under her and thanked him for, for thanked him for saving her due to her being the daughter of someone he loved. And it was thanks to Bruno she got all this power. Nemesis then shot and killed him. So rip Bruno, honestly. Can I get some 07s? Rip to Bruno. He was a real one. He was gay. 07s. He had really bad taste in men. <laughs> but an 07 nonetheless. <laughs> of course. Uh, the next year, Nemesis visited Evil's Theater and was shocked it was completely intact. There, she finally met her mother, Kyle. Kyle was very upset about hearing about Nemesis using Amostia. Ma then revealed to Nemesis the truth of her abandonment. This successfully was Nemesis' last straw. She was like, I'm done. <laughs> Valid. Ma strangled Nemesis, talking about how she was going to absorb the Demon of Wrath from Nemesis after killing her fi to finally become pure. However, Kaya was stabbed by Postman using the Venom Sword, and she fell to the ground in shock and betrayal. Nemesis realized that she would never be able to save the world, only destroy it. Therefore, she shot Ma and killed her. Ma's spirit then went into Postman. Remember this! Ma is in Postman. Okay. Nemesis returned to the Tazan Party HQ after mourning her mother. Nemesis then fired the final punishment weapon at a final time, and all of life on the third period was destroyed, and the third period crashed into the hellish yard. And the end of the world had finally begun. Woo! <laughs> We're at the end! I'm so tired. Sort no, it's been three hours. You're gonna have to just watch the vlog. Just accept it as move on. <laughs> Welcome to the Evil's Chronicles Deep Dive, where I explain my favorite, my favorite Vocaloid series of all time and how much it hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna gag. My poor dad is texting me like, "Hey, when are you ready to go eat?" And I'm like, "Uh, 40 minutes." About. We're almost done. I also need to get food after this. So, trigger warnings, not many trigger warnings, but batshit wall plot, murder, confusing, all your favorite criminals are back. Especially him, I know some of y'all, <laughs> person, specific person in the chat, are excited about him coming back. Incest? Not really, but y you'll see. It's confusing. It's <laughs> <laughs> so... We finally get birthday! <laughs> we finally understand what the fuck is going on with my birthday! So, oh, and my god! Also, I recognize- I think I recognize the PMV you used for fucking we birthday. Yeah. Thank the fucking god. <laughs> Julius Incest! So the songs used are Master of the Hellish Yard, again, Master of the Heavenly Yard, Song of the Third Period, Waltz of the Departed, Karma of the Evil Will Not End, Rebirthday, Ten Minute Love, Banika Concerto. <laughs> this is my favorite meme. <laughs> oh God. It's fine. So, <laughs> this is my favorite image. 
carry them away. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like I said, all your favorite criminals are back. This game makes me want to cry. This <laughs> How do you think I feel, Valpania, my beloved, my lovely, darling, sweet, whom I beloved? I hate it here. Sickle summoned Alan. He's back and merged. Okay. He merged Alan with an alternate universe version of himself where he failed his mission to save the world. I don't, I don't get it either, but it happens. And instructed him to find the seven contractors by finding them one at a time. Alan immediately ignored his orders due to his alternate timeline memories and went straight for Nemesis. Nemesis stood in the ruined world and was but an empty shell being kept alive due to her contract. Nemesis' soul was separated from her during was separated from her and was living up the delusion that she was still Levia and running in her old hospital from the second period. So remember, the 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 third period and the hellish yard, so like the afterlife merged together. So now all all everyone who's ever died is back. Oh oh boy. Yeah. So which includes Levia and a lot of the second period spirits somehow. Around this time, okay. Gumelia left the Hellish Yard to meet with Sickle after bringing back bringing Duke of Animania, Galer Galarian Marlon, and Kaiosudo, the real one, back into Hell, as the world's end had given them the chance to escape. Gumil there was like a whole side story about Venomania finding his old harem again and being like, hey, <laughs> nervously touch his fingers together. Hey, do you want to live in my harem again? Oh my god. And then they said yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Was the dick that good? Apparently. <laughs> they, were, they were just like, well, we have nothing better to do. And so they just like lived with him for a while. And until so Gumile Pretty was just like, mm, no, you gotta go back to hell, bro. You gotta go back to hell, bro. <laughs> um, around this time, uh, blah, blah, blah. Gumilia then met with Mikaela again, and the two accompanied Alan to talk to Levia's spirit and break her delusions to re-enter Nemesis' body. Seth was there, and Gumilia wore him as a mask. Yeah, the world's over. Um, Alan dressed as postman and brought Nemesis' body to the illusory hospital where Levia's soul was working and asked her to perform the mind swap technique to heal her. Levia did, and in doing so, remembered all her memories as Nemesis, and after Alan ex revealed who he was, Nemesis was restored. Alan explained everything to her and suggested that he and Nemesis go to Evil's Theater to save the world. The group split. Nemesis and Alan stayed together for the Evil's Theater. Gumelia and Seth returned to collecting the contractors, and Mikaela headed for to find the Demons of Sin. Also, Adam and Eve, Arena's twins, did not have wills, so they merged with the original Adam and Eve, the Moonlits. Now, Adam and Eve, Arena's twins, had wills to bring upon court ending for Master of the Court. Fitting, because Eve and Adam were also twins. Yay! Yay! That's the in, that's the dubious incest I was talking about. The reminder that they're twins. <laughs> mm. Alan. Everything please about him. Please tell me, please. Please, for the love of God, tell me he's happy for at least five minutes. Eventually. <laughs> We're not there yet. Alan and Nemesis arrived at the Millennium Tree Forest, remains in hell, joined in their conversation in the, birth of, in the form of a burb. After some <laughs> bantering about what it means to be evil that I don't want to get into, Held pointed out to them the Black Box X about the Black Box S floating in the sky. Evil's theater was right under it, so they headed down. As they did, they overheard Gem and Octo's speech. Gem and Octo had joined. Poor Alan, he is always going through it. Poor Gem and poor Alan, not Gem and Octo. Gem and Octo had joined up with Arena Clockworker, Galarian Marlon, and Michelle Marlon to save the world via a rebirth day. Arena used the evil cedar as her body, housing everyone inside. Gammon had put a target on Rillian, Benika, Kayo, Cherubim, and Nemesis, and used the spirits of the Tazan party to begin their hunt. They had a black box type X, which could suck in souls and reformat their data and memories. Alan and Nemesis realized they had to hurry the shit up and realized Gammon probably wished to use a black box type S against the demon contractors. They headed down to Lucifania as Alan was worried about Rillian. Meanwhile, Rillian had finally reunited with her parents in the remains of Lucifania. Rillian started throwing a party but was rudely interrupted by the Tony Ausden and the Tasm party who used Michelle Marlon's gift. So, um, in the afterlife, Michelle contacted with Eve and used Eve's memories and personality to create it. So, e e so Michelle is now a contractor and put all the guests to sleep. 
Before they could capture Rillianne, Claire appeared and saved Rillianne on Josephine's horseback, and Mikaela had sent Claire to pick Rillianne up. While she's Yay. yeah, it's All lesbians. All the lesbians happy. All the lesbians happy. They are. They're very happy in the afterlife. They're always together. Good. The only happy bitches, as they should, as it's deserved. While she was hanging out with Mikaela and a few of the demons, Arth awoke and gathered his remaining friends and subjects and decided to fight back against the shoulders. So here you see Lily, Miriam, Lanhart, uh, uh, Chartet, um, Germain, and Yukina, and Arth and Anne all teaming together to defeat the party. Yay! Battle the Black Box. By the time Nemesis and Alan arrived, we're so close. We're like literally less, like around 10. By the time Nemesis and Alan arrived in Lucifania, the fighting had broken out and Rillianne was gone. Alan tried jumping in to help, but Nemesis held him back for a bit. Nemesis decided to deal with the black box type S that was sucking up souls on the battlefield. She shot the box, which made it malfunction and freed all the souls, including Kyle, who had become a demon again. No! Somehow. <laughs> of all of the motherfuckers. He, like, even in the afterlife, he's a loser. <laughs> Yeah, there was like a whole part where he turned to a demon again. There's, <laughs> it's a sprint. It's a, it's a, it's a fucking long sprint. Uh, she shot the box. Um, he, uh, blah, blah, blah. Nemesis and Alan spoke to Arth and they decided to that to find Rillianne and Gumelia. They should see Banika and Lich. Kyle, for fuck's sake, <laughs> get it together. Get it together. God. When they arrived in the floating mansion, Lich explained he had no plans to revive the ruined world, and Benika, Nemesis, and Alan all decided to work together to stop the goings on in the Evil's Theater. So everyone meets up. While, while hanging with Mikaela, Rillianne received the empty Clockworkers doll from Mikaela and was told to contain the sleep that was told to contain the sleep princess Michelle. Gumelia arrived shortly after and basically kidnapped Rillianne and brought her back to the hellish yard. Rillianne recognized her as a Lucas old apprentice and then met Kaya Sudol and yelled at her for killing her in one of her previous lives. <laughs> she was like, why oh the she was like, why did you kill me? And she's like, you know, I had to get back a I had to get back a Kai. And she's like, but why did you kill me? <laughs> it was a very funny part of the, of the book. Afterwards, Galarian and Satariasis also showed up. However, Galarian summoned Sleep Princess and blew everyone out of the hellish yard, and Seth laughed at Gumelia's agony that she had to find everyone again and bring them back. Fucking Seth. Seth, you little bitch. Kyle, Rillian, and Satarius then decided to team up after they landed in the Venomanian mansion to go to Evil's Theater. Meanwhile, Galarian had also returned to the theater. I don't fucking- Okay, so, Rillian- Kayo Satarius made it to the theater. Inside, Rillian reflected on her life as Lilith. Meanwhile, Gumelia was sadly fixing the barrier between the third period and the hellish yard. The trio ended up in the director's office where Galarian and Gammon were waiting. Gammon explained to them that their goal of reviving the world by invoking court ending. Michelle was in the back playing with the irregular twins when this was happening. Um, when Banika arrived, Ma awoke from within Rillianne's body and absorbed all the contractors. Doing so, she finally became a pure being. Because remember, Lilith was the last place where Ma was hidden away when she was killed, and that was Rillianne's most recent reincarnation. So she awoke within Rillianne. <laughs> so, Sat, Banika, Michelle, Kaya, Galer were all absorbed into Rillianne, and aka now Ma. Are you keeping up? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to, but it's... Basically, Ma possesses Rillianne and absorbs all of the contractors. Got it. And it was around this time where Alan finally arrived and fought Gammon. They were interrupted by Ma attacking all of them from, Rilli from in Rillianne's body. They, The twins, terrified, began to rebirth they prematurely. Only Nemesis, Ma, and Alan escaped in time as the core ending began. <laughs> so what's the core ending? To put it simply, it's a time loop. <laughs> Remember how I texted you one day being like, wait till I get to the time loop? <laughs> uh-huh. This is the time okay, this is the time loop. So to put it more complicated. 
Everyone who got stuck in the court ending had their souls reformatted and transported back via the black box X to repeat the third period. However, everyone in the third period in court is soulless, save for the four souls who got sent back and are now cursed to endlessly repeat the loop. Gammon, Adam and Eve, and Arena. Irina returned as a true as the true identity of Alice Mary Goran, aka Maria Moonlit. So remember your joke earlier about virgin birth? Uh-huh. So yeah, Maria married. <laughs> awesome. Mothy is um you know how Evangelion has <laughs> you know how Evangelion is known for having very Christian religious symbolism and it doesn't mean anything because they just did it to look cool. Yeah. That's kind of like Evil's Chronicles where he, where yeah, exactly, so Virgin Mary. So, um so Evil Chronicles kind of the same way where he just kind of took random bits from the Bible and went like, "What would this be cool? Now hear me out, guys." <laughs> and then just ran with it and no one stopped him. Christ have mercy. So, her name Marigarand was a hint that Alice aka Maria aka Arena was to be cursed to forever relive the same cycle over and over again in a godless version of the timeline like a merry-go-round spinning in endless circles. Arena slash Maria then gave birth to Adam and Eve, and the rest is history as the rest continues in the time loop. So that's... So it just repeats over and over again. Yes. And that's the court ending. Now for a good ending. Can the power of family save us? It can, because we're almost at the end. Thank God. After the narrow escape, Nemesis asked Alan to choose between his sister or the world. Alan responded saying he would choose both. Ma then created a giant vortex that threatened to swallow all of Evilis, and Alan came up with a plan to get Ma and the others out of Rillian first, then kill Ma. Eater, who was there the whole time, by the way, because he came with Banika, then flew off at, to distract Ma and take Nemesis away so that Ma couldn't absorb her yet. Alan also learned Ma's motivation was just to confirm her existence at the cost of, you know, the world. Soon enough, Alan and Ma were caught up in the tornado spawned by in by Nemesis, and a glass bottle came out of Rillianne's hand. Inside the bottle oh! was a message from Rillianne that read, Make sure you save me. I'm going to sob and cry. And... <laughs> and and here's Alan in the corner giggling and crying after getting the message from Rillianne, saying that that I quietly laugh, that's so like you. I'll crumble. I, I love them. Rebirth day! <laughs> what the fuck is going on with rebirth day? Almost! Almost! Eventually, every soul in the third period began singing the clockwork lullaby under Mikaela's direction. The song greatly weakened Ma's power and distracted her as well. During the song, Nemesis used a green onion, don't ask, to contact Gumelia and request her to tell her Seth to bring the contract with her. Alan then attacked Ma with Grim the End, breaking her control over her contractors and sending them all free. Ma's consciousness dispersed, and she hid inside of Nemesis' body, who had swapped into the empty Clockworkers doll. So, Ma is now inside of Nemesis, and Nemesis is now inside the Clockworkers doll. Seth, at this moment, finally did something right and broke his contract. This killed Nemesis' body, and Ma in turn. Alan then passes out, as did Rillianne. Alan woke up, and he was in the climb one. There, Behemo finally appeared and revealed herself. She was the true master of the Heavenly Yard the whole time. Behemo explained the nature of the first and second periods, as well as how the third period was created. They also explained how to Alan who Sickle and Luna Hazuki actually were. Suddenly, Luna became really Ann. I don't know. Luca, Luna just like kind of like left and really Ann appeared in her place and a black box. Behemo took out a wind-up key and gave it to the twins. They opened up the black box and performed Rebirth Day and created a new world, the fourth period. All the souls of the third period danced in the Luciferian royal palace for one final waltz as they entered the new world, while really Ann and Alan watched from the moon performing a Rebirth Day. So Rebirth Day was Story of Evil characters, just you didn't know the timeline placement. Oh my god, so I wasn't wrong. You weren't wrong per se. Because I remember... Like, at the end of every rebirth day, like, A and B, it would end with with Al Alan waking up and being, like, actual Len, and then everybody, all the other vocaloids being like, Hey, good morning, welcome up! And we're like, oh, he reincarnated this Len, and now they're living this. Yeah. Technically correct. There was just a lot of <laughs> context behind it. <laughs> so... Graveyard ending, and then I believe, yeah, we have like two slides left. 
While everyone else left for the third period, Bonica stayed behind with Arte, Boyo, and Lich and Eater and decided to travel to parallel worlds in search of new foods with her servant. She took up Seth's offer to try a Neo Black Box that he made, like, I don't know, 300 years ago or something. Uh, the take her to said parallel world. She got an Evil's Theater 2, a floating replica of Evil's Theater with a black box on board, and her and her servants watched everyone's final waltz from her spaceship. She then took off. She has several new songs and novels I simply won't get into because that's a sequel series I need to cut. I will never cover. I'm too old. So all the current Mothy songs coming out are about the graveyard ending and like Banika's like journey, I suppose. Amazing. To the fourth period. In the fourth period, a girl named Rin woke up early for, for school and ran to the bus stop where she could meet up with a boy on the bus. They could only see each other for 10 minutes a day, but she really liked to know him better. She feels like she knows him from somewhere. It is unclear if this girl is really Anne's reincarnation or in that that boy is Alan, but it is heavenly implied. In this fourth period, the gods of the third period talk in the evilest group chat TM about the goings on in the world and about a bear that skipped Suruku City. That's another side story I'm not getting into. Levia, Behino, Sickle, and Luna are all, in a gr all, are, are all in the group chat. This is the Heavenly Yard ending. Everyone got to live happily ever after, save for those four bastards in the time loop. All of those guys, I guess. And just like that, it's over. This is the end. We're free. Oh my god. The end! <laughs> we get to play one last song, and we're done! We're done! We did it! I did it! Fuck you! I did the work! I did it! I explained the entirety of the fucking Evilist Chronicles! <laughs> oh, the, there's fucking Keel. There's so, no sub oh god, um, give me a second. What the fuck? Hold on. Is this the wrong- did I link the wrong one? Oh, did I? What? Hold on. Give me two seconds. Oh wait, this is Waltz of the Departed. Hold on. The book hasn't even come out yet. I can't cover it even if I wanted to. I don't know what's going on in the book. <laughs> yeah, I linked the wrong one. Sorry about that, guys. God damn it, Chai. <laughs> I make my mistake. <laughs> But yeah, this is the this is the this is the waltz. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I feel like a weight has been lifted off the <laughs> both of us. <laughs> the song is also really good. I really like it. It's Rin Chan. It's Rin Chan. I love her. of evils and defeated. That's I how mean, I feel. It is the sort of evil. <laughs> I feel a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel, honestly, I feel, I feel free. You did. So how do you feel? I feel like everything I know was a lie. But at this end, I'm just exhausted. Like, I feel like he just ran three miles. <laughs> yeah. I'm sweaty. I'm so sweaty. Like, my head hurts. So does mine. I've been talking for three and a half hours. Real mental illness being able to, is being able to name everyone that shows up. <laughs> Look at the lesbians! 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 It's them! I'm gonna set up a raid while the song is playing. I don't even care. We did it. We're done. I'm setting up a raid. Ooh. You know what? B is back. I'm gonna raid B. How do you feel? Tell your thoughts and feelings. I, the story, I feel like I was, like, before, I, I, as 
as you know, I did not know the whole fucking story. Yeah. Apparently. But I feel like it speaks volumes. To, I swear to God. Was that you or my, me? Oh, no. Because the music just stopped. The music just stopped for me, too. Okay. Damn, we really ain't allowed happiness, are we? Even when we win, oh, no. we lose. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, oh, it's back? Okay. So, as I was saying, I think it does speak volumes to the fact that I still really enjoyed, like, the story and the plot of everything that was the Evil's product and what I knew of the story of evil. I think it does speak volumes to Mavi's storytelling that I could still pick up like some I might be miss I might have been missing a lot of bits and pieces, but I still enjoyed the story that I had at that time. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. Like as much as I shit on how fucking complicated this shit is, there's a denying the amount of effort of like expertise the amount of detail he puts into all of his work honestly you don't build a story for with music for 15 years and have it be like nothing like this shit is good it's just complicated yeah i think like, the biggest problem is the fact that it's inaccessible in america yeah like like having just known the basics of the story of evil that was still such a fantastic like overarching story even without knowing the bullshit that was nay <laughs> <laughs> nay my daughter still so pissed about her but you but like i still think it says a lot about maki's storytelling that even without the missing pieces i was still fully invested in this shit and with that join the raid y'all join the raid uh, we are finally fucking out of here Oh my I god. I love you all. I'm like dead inside. I'm so fucking happy to be free. Join the oh raid chat. God. Oh wait, what's the next deep dive? The next deep dive? Uh Grand Blue Fantasies, what makes the sky blue? Bye! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean like the